Hi everybody. It is Sunday, the 27th of January, 2019. We've had a very busy weekend so far. Um, thank you for all of you. I know a bunch of Twitch people were there last night who came out to Epcot to the International Festival of the Arts, which has been a very, very good and successful festival so far here at Disney World. And we've seen a bunch of Twitch people and a, a lot of my pin people were there and tonight's episode or I, uh, I don't know episode broadcast whatever it is is going to be kind of pin specific this is kind of neat this is the first time I've done this and I'm doing this because I've had a lot of people ask specifically about can we watch you design a pin so that's something that we're doing today you can kind of see my sketch I'm probably going to change some things on it but this is voodoo in violet she will be the pin of the month for March but I wanted to show you guys how I start off with a piece of wood and paint and a pencil and how I decide to create the mold with the factory does that part because it's all metal and like a die cut thing. A mold of a painting I've done specifically to be a pin design. So the thing you're watching me paint right now will be the March pin of the month. All right. Lucy, so we know what you're painting tonight. Yeah. And I, I just want to say hi to some people in the room. Sorry. Yes. Oh, uh, hello. We got, we got people already. Yes. Kitten. Hello, Lisa, Grinchy, hey, Grinchy, Ange Hoffman, Tigger, hey, Tigger. We girl in the mitten, uh, girl in the mitten, and uh, we do have some raffles uh, as you. Oh know. yeah, we've got raffles. I think we must have Disney stuff, but we also have the the last raffle of the day. We just got these finished, and you guys are the first person to see her. She is Heart of Nails. She is going to be the February pin of the month. Oh, I, I just heard a magic noise, but... Valster just subscribed for nine months in a row. Oh, wow. Nine a months. Baby by wow, then. I could wow. get pregnant, have a baby, and it would be Perfect. delivered, and you would still have your subscription. And you would, you would still... Yeah, or it'd be close you, to it. You could hear about Matt's pregnancy along the way. But here is Heart of Nails, and this is my sample that I have from the factory, and she will be the February pin of the month, but some, one of you guys will win her tonight. And then the, the three in front of that, we tried to do one each hour. We've got... We were at Epcot again yesterday for my show, so I've got the one, two, three new Disney pieces from Disney's Wonderground Gallery, and we will be um, uh, um, giving them away, and I will autograph them for you, too. Yay! But, yeah, we've been having a heck of a time at Epcot. It's uh, in a good way. It's been very, very crowded, very busy, very fun, and a lot of other neat art stuff has been happening there. I think... Part of the reason they have the Epcot Festival in January is usually it's not a very busy time to come to the theme parks because it's after, oh, it's after everybody's had their winter break, but before you have spring break, so it's usually not super crowded. But now that they're doing this big, crazy Epcot Festival and it's the third year in a row, that's kind of turning it into a, hey, I'm going to go to Epcot in January or February. So I, it's very clever for Disney to just kind of use that to round out the year and say, oh, this used to be our busy time. And now this is our not busy time, but this is going to be our busy time now. Yes, and um, thank you, those, for coming out and braving yes, the cold. Yes, and braving um, the cold. I know. And that I you're going to laugh, but yes, yeah. it, it was cold for Florida. I mean, the high was... The high was 62, and to be fair, back in Kansas, Missouri, Richie where said it's it going to be and... negative 45 with wind chill. Oh, not in Florida, right? Not in Florida. Okay. No, that, that's what I mean. You don't want to hear us complain about a high of 62 when it is negative 45. They you might are. want to hear us complain. You might don't, want to hear us complain. Judge, Maybe don't. it feels like you're on vacation. So. But it's, um, yeah, actually, last night at Epcot, the um, Disney cast members who were helping me with my booth here, um, Came and brought. I don't. I think it probably stopped working. But they brought me like this orange. It looks like a tea bag, and it's orange. And you smash it together, and it's like a chemical hand warmer. I think people use it when they're out camping or whatever. And they gave that to me so I could warm up my fingers. I could my finger, find it if you my, want. No, to. it's lying. Yeah. It, it probably stopped working. Also, I'm pretty warm inside now. I've got my little space heater thing here. It did stop working. Anymore. I think they work for about. Eight hours. I think they're, yeah, I, I think, are those what my, my mom said she brings when she goes to, like, um, football or baseball games or something? Whichever That's one's a very in the common thing I, yeah, I think got the they outdoor probably saw them at, like, events. camping stores, yeah. And you smush them, and it looks like a little plastic bag, and it gets hot. But they gave me that so I could keep warming up my hands, because my, at the end of the day, I literally, I could not open the little plastic bags with my hands, because my fingers were that cold. I think it was, what was it, maybe 40-something around then in the evening? 
something like that. Something like that, if which doesn't like... sound cold, but if you're out there a lot and you've got your hands open, just like, oh, If you guys like uh, what Jasmine's working on, you think the whole pin design process is really yeah, cool. Yeah, I... We currently have two auctions up at eBay. I'm going to go ahead oh, and post yeah, two links. Oh, yeah, you should do. Yeah, post those links. I can show people, it and, and then you'll see what I'm doing here, because you're. this is going to look almost like... Why is this just an outline? It's not very realistic looking. It's because it's going to be a pin design. Would you like to do that right now? Yeah, why don't, why don't I show what people what so I'll they do. don't they don't just wonder what I, I the can, heck I'm I can grab them for you. Do you have the, oh, those are in my big easel over there. Okay, what, what I'm going to do is post the links. Okay. And then I will uh, I'll show people what, what I'm doing originals. now. But there's Again, the pin I'm working on is based off of my pin. This is just a piece of paper, but um, the pin I'm working on is loosely based on this character. As you can probably see by the outlines, I've got a lot of lines on here. I did that in pencil first, and I'm going over and paint on the lines I want to keep, and then I'm going to take an eraser and erase the yeah, lines right. that I don't want to keep. Yeah. I think you think A.M. Weber. Uh, six oh, months A.M. In Weber. A row. Wow, six months. Thank you very much, A.M. Weber. Oh, I think I think I might know that from the pin group. Perhaps. You do. Yeah. Yay! I won't say their name, but we yeah, know their I initials. Try. I, I don't like giving away people's privacy. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Um, yeah. Some people are not. But yeah, um, this is, for example, this is the one I did a couple years ago that was for the um, Bumblebee Dragonling. Oh, I had another magic noise. Bumblebee Dragonling, and she turned into a pen. So I, do I have that pen here? You do. Okay. Yeah, so this is what I do. I, I start off sketching. Usually with these, I do it in pencil because I want it to be very line-oriented because I'm going to turn the black lines in this into a metal mold that we pour the different colored enamels in. But it starts off like this as an acrylic painting. So here's the painting, and then I don't know how, how good you can see the details, but I take the painting, we scan it in, I select all the black parts, that part is made into a metal mold that we pour an iron oxide alloy into to make black lines, and then we put little enamels for the colors and we try to match them. And I'll talk about color matching a bit later because I've got my... I've got one of the Pantone enamel charts here, and I'll be talking about why I'm di making different color choices when I do. And we usually after a few years, this one's from 20, or this is from, oh geez, 2017, um, we auction them off. So people who, usually it's long after the pin has like been sold out, or she was a special one for Dragon Con, so she wasn't even like a thing you could buy anyway. She was a free pin. Here's the Allison Clockwork one. She's up for auction on eBay now, too. And, of course, you know I've done a painting that's a realistic-looking shaded painting of Allison Clockwork, but this is kind of the line art one. It looks like a coloring book that you kind of filled in with solid colors. You can't have any sort of gradation of tone. You can't have any shading because it's like a bit, it's like a stained glass window almost. You have the black outline, and you pour the color into it. And there is the pen version, the metal pen that was made from the painting. And I, a lot of collectors like to, uh, I've been keeping all of these, every pin I have done. I have what I'm doing now, a piece of wood with paint on it that I use to create the original concept art to make the mold and then they use the mold to pour the metal and then they use the metal molds to pour the little enamel paints in at the factory. And that is where the pins come from. But she will be the March pin of the month, the one I'm working on now. and. As I was saying, we had, um, she's, one of the first pins I did was Voodoo in Blue, who was based, I already auctioned off the, um, panel that was the actual pin design I did for her, but you can get prints of the actual painting up on strangeling.com, but here's how the pin turned out, and she was super popular, but she was also one of the first ones I, d I did, as far as pins go. I have any idea when I started, man, was it like five different designs? It wasn't a lot. I when I first I like launched first the started. idea of strange yeah. pens, I it, it, was, it, was, it was around. It was like five, and then I had the Dia de Muertos set. I think I forgot. You guys probably know more than I do. So I'm kind of taking this idea because the the painting of Voodoo and Blue is kind of the same, not the same character, but the same sort of series as Voodoo and Violet. And I want, and we had the um, poll up at my Patreon. Yes where we had people vote to say, hey, what should the next Patreon pin be? And the winning vote, it just ended maybe an hour or two ago up at Patreon, was for Luna Moths. And we're going to do a glow-in-the-dark Luna Moths pin. But since I wasn't sure which one was going to win, it was either going to be her, her or a Voodoo and Violet. And I know that I need a March pin before I do the next Patreon pin, depending on how the schedule works and when we run out of strawberry short, uh, cupcakes. 
I keep saying shark cakes now. I keep saying shark cakes, but um, I am working on Voodoo and Violet, and she will be the March pin of the month. So any of you pin people who are already members, you will be getting her as a pin. Jasmine, if somebody yeah. just signs up or upgrades right now and they yeah. become pin pin members, if they what, did like today, exactly what would they get? Um, well, I, it I is have a, the lanyard is not. I don't have one handy, but you get a lanyard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You always get a lanyard. Yeah, Actually, you, as long as you're a Patreon pin person, you get all the lanyards. Yep, and, as they and, come out. Yeah, you get those complimentary. Whenever we come out, we mail them. Um, no, we have this, tons of lanyards. Yeah, yeah. I, that's I what I'm have, saying. Yeah, we've got yeah, we've got loads, and you automatically will get one of those. We've got the we're on, currently on the second or third. And you get oak design. and mead. And it is still January. So as long if you sign up when it is still January, what is it? Today's the 27th, so... Yeah, you're um, good. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Magic Knife. Um, Ten months in a row from Titch. Oh, wow. Thank you, Titch. But, um, God, yeah. I hope you live that long. As long... <laughs> I'll do my best. I will I'm, already I'm in have fairly had my baby. And, yeah. um, for if like I didn't, my paintings would go yeah. way up in value. But Let's see. This is the the January pin of the month. So as long as it's still technically January, even if it's like we're on Eastern time, but if it's like one minute before midnight, <laughs> before February, you would still get this one here. She's a sparkly one. I think we showed her last time. You get her and this one. This one might feel like a shopping channel and and you get strawberry cupcakes. And then you would in February get Heart of Nails and you would get all of these as long as you are a Patreon pin collector tier. And then when she is done here, you would get her. And then you would also get the pin that is the um, Luna Moths. And we're going to make her glow in the dark. Originally, I was like, I don't know, is there a type of enamel? And I, I'm very weird about my enamel choices. Again, these are very, very specific colors. And these are the enamel that, that they pour onto the metal pins to make them specific colors. But they also have glow-in-the-dark color versions of some of these. And they have one that kind of looks like a blue-green sort of color that would fit the Luna Moths very perfectly. So when I do the the next Patreon one, you get that. So basically, you get a bunch of pins. It includes all the other Patreon goodies, discounts, etc. And I, I know I talk about Patreon a lot, but it is pretty great. And I, I'll not just as a producer, but as a consumer, I, I follow a lot of my favorite artists up there and favorite podcasts and musicians and things up there, too. It, I like it so much better on Facebook. I, I couldn't even tell you. And if you do join the pin tier, it includes your shipping. Even if you live in Australia or something, that includes your shipping all the way there. And that way you don't miss out on any of the Even Patreons in Australia. Or, even Australia. Well, I say that because it costs like eight times as much money to mail something to Australia as it does to like, you know, Georgia or wherever. But, but yeah, so since you guys have been asking a lot about how pins are made, this is very much the first step. You can probably see I've drawn a lot of lines on here. Originally, I made her arms kind of go down the other way. And I did this in pencil. I don't use, use a pencil very often when I'm laying things out. But I do with stuff like product designs, concept art, stuff where I not finish paintings really, but things where I know I might have to make changes. And I've been working on this one for about a day other than the Epcot thing. And originally, I had kind of made the drawing more of where her voodoo doll was over her face a bit but when I, I I drew it out in pencil and I like took a picture of it and scrunched it way down and looked at it and it you it, she looks great when she's an 8x10 like this or even like a smaller one like a 4x6 mini print or like a tarot card or something but when she's very small you can't quite tell what she's holding I want it to be very obvious and I also want her to kind of match the voodoo in the blue one which is the other voodoo pin i mean it's voodoo you gotta have pins so she's got a little doll that kind of matches this one she doesn't have pins in hers and she's totally gonna have pins in hers which kind of uh, it was around the same time i did the voodoo in blue that i did the painting of heart of nails so she's got a little heart that has a little a little nail pin in that so it's got the voodoo theme that kind of carries through it i think that works really good with pins so right now, since I've done a lot of the sketching it works good with and pins. exact yes. that's what I'm saying. Voodoo, and Voodoo pins, pins yeah. you know, that's how it is. So I've got most of the lines I want. I might change her wings. I've got her arms where I like. Um and I'm taking this is just um oh what is it? Payne's gray and Van Dyke Brown is mostly what I'm using here. When I 
start and when I know for sure I want her wings where they're at I want the doll in the same place and I, I start off with four pins that kind of look like the oh I did a painting called Voodoo in the Bayou that had four pins like on both sides this one here I I'm thinking I'm putting one pin here and two on that side I might change that but I've erased one of the pins because I did it in pencil and I'm, I'm just kind of going over it whatever I do in black by black I mean dark blue mixed with dark brown when I do that when I scan it in on my scanner and I go to Photoshop or the factory goes to Photoshop and says Harry where here are all the black lines that's the part that will be metal on the pins and then I'll be choosing while you guys are watching later the different colors of enamel that I will try to replicate in the type of acrylic paint I'm using to then go in and fill in the different color cells so this this is kind of a it's not usually how I would do a painting but for something like a product that is very much outlines colors enamels molds metal etc this is a good way to show how you can use and if you are somebody who who does um stuff like in uh, Photoshop or um, iPads or digital stuff to begin with you can kind of probably skip this step I'm just very old-fashioned so I'm doing it on, on a piece of wood first to make sure I like the look of it and then I scan it in and the factory will then say hey we're gonna pick all the black bits and make a little die cut and mold and then we'll pick the enamels and pour them in so it, it's just kind of the concept art I do before the pen but she should end up looking very much like this that would be pretty cool I'll, we'll probably give some way up here at twitch too and uh, of course obviously the patreon people will get them and that will be a way you're like hey I saw Jasmine making that and now I got the pen so you you were definitely a part of it everybody she was the second place winner on the poll we just had at patreon number one was luna Mots, and she will be the patreon pen yes. and then this one will be the um pin of the month for march so even if you're not a patreon person patreon people will get her automatically but you'll be able to buy her if you just want one and you just want one pen you can just buy her what are they like 13 or 14 dollars i forget they're on my website 13.99 13 13 so. okay I can't I remember. I, I, I'm, I'm probably confusing it because I was at Epcot and I have that pin. I have a special pin at Epcot that is like, is that fourteen ninety nine or is that fifteen? Fifteen even. Oh, it's fifteen. Oh, okay. Oh, that's the Alice in the Dolly Dream one. It yeah. is. So people were asking if yeah. we've had a chance to enjoy the Epcot Festival of the Arts. You know, we did a little bit yesterday. We walked around. We we basically we didn't have lunch, and then we went to Epcot and got a lot of the. They have a, a decent amount, not a crazy amount, but a decent amount of vegetarian options there. And we got different snacks that were there, and we walked through and looked at um a lot of um a lot of disney artists and also non-disney artists who are just setting up tents there there are i don't even know how many tents are there like maybe 30 that are art tents i'm not sure i have a little booklet but i don't have it near me but they have a lot of people and it, it's kind of like going to an art fair where people set up kind of easy up tent looking things and they've got their panels up and their artwork but it's inside epcot so you've got all the stuff you usually have at a theme park like at epcot and then you also have all the art festival things that are going there. And then since it is not only art, like visual arts, it's also performing arts and it is um, culinary arts, which is where the food comes in. And we've had well, Jasmine, some pretty tasty things there. Nikki yeah. just landed in L.A. Oh, wow. We, we just saw her yesterday, if she doesn't mind me saying. We saw, yeah. just saw her less than 24 hours ago. I know. And now she's on a different coast. But it was so good to see you, Nikki. And that that was, I'm sorry, it was cold, but I'm glad I got to give you a hug. And that, that was a lot of fun. We Last night, we were at the Wonderground tent. I have two tents at the Epcot International Festival of the Arts. The Wonderground is the one that is run by Disney that has my Disney artwork on it. And then there's the Pop Gallery tent, which is where I'll be next Saturday, right? And that, I think yes. so. Yeah, next Saturday I'll be there at the Pop Gallery tent. Did you hear about the Epcot Festival of the Arts, Jasmine? Did I hear about it? Was it was pretty tense. It was very tense. It was, it was very tense. intensive. You know? Yeah. Yeah. A joke. Let's not let's not tell that joke again. We can if we like. You can if you like. I will. Okay. What are what are you, Gollum? Yes. <laughs> Let's not tell. Yes, I am. What is Tater's precious? 
But um, we, we did go and get some num-nums there, though, at Epcot. I'm trying to think what, what tasty things we got. We got a handful of things. Let's Mer- see. Uh, we got um, the risotto. Uh, we got we the risotto, risotto balls. We had in the Chinese Pavilion, they have a special tent where the artwork is. That is the culinary art section that has... They are like tiny little plum tomatoes, like small tomatoes that have been skinned, and they soak them in like a plum extract. And you can get them as is, just have tomatoes soaked in plums, or you can get them in plum wine. And they put it like in a martini glass, but it's plum wine that has weird tomatoes with a little pokey stick, like a little toothpick thing that you can grab them with. And th- that was delicious. I like that one a lot. I like the flatbread in Morocco. The flatbread in Morocco. It doesn't, a lot of things will have bees by them as they're vegetarian. But then there are some of the booths that didn't submit their paperwork ahead of time. So they are vegetarian and they'll have their list of ingredients if you want to check it. And they 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 don't have a V, but they're still vegetarian. So yeah. always, always ask them. They know. Yeah. People are hungry for sketches. Have you ever considered just selling sketches? You know, unless it's something that is a production. When I say production, that I might not be using the word right. But I when I say that, it's something that I'm going to use to make a product. Like, hey, this is going to be a sculpture. This is going to be a Disney painting. This is going to be a pen. That's the only time I really sketch, and usually when I do sketch, again, I, this one I did with a a horrible mechanical pencil I've had for like 15 years, I, I kind of paint on top of it, so by the time the artwork is done, I've already painted on top of it, so there isn't really a separate sketch, because it's kind of buried underneath the paint. I, I do have friends who will do a sketch, and then they'll like transfer it or print it out or do something and then paint on top of it but i tend to but when i do sketch if i'm doing something that is for a project or for a product i kind of paint on top of it so there is a sketch in there just like buried under paint so there isn't a separate one so if, if i was buy smart a sketch by buying an original yeah paint. the sketch is that you could scrape off all the paint and you could see the sketch that <laughs> would be a really that, that, that thing would be do. bad but you know if i was more i don't know um money minded i would probably do it on a piece of paper and then i can sell the piece of paper and then sell the painting but i'm usually i'm not necessarily busy but i'm kind of usually on deadline or trying to make the most out of my time so when i do a sketch i just kind of keep painting on top of it until it turns into a painting Jasmine. yeah uh, laura wants to know first yeah. of all she's very happy yay that that's luna good. one oh yeah luna should be pretty great Glow in the dark? Yes, and we I am definitely glowing on the dark on her. Because I found an enamel that was kind of more green, but it glowed in the dark, as opposed to the kind of white blue sort of glow in the dark. This one's more green, and that's the one I'm gonna use for I have a oh do I not have it here? Probably over there. For those people, for uh, the Luna Moth's um printout, I had her over so oh, probably on the I top have there. Over here. Oh, okay. Maybe I did have her, her over here, I don't know. Yep. Oh, okay. I want to show people what I'm talking about because she's the one who actually won the poll. We had the poll up for five days and we had hundreds of votes and it was very close. It was close to the point that I was like either going to do the Luna Moths thing or the um, Voodoo and Violet. Magazine. Next to my dinosaur. Was it Prehistoric Times? Yeah, can you show that off? <laughs> I, 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 I'm not a paid cool. spokesman, but it's the best magazine oh, yeah. that comes out now. But oh, in the meantime, I'll talk about, you guys You guys saw me paint her, um, Luna Moth. She's when I painted here. Um, golly, was that in December? It was December. That was just last month. Seems like ages ago. But somebody um, bought the original painting last night, so she's all gone. This is the print. We do have we the prints are only at Pop Gallery, so she's not one you can get on my website. But we're going to make a pin of her. She's the one who won the pin contest. So one thing I'm going to have to do, like I'm doing with um, Voodoo and Violet here, you see that's a realistic painting that I did. This will be the line art one that's going to turn into the pin. So like how we had the. Like the one we're showing earlier, it's like, oh, there's a pen. It's like black metal and enamel. But I'm gonna have to draw the line art for her. I might. I don't know if I'll trace it because I want it to be slightly different. But it will. She'll look mostly like her. And I want to put some sort of glowing elements in her. And I wanted to put the glowing bits on the moths. What I need to do is talk to the factory where I get the enamels at, where they actually make the metal at because these are my color choices. I would like, I don't know if it's even something they can do, but 
if I can do the, like the triple moon goddess and the little moon symbol where it's a crescent moon the wa waning or waxing and then waning and the full moon in the middle I'd like to do that kind of in a warmer glowing pin and like the enamel and then the little um luna moths maybe have them glow too or I might only make it the warm color in the middle and make that reflect in our eyes. So that's something that's going to take me, I didn't know until 11 o'clock this morning which which of the two designs I was going to win because it was neck and neck. It was definitely first place, second place with her and then Voodoo and Violet. And those were two of the choices. The other ones were all very good choices too and they all got a lot of votes. So I might make them special pins later or make it like the, I don't know, the August pin of the month or something. But they were all ones that people have asked for up in the pin group and on Patreon. But she will be the Patreon pin of the month and she will probably be shipping as I don't think I'll probably have her done or have the mold finished and the enamels poured until probably after when we're sending out the February pin. So in February, if you're a pin person, you might you, you'll definitely be getting her again. It's kind of a Valentine one, even though you, you'll probably be around Valentine's Day when you get her, but that will be Heart of Nails will be the February one. Around. Around there. You might get her before, you'll probably get her after. It depends what country you live in and how the post office is working. <laughs> That's always a, who knows what's happening. And then she will be the Patreon pin that will either be in February or March. And if she's March, she'll come with this one, which is the one I'm working on now. So you, if you are a Patreon pin collector, you will definitely get all three. So that is exciting. Actually, and again, if you do sign up, while it's still January for the next two days, you get these two also. So it's the next, what, three days, four days? How many days are in January? 31? The January, next four days? Yeah, day the day next day four day. days you would be getting all these. And this one, as long as you stay subscribed, you'd be good. So if you are really into the pins, it's a good time to join. But yeah, Luna Moths turned out lovely. And they do have prints and everything of her. Uh, the Luna editions are all sold out. Um, but they, at the, they're at the Pop Gallery at Disney Springs. But they do have paper prints and um, open edition canvas prints and stuff like that. So those are definitely the next best things, even though the original and the Luma editions have sold out. Now the painting here that I'm working on that I'm doing the pin version of. Again, this is on a not very, this is just like regular paper. I'd like print out map quest on or something, but um, Voodoo and Violet. Jasmine, so this is going to be you her. You can call Pop Gallery and order a canvas print. You of sure can. You, can. you can call them or email them. I think they're, uh, I might have it written on that RTF I left up on the computer for Pop Gallery. You can call Pop Gallery or you can email them. Their email is popgallery, all one word, at me.com. You might even have a link. Yeah, you might you might have a link to it. But yeah, they have they have small prints of her, um, just paper prints, and glossy prints, and they're all signed by me. So that's kind of neat. Um, on the back, I think the paper prints are in the um, canvas ones. You can get you can request those are signed by me too, and those are all made by us here. So. But yeah, somebody bought the original one last night. We had a couple of people trying to buy the original, but uh, I think I think the right person got it, so that's good. Made me happy. Also, somebody bought the original of Corella. I don't remember if she was sold last time I was here when we were talking about the new Disney pieces I had done. The Corella original painting, the big acrylic one, yes. has been sold. So these are these three here, the original paintings are 16 by 20s. I think they're priced at $7,200 each. They're acrylic on panel and they are framed beautifully by Disney. And they're sold by Disney at the Art of Disney Store at Epcot. So I, as, as of when we left yesterday, so no promises, I apologize in advance if somebody's already bought them. They do have the original painting of Cinderella leaving the ball and Princess Tiana. They might be gone, but if you're interested, call Art of Disney and you can just search Art of Disney Epcot on Google and you'll find their phone number and they will ship worldwide. And also Matt, um, yes. I don't think we knew this last time, but your WDW store is selling postcards and prints in like phone cases and everything okay, online. So tell people that sure. because nobody else can buy those unless they are at Epcot. 
basically your WDW and we store. Can't sell them. And I can't sell them. No, no. They belong to Disney. So they can only be sold at the Disney retailers and Disney websites, etc. Or theoretically, somebody could go to Disney and buy them and put them on eBay. They're going to cost a lot more on eBay. That's just how eBay is. I, I don't. I don't get a discount or anything, so I don't do that myself. Otherwise, I just like lose money all the time. But, Jasmine. Yeah. Uh, Wendy uh, says hi, Jasmine. I met you. Oh, hi, Wendy. Yes, I remember talking to you. Epcot was talking to you about Tinkerbell. And yes. I fell in love with your work. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we. I've done two Tinkerbells. I think I probably told you there at Epcot. Um, I did the Tinkerbell and the Mermaids and Tinkerbell at Skull Rock. You can still sometimes find Tinkerbell at Skull Rock. The she was a more recent one. And she's the one that is one of the giant, like, 30-foot banners that are in front of the Wonder Grand Gallery in Anaheim at Disneyland. They have her hanging up there, but I think Disney has officially retired her now because I, I, again, I don't know. They don't, like, email me and say, hey, we're going to retire this one, but I, I haven't seen her in a store for probably six months, so I'm guessing she is probably retired but you might be able to get her at your WDW store, which is a Disney shopping service. Sometimes they have old stuff that like was sold out a while ago, but they're cast members so they can find them and get the leftover old inventory and all that. So Ruchama, that's, or Ruchama, that's the, about the best way you can get the Yana canvas. Yes, definitely. Um, uh, yes. wait, Otherwise, right? you have to be the at... The canvases, I don't think you can get anywhere unless you're at Epcot yet. Yeah. Until mm. after February 25th. Yeah. Because um, right now, you know, if you're really after one of the limited edition canvases, contact the people at your WDW there, store. There should, should be some... Because they are not on their... Event. They're not on their... Yeah, well, I mean, there should be plenty. I think they're, they're... They do 195 for their editions at Disney that are... Um, and they usually do multiple sizes. So they'll do like a... I, I don't know, like a, a 11 by 14, a 16 by 20, an 18 by 24, maybe a 20 by 24. and Because the originals are around 16 by 20. So they kind of pick one or two sizes around that. And Disney will do the um, the limited editions that I actually sign. They mail them to me here in my house, about 10 feet away from where I'm sitting right now. And I sign them, and they're numbered and all that. But they are not on the your WDW store website, .net. Um, website because I don't think they put limited editions up there but if you contact them like you send them an email or user contact form and say hey I want to get a limited edition of Corella or Tiana or whichever the new ones they might crossing my fingers here I'm sorry if you're watching and you don't do that WW star but um if you go there and you tell them hey will you go get that they're basically a shopping service where they, I, I've not met them in person. I might have. If I did, I didn't know. But um, they go to Disney. They go to festivals and things where Disney's having special events. That they have unique um, memorabilia. Even stuff like off the cruise ships. And things that are hard for people all over the world to get. They add some extra money onto it. That's how they make their money. And that's how they pay for places that you have to pay $100 to get an Epcot to get a pass, you know. And they will buy stuff for you, and they'll ship them worldwide. So even if you want something of mine that's Disney, and you and it's out of print, or if it's hard to get, and it's part of a specific event, or at a, a gallery exclusive, etc., um, I would recommend contacting them, because they are going to be able to help you out more than I am. Because I'm, I'm just the lady who paints them, and I don't really... Oh, Gabriel says goodnight. Oh, goodnight, Gabriel! I guess in, in France it's nighttime, yeah? It's kind of nighttime here, isn't it? But not not super nighttime. I'm gonna actually I don't know if you can tell in here, um I don't know how well you can see my pencil lines, because I I you can probably see I've drawn her arms on there a few times. Now I'm going over with the dark blue and the dark brown and kind of outlining the areas that for sure I want to keep. So when I've made all of that, that dark black brownie blue color, I can put it on my scanner, scan it in send it to the factory and they will be able to pick up like they have a computer that can say, hey, those are the black parts of the lines. We're gonna turn that into metal when they have the metal big stamping machine. So when I have a line I don't want, I'm going to kind of erase over it. Also, also folks, by the way, the, the first, first raffle, raffle is the Cruella. Oh, is card. Cruella first? Yeah. I'll show her real quick. It's, I think it's the same. Same order as last time? Cruella, Cinderella, leaving the ball, and Princess Tiana. 
Okay, and then the very last one is um, Heart of Nails, right? Heart of Nails. Okay. Which typically, um, you say, oh no, it's a pin of the month, but you're gonna get my one of it that I use for color correcting, so you'll have yours like before everybody else, so that's kind of fun. Jasmine, what are the differences color. between this one and and this one, probably on video, in blue? Oh, oh and oh, blue. Oh, in video and blue, okay. okay. Yeah, uh, give, if there are any, set the color, please. Oh no, they're very different. If you look at, um, here, I actually kept my, this is my personal video and blue pen. She's the one that I keep on my purse. But if you look at her, she, you can see her whole body. You can see like her legs and her face is kind of leaning the other way. She's got a doll that's almost as big as her. This one I'm doing so far, I think it's going to be more of a portrait style where it's going to be a similar looking character, much like in the painting of Voodoo and Violet, her hair. You don't, you don't see her tummy and her bum and her legs and her knees and her feet and stuff like that. It's like a portrait version. And her face is going the other way and she's going to have a doll that's closer down and that's going to be the bottom side of the pen. That's a weird thing about designing pins. In addition to the character and the kind of the how the painting looks aesthetically, I think of what the outside of the pen is going to look like. So this one, instead of being like feet and hands at the bottom like in Voodoo and Blue, this one's going to have the doll. So the doll will be a lot larger. Her head's a different way. She's going to have different colors. And I don't have the mold for Voodoo and Blue anymore, but I want her to, if you were to put her next to her, you'd see they're part of the same series, but you wouldn't think it was just like a variant of the same mold because I want her to be new and different. And But she's got a, a doll also too. I don't know if this is showing up good. You can always look her up online um, with that. Voodoo and Blue, she's holding a little doll, almost like a teddy bear. It doesn't have any pins in it. If you know Voodoo stuff at all, you're like, oh, that's just a doll. She could just be having a teddy bear there. It doesn't matter. This one here, too, I'm putting... I, I don't know how many I'm going to do. I, I put four in and I erased one, but I think I'm doing three pins all on the hands. I thought about putting one right in the middle, too. So I mm -hmm. might erase one of these and I might erase one of the ones I put over here and kind of stick one right in the heart because... That's kind of Valentine's Day, so. But that also kind of goes yeah, with the one. um, the Heart of Nails one, how she's got the little heart that's got the pins in it. Yeah. What's that, baby? Elle Hurt says, uh, little violet, meaning voodoo and violet, yeah. will be an open edition pin, print yep. pin for anyone to buy. She will be. She'll be one that will be the pin of the month for um, March. So even if you're not a um, Patreon pin collector, you can buy her on the website. So anybody could buy them, and they are they will be open edition. I say open edition, but it's not like if a million people bought them, I would make a million pins. I'm going to keep it. <laughs> I'm not going to make that many of them, but if they sell, they sell out. But they will be available for everybody to buy. The Jokey Mom just subscribed for 10 months in a row. Oh, thank you. Wow. You know what no, I think? A lot of months? I think that that's... That it has been, been 10 months. Yeah. Oh, oh, not that it's 10 months in the future. Oh, so far they have been subscribing. Yes, that it, it that makes more sense. Very I was gonna poorly. say, yeah, I was gonna say they're not wording that right. Yeah. Uh, not not you, <laughs> but like the um, yes, the it's software. It's 10 months yeah. in a row. That yeah, probably means they were up there for six months and then four months or right. three I months and three months and one that. month. Or, that makes more sense because I was going to say, it seems like everybody's hanging in there for a long time. Jasmine, can you I tell don't know, uh, people about Kieran's uh, YouTube? As always, if you guys don't want to watch the whole episode here or you want to see some things that you might not normally see or see things highlighted, if you go to Kieran's World on YouTube, he basically takes, he's my friend in England who takes like kind of the highlights and condenses some of my videos and my live events in England and kind of smushes them together, puts them up on YouTube. And that way you can see, oh, that was a time instead of Jasmine just blathering on about Patreon. That's when she was doing something interesting or one of the cats came or something like that. And it's, it's a good way to catch up if you were, if you missed one of the broadcasts. Let's see what I'm working on. So Kieran's World at YouTube. Now I've made some lines. I'm trying to kind of make it so the lines of her hair, I, I kind of want them, I'm kind of doing the opposite the way that Voodoo and Blue's hair was, where um, her hair is kind of parted on the other side. This is kind of almost flipped, like horizontal, the way that, um, and her hair is more parted in the middle, the way that the actual painting of Voodoo and Violet's is. 
So I want to make sure that she's going to have dark hair to kind of match the two of these, but I want to I want to make sure I do violet and purple. And yeah, instead but... of just having black like on the little booty doll's eyes, I'm going to do violet to match her wings and to match the streaks in her hair. Yeah. Uh, S.B. Reynolds uh, just subscribed. Oh, thank you. A lot of subscribe happening, huh? That's very good. Thank you very much. Okay, more or less, I've got to figure out her arm. I was trying to decide if I want to make her hair. I'm going to actually look at this painting while I'm doing this one. Because her hair, and this one kind of goes over her shoulders. Actually, this would be a good example of me to show about how if you're sketching with a paintbrush, how you can erase things. If you aren't using pencil, you can totally erase with a paintbrush. The color that I have here, it's kind of a brownish gray. That is what I mixed in with the gesso. When I prime a wood panel, I use the Liquitex Basics gesso. And I put a few colors in there. It's mostly browns and grays on this because I'm trying to match the palette. Do I have the palette here? Oh, I did. There we go. This is the palette I used for the enamels for Voodoo and Blue. So I'm trying to match roughly the same skin tone so that if somebody was trying to collect all the booty pens, they all kind of go together. If it wasn't even a skin tone, if I made her have a dark skin tone or a green skin tone or something, I would want to have that color in there somewhere. So it looks like they kind of go, like maybe I'd make her hair that color if I made her have purple or brown skin or something. So I I kind of mix that kind of gray warm, it's a color called Warm Gray Number no. 1 that is a Pantone, which is a company that makes different pigments, enamel. So I've mixed that color that I blended myself just out of random fluid acrylics. I mixed it with the gesso. And since I knew that was going to be a color I wanted in there and I didn't necessarily know if it would be her hair color or the doll's color or skin color, I wanted to make sure that color is in there somewhere. So I mixed it with the gesso when I was doing the layout here. But it's also very good because if I have this here, like how I kind of, I don't know if you can see, I kind of drew her arm. This is like the third time I've drawn her arm. I've been working on her for a while, but... I, I kind of made her hair go over her arm there, but when it's a pin and it's literally going to be a machine at the factory that is going to scan in the dark colors, I don't want them to see a bunch of wiggly weird lines on her shoulder that I don't want on there. I'm going to use the same color, that same kind of gray color, to go over yeah, where her been. shoulder is. So that's how I kind of erase. It's like using an eraser by adding a background color on top. Now you can't even see your shoulder. What's that, love? H. Lennon asks, yeah. is Voodoo and Blue, as of now, the only Voodoo as a pin in the series? I think so. Which is funny, because I've done quite a lot of Voodoo-themed paintings. I've, um... I have... Uh, there's Voodoo in Pink, the painting. There's Voodoo in the Bayou, the a painting. There's a few of them I've done that are very Voodoo-themed. Um, Voodoo Fairy, and um, that was one of the first one. That's, that one's really cute. She's the one with the skeleton skull wings, and... She's one of the little hanging ornaments that one of the first um, figuring companies that did my artwork, um, they made. So I would love to make her a pin too, but that's me thinking ahead. I'm like, hey, if I do that, I want to make sure I use some of the same, even if just one color out of here. And again, it doesn't have to be her hair color or skin color or like the doll's color. As long as I use one of the same colors in all of them. That way, if somebody wants to build a collection based off of the voodoo pins, then they will all kind of go together. They'll have some sort of chroma sort of thing that is continuing across the theme. I'm going to do another, I'm getting my hair dryer out real quick. Sorry, this is noisy. Because yeah, if her shoulder is way over there, I want her shoulder yeah, to been... be over there because I'm going to make her hair grow in front of it. Ma'am. Uh, Kelly Sarah wants to, you to uh, tell their son. Oh, okay. Uh, that's uh, Ian. Yes. Yes. Okay. That that no, Kelly. Not. Yes. I, I do know a lot can of Kelly. So can you please, please tell my son that baby oil is made from squeezing babies, just like sunflower oil is made from sunflower seeds? It is. He it, won't it, believe us. It's much like olive oil, like how they have before the olives like get ripe, they have a big press and they kind of push them in there and they kind of smash them down with the big metal machinery. They do that with babies to make baby oil. I don't get it because I'm vegetarian, but other people do, and that's okay. I hope nobody's putting this on YouTube as like the one quote for me. <laughs> what other sort of oil is there? I'm trying to think. Jasmine. Mm -hmm. uh, Elhurt says, speaking of color, what yeah. color purple slash violet 
are you thinking of using? You know, I, I am not sure. Again, this is my little cheat sheet I've made. I actually made this in Photoshop going, looking at the enamels, taking screenshots of them and putting them in order. And it's probably, I don't know if you can even see it because I can't even see it in real life. I have the numbers. It's like, oh, it will say warm gray one or reflex blue or PMS 490, etc. And I have this in Photoshop. So when this is scanned in, or even before it's scanned in, I will look at these colors since these are the violets. I'm going to look at my printout of my original painting and see which purple kind of matches the most. Right now, I'm thinking it's going to be in this quadrant here. I don't know how well the colors show up here on Twitch, like on my silly cheap cameras here. But if you look at like the first three or four lines, I don't know, hopefully the camera's showing this, there's like a few lighter kind of violets. That is the same color that I would put in her eyes. That's the same color I'd put on the thread and the little... Um, like the rope that's kind of being used to make the voodoo doll. Can you see that? I have a really... Uh, yeah, we can't yes. see it. You can't oh, see oh, it on I'm the sorry. screen. Uh, no, I, I don't want to take what? it off the wall. It's no, not like... I could fetch it for you. Oh, no. It's got a lot of stuff tied to it. I would not want to move it. There's like I human vertebrae on it. But yeah. I, I, if you like, yeah, maybe maybe a bit later we grab them when the kitties are upstairs or something. But yeah, that purple... This is when I look at the painting... And I, I know you could probably do this on a computer, but I'm old fashioned, but I will look at this and I will kind of put the hair, sometimes I'll even fold it over. Like, let's say I have this, this print out of the painting here. I'll fold it so it's like that purple. And I kind of put it, it's like you're painting your room, like you're at Home Depot and you're trying to see what purple goes with things. I will look at that. And then I have a computer version of this as a PDF and I will zoom way in and See what the letters and numbers are of the enamel, and that will be the one I choose to do that. And when I do that, I make something like this that I send to the factory to actually choose the enamel and buy a certain amount of enamel to pour into the metal molds, and then they'll know exactly which colors I want. And I try to make it match the original. Sometimes I change it because I want it to be a bit brighter or more contrast, but it, it should be pretty close on this one. What's up? Uh, what, what is your favorite David Bowie, Bowie song? Oh, ho, ho, ho. I... I You'd have to give me a week on that one. I, 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 I don't know. I mean, a lot of them would be very obvious, and then I think there's a lot of ones that would be kind of obscure. And then I think of ones I like that are ones from films, or I don't I know. I like. I, I mean, like the uh, uh, I like the uh, Nine Inch Nails. Um, I'm afraid of Americans. I'm afraid of Americans. I'm afraid of Americans is one of my favorite. Favorite, favorite, favorite that's David Bowie songs. And I, and that's kind of cheating because I'm also a big Nine Inch Nails fan. And it had a wonderful video for it. Very good video. Well, I saw it when it debuted on 120 Minutes back on MTV way back in 19 something from. And that was magnificent. And I will always remember that time. But that that's a very good one. But I, I don't think I've heard anything from David Bowie I don't like. I mean, some of his best things were of, of his um, last time I was at Dexter, the the one that came out right right around the time he died. Those are some of his best songs. He's one of those people that it doesn't matter what year, or what decade he made the music in, you can tell it's David Bowie, and it's consistently good from start to finish. And that's a hard thing to say for an artist who's been working a long time in the industry. So are are you a um, I'm afraid of Americans fan love or do you have a favorite? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, uh, I like that one. I like a lot of them. I don't know. Yeah. No, that's a. I am afraid of Americans, but I'm afraid question. of people too, in general. Yeah, I, I Americans in specific, but people in general. Yeah. Now, if you look at the painting of her, you don't really see her left. I guess it'd be on my right hand shoulder. Um. Because in this one, the doll's a bit bigger, but I don't. I want this to be a portrait style. I don't want to put her legs and her bum and her backside and everything. Yeah, um, so um, I'm gonna have to draw a shoulder in there somewhere. So I might just make her hair kind of go. That's kind of a cheat. You just kind of make hair go all over everything, so you don't have to worry about anatomy. Yeah, what's that? Do you normally listen to music when you paint? I do listen to music when I paint quite a lot. Yeah, that's um. I'm either listening to music or also to audiobooks. I listen to so many audiobooks, it's almost a joke. I, I probably download an audiobook a day from Audible. It's like all my mad money goes to Audible. <laughs> Any spare money I have probably goes to Audible because I, I, I listen to everything out there. But I do listen to music a lot. I actually have, 
I still have a CD player. It's about what is it? Three feet away from me here on the ground. Oh, my CD. Player? Yeah, I, 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 yeah, it's a Matt CD player, but it's right by my art desk. But yeah, I listen to that quite often when I'm working. Jasmine does yeah. not listen to thrash metal. I don't think I do. You don't. Oh, yeah, I, I, nothing against it. I, I like noisy music. I like industrial music. I like. I'm not really into a lot of the, like Swedish death metal sort of stuff. Although some of that is kind of entertaining. So no judgment, but. What we were listening to earlier, we were, again, it was Nine Nails while we were setting up, and then um, uh, Led Zeppelin, a bunch of, 90% uh, of what I listen to is Robin Hitchcock, and not just because he's a friend of mine, but he's also the best musician who ever lived. A lot of the artwork I do is somehow based off of songs or titles or poems or something he did, and that makes me very happy, what even though it has audio? nothing to do with my artwork, but it's just uh, kind of... What kind of audiobooks do you listen to? And also, uh, Shadow Dancer loves Audible a lot. I love Audible. I, you know, I, I listen to. I should. What am I listening to now? Ah. This would be easier than me trying to remember. I'll just get my phone. Let me see. Do, 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 do. Oh dear, this might not be appropriate for all ages. I'm. I'm. Not, they, okay, I don't know if there's any Henry Miller fans out there, but they, they released, um, this was, I was going through a thing where I was look, listening to all the banned books at different times. This is from almost 100 years ago, but it's Tropic of Cancer by Henry Miller, and they have Tropic of Capricorn, but they don't have the second one. So it's like they have the first and third of the trilogy, but not the second one. They're like, no, none for you. And it's like, why have something as a banned book? And I read this back in high school and thought I was very grown up because he used a lot of swear words. But it's like, why have the first and third one when you're talking about banned books, but not have the second one? And I'm like, I'm trying to remember the difference between the first, second, and third books because it's kind of like a big, long, weird, picaresque sort of story that's kind of a self um, portrait as an writer in Paris, but kind of made up at the same time, I hope. It sounds like everybody's yeah, very ill. A lot of true crime. Um, a lot of classics. Oh, I've got a lot of true crime. I probably shouldn't show this. Yeah. I, I listen to a lot of things. Jasmine. What's that? Oh, why are the wings different in the pin than the painting? In the painting, the wing oh. has more of a white point, like a point in the claw straight up. Yeah, I'm actually going to put a little claw there. And I'm going to put I, the claw there. If I thought it was going to be there, it would be behind her head. But I'm going to put a little claw there. I'll do that before I forget. Because, again, I'm still sketching this one out. And part of while I was sketching this one, I was trying to combine the idea of this pin, Voodoo in Blue, with this character here. So I am kind of drew the way. If you look at her in the painting, this is how the painting looks. It's an 8 by 10. So... If I were to make a pin that looks like that, it's like, well, where's the rest of her wing? You have, I, I can't just, I don't want to make a rectangle. I like my pins to be shaped like the outside of the character would be. Because a lot of when I look at a pin design, I want it to be a silhouette that looks appealing, that has some sort of a aesthetic quality to it. So on her, I was like, well, she's part of the same series as Voodoo and Blue and Voodoo and Pink, etc. So I want to make sure I show her wings because part of the fun of designing a metal pin is having a lot of interstices and weird little pokey things that go off to the sides and um, shapes. If you were to see it from the backside, like you'd see it and you know that was a fairy. If I did that with this painting, it would just be a weird little nubbins and then just turning to nothing. So I made her wings kind of look like the ones that are in Voodoo and Blue, just so she would have a, there would be an actual outline for making the physical mold of the pin, so it doesn't look like a weird cut out school portrait or something. But I'm going to put little, again, this is still sketching, I'm going to put little white, uh, kind of like little horns, ivory bits at the end of each of these, and I'm going to put one closer there. This one's going to be covered up with her hair. That's actually something I should do now, is cover up this part of her wing. This is part of the reason I don't always do a lot of sketching online, because it's hard to explain to people. I'm like, no, no, that's just me trying to make it look symmetrical, and I know her hair is going to be over there, and her arm is going to be blocking out that part of the doll, and I know that, and you probably know that if you think about it, but I have to kind of start off. I'm only about two hours into this here. Yeah. Have you listened to Teacher's Pet? 
on podcasts? Teacher's pet. I have. I have not. Is that a um? Some sort of true crime thing. I don't. Oh, know. it's not like a Mary Kay Letourneau, is it? Don't know. Mm. If it is, I've read the book. I'm <laughs> audible of it. Well, that's like um. Isn't that um? Oh golly, am I? I might be wrong, but isn't that the one to die for of uh, Nicole Kidman with Joaquin Phoenix? I don't know. Remember, you saw that with me. He's I dancing. know what that is, He's but I don't know. He's a good dancer. Yeah. That's what it's about. I, I don't know, but there was a um there was an audio book that was called Teacher's Pet, and yeah, it was based off of that Mary Kay Letourneau story. Yeah. Shadow they Dancer did has married. a ton of book recommendations oh. for her if you're interested. Oh my gosh, if you do, for you if you're interested. email me at jasmintoday.com because I listen to different stuff every day, and I really do. Those of you folks who actually know me, I don't like saying, oh... Like, the internet said you should read this. I like hearing it from people I know, people whose opinions I trust. I like to hear that. So please do tell me recommendations. Jasmine. Yeah. Since Luna Moth is a pop gallery exclusive, will she yeah. be a canvas cutie? She won't be, no. She's um exclusive to, unless she, no, let's say we're at pop gallery. So if she is, she'd be a canvas cutie at pop gallery. She would not be at strangeling.com. I'll probably have a picture of her at strangeling.com. But I won't have her as like something you can buy at Strangely to Come. As far as as far as uh, two dimensional artwork goes, we'll have a pin of her, obviously. But um, as far as prints, canvases, stuff like that, that will only be from Pop Gallery. But they do sometimes have canvas cuties at Pop Gallery. That's like one of the only places you can buy them, unless you're a Patreon person on my website. That's it's canvas cuties or live events. Jasmine. Yeah. Uh, Shadow Dancer says they will email you. Please do. I, I like hearing suggestions, even if I even if I don't even ever read them. I like to know what other people think I would like, or I like to know what other people who like stuff I do also like. So that that's always helpful. Thank you. But I will make this more obvious as being little ivory tips on her wings. Again, this is very early in the painting and that's part of the reason i don't like usually starting from scratch and sketching because it's like no no she doesn't just have one eye and no nose i just haven't drawn the eye and the nose yet Jasmine. So, yeah uh know about the teacher's pet it's a podcast oh. on an old crime uh on, what crime? on an old crime oh. a journalist picked up on and brought to the light has been updated in real time as this podcast became number one and people demanded something was done. Oh, wow. I don't want to spoil it, but it's really interesting. Oh, that sounds very interesting. Is it contemporary? Like, it happened recently. An old crime. Old, well, I don't know what they mean by old. They mean, on. like, 1700s? I don't know. Or do they mean, like, 1995 or something? Either way, it sounds good. I listen to a lot of... I listen to a lot of odd stuff. <laughs> So I always appreciate recommendations. If anybody else has recommendations, especially in audiobooks or or things that are on Netflix or and I I can't promise I'll look at it, but I, I I will look at your recommendation. But I like I like to see what people think. Oh, is that the first um? Yes. Raffle and who is that? Is that the um Cruella? Cruella. Where'd you go, Cruella? I'm like a pile of papers over here. Where'd she go? Oh, there she is. Oh. Okay, Rilla, and this is from Epcot, from Disney World, official Disney merchandise that we stood in line and bought, and I will autograph her for you, and we will send her worldwide, whoever wins her, so that's doing the, um, Emma Plum giveaway. 83. Um, Emma Plum? Yep. Yay, Emma congratulations, Plum 83. Emma. You have won a Krilla. Unless you're an Epcot, this is a hard one to get right now. So I will autograph her and you can you can see all the worried puppies for yourself. My poor doggos, look at them. They should be worried. Why? But she's Why pretty great. Why would be worried, Jasmine? Well, look at her. And she wants to make clothing out of them. I Why are know. they near her? <laughs> well, I, I have a five by seven canvas to work on. I've got to fit in this. I, I, I did think about maybe, I didn't think people would notice. Like, if you look at the background houses, I thought about having the puppies looking out the window. But then I, I was like, oh, if it shrunk down to a five by seven postcard from Disney, I don't know if you'd be able to see all the weird right, puppies. It's, it's metaphorical. It, it is. It's, it's, it's not an actual scene from the film. Although, there, actually, when I was working on these ones, do you remember when they are in their house and they're watching TV? And it's the little, um, 
It's like a um, superhero doggy. That's a program yeah. that they watch like from the 50s or 60s. And it's a black and white TV program. I kind of made them like they're gathered around looking at the TV. But I did them looking at Krilla. And instead of looking excited and happy, I made them look worried. Aww. So that's a that's part of when it's the fun thing of looking at the Disney vault at previous Disney art that has been released and the old concept art for the film and the animation cells and like I'm going to combine those two. That kind of keeps it true to the Disney tradition, but it also kind of puts it in a different context. So if you look now, I've taken some Titan buff and I've added some of the little ivory claws. I'll show how that kind of matches her a bit more. If you see how she's got like a little ivory claw on the top of her wing, she does too. But instead of just like disappearing in the background, because you can't really do like a fade into the dark. You can't cure or skewer it up when you are making a pen. You've got to have a hard outline that is filled with colored enamel. So I've, I've kind of taken that, combined it with the wings that are on the um, Voodoo in Blue. You know, I don't think I have a printout of Voodoo in Pink or Voodoo in the Bayou. Or... I also have a painting that is planned for the future called Voodoo in Green, but that probably won't happen until later. Jasmine. But that kind of matches the shape of the wings, but it's got the little ivory that Southern Voodoo in Violet. Yeah. But Prince's Bullet says it was 30 to 35 years ago, referring to the Oh, the crime? crime? Okay, yeah. That's why it's being updated oh, in real time okay. as some of the people are still alive. Some people are still around really out and about and they could interview and them. And... Real voices used. Wow. None of those darn computer voices. Well, well you, they don't have actors who would have been on infomercials like reenacting everything. Although I do love me some inter um, reenactments. Even if they're terrible, I like reenactments. But I prefer yeah. poor reenactments. I prefer real life, but if there are reenactments, I will watch those. I don't prefer real life because it's unless it's an interview. No, with no, someone. no. If it's documentary, well, I, I'd rather I don't like see the cops people involved. That much, for example, well, cops is not. The first forty-eight is good. Cops is more of a I don't know because a it's talk show or Jerry Springer or something. Yeah, like that. cops uh, seems more. I, I like procedural goofy. sort of things or um, yeah i i, I don't yeah, need to a good, watch a good mouse, compromise so. is something like the first 48 first 48 is good also shows what a hard job it is for um people who do that for a living and you wake up in the middle of the night if you're a detective you just have to be gone for a couple days that's got to be a hard thing to do and raise children or have a family etc now that's dry it might work out yeah, yeah. Depends on the personality. Painting they probably too, wouldn't have yeah. chosen that profession no, unless they I, wanted I to do it. Well, now that I've kind of, like I was showing you guys how I kind of erased where her shoulder is so I could make her hair kind of cover over that part of her wing, much like in the painting. If you look at how her hair covers her little wing and her shoulder there, I covered that up and I've done a line over there. And that's just going to be her hair then. And I can't think about things like shading when I'm doing this because if there's a line there, I can't cover it up with dark purple and put light purple over there because I have to pick one purple because it, it again, it's like filling it in with an actual enamel that's going to be solid color. So there can't be any shading, there can't be any gradation of tone, which is very different than how I usually paint. So I'm going to, actually I need some more of my backup. That, this is why it's good to make a bunch of whatever color you use in the background. If you're painting on a white canvas, just have a bunch of white paint and you can do the same thing. I'm working on a toned um, panel here because I knew I wanted to have that warm gray 001, which is what I was on the previous painting. It's the warm gray one. It's the one that's right there. I don't know if you can see it. Kind of a grayish brown, blue, pink, gray white yeah as far as channels in the u.s what would you recommend for uh, any sort of true crime if you're looking for true crime obviously id discovery is kind of owns that as far as it goes um oxygen has stuff on there that is pretty good they've got snapped snapped is good it used to be snapped i think was trying to focus on females who and those are automatically more interesting stories if you're looking for true crime Instead of being, oh, it's the obvious thing. He's just trying to hurt a lady and steal her money. And uh, you've heard that story a million times. If it's on oxygen and there's a female involved, it's usually a really intricate, confusing, and almost soap opera-ish sort of story with a lot of intrigue. And But I think they've had it for so many seasons that now they are having, like, who was that that was on there? Didn't they do a Charles Manson one that was on they, Snapped? They do, and uh, like, well, that they do used to be high-profile high profile serial killer sort yes, of stuff. Uh, yeah, and... Murders. 
which is fine, and they're really or good on there. But it used to be they would always have pick. The there just aren't enough women who do stuff like that because you know, or women, and we don't really do that. But so yeah, much, Snap is, is typically a. It used to be. It used to be all girls, and I, yeah, it'd be something like some sort of intrigue where they're setting up some sort yeah. of financial well, trick quite, of some sort. No. Right. Um, a true. Well, I mean, it's true crime, but it's not murder. Or anything like that I, that I like is American Greed. Which American Greed. Have, that one is uh, is that I Discovery or is that or is that MSNBC? I don't, I don't, I don't remember. remember. I, just, I, I don't watch just TV it. often. It's usually when we're like at a hotel and we're on the road Princess for a show. Well, it says uh, Ted Bundy tapes on Netflix have just yes. been added. We just saw the first one. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Like we just saw it. My t one of my um, my graphic design teacher, who's actually somebody who taught me, this brings it around about Pantone. How about Pantone makes a lot of the hey, this is official blue, this is official tangerine, these are official colors. I learned that in my graphic design class with um, Professor Gatowski at UMKC, and he was friends with Anne Rule. Who wrote um, *The Stranger Beside Me*? Who was the um, one of the first true crime masters, and she um, worked with Ted Bundy at a crisis hotline, which is terrible to think you would call in some sort of assault crisis and call, and it was Ted Bundy helping you. But anyways, and she worked with him in Newport for a while in King County in Washington. And that is kind of how I got into reading true crime to begin with. Because it's like my teacher, my professor, Gatowski, is like, Hey, Jasmine, here's Anne Rill. She does a really good job. Why don't you check her out? You seem like you'd like that. I don't know if that's an insult or not. But One of her most high profile yeah. case was the uh, Diane, Diane Downs, Downs, which is another... I think it was probably Ted Bundy, but Diane well, Downs was it, popular too. Yeah. An, that's, that's a, a thing often with um, true crime stuff. stuff. Often when a woman's involved, she's often... Involved, Often her kids or something. It is, and it's usually and they're a... genuinely ill. They're not just being yeah. gross. You know? Yeah, they tend to <laughs> tend to go nuts and uh, yeah do that every now and then on the true crime thing. Not no, not you know, everybody. Every but no, that's <laughs> no, not that's... the case for everybody. But yes. that, as far as things that are profiled for publicity, that, that does yeah. Ninety nine per percent of the murders are uh, oh. are male. Yeah. Are male. Well, as far as that sort of murders go. And what I've done, you know, I think I'm going to, I don't know, what do you think, Manny? Are you guys on the TV here? I have I have two nails in the little doll's left hand, and I've only got one in the right hand. Should I put get rid of one of the ones that's doubled up and put it on the heart? Maybe. I prefer it on the left hand. I'd go that path. So, uh, the left hand. No, I have two there. That would be his right hand, though. I think I have enough it, nails. Do you think that's? But, the, um, well, I was gonna erase one and saying. put it somewhere else. Oh, I thought I, about erasing one of the two that are here and like sticking it right in the middle, but I don't uh -huh. know. That's not sad. Well, part of the reason, and I have had a few people ask me. Some of you guys probably here did, and that's fine. You can ask all you like. With um, voodoo and blue, there aren't really any obvious. Um, pins in her voodoo doll at all even though she herself obviously is a pin there are no pins in her so people are saying um one person has said mm -hmm. one in the heart one in the heart uh, i vote for one in the heart as well okay 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 you know if that's the case i'm these, probably gonna of course uh, these are your fans they're they're a bit hey they're out for blood that... at any rate, and probably, hey. probably generally jaded well, that, that's fine. Did you see that they are doing a Ted Bundy movie, says Shadow Dancer? I, they've made a oh, few Sassy movies. says only in hands. Only in the hands. Keep the two on the left and one in the heart and keep the right. Oh, and keep the right without that's, me. Yeah, I that think that's too much. That you think that's... Head. I don't know. That's I kind of like that. I'm trying to... Th you know what? The thing Princess is... Princess Bullet says is, hands only. Hands only. Okay. I, I think that it... For some reason... You know what reason, I'm going to do real quick? I'm going to cover... And I can put this right back. That's part of the Someone says in the fun. head. Ooh, the head. You know, I've never done a voodoo doll one that what was in the head. I think. Okay, about... I've covered one up. Okay. I can put it right back because that's part of the fun of using acrylics. They are okay. opaque, so it looks like I totally erased that, doesn't it? But um, now there's one in each hand. Looks like fingers, says that intention. Oh, like you think he's just like uh, pointing at somebody. Yeah, but I think of. that if you put one in the middle, uh -huh. it, it'll add it too much of. Make it at least go off to one side more because it would look, look too symmetrical. Yeah. And I don't think that would look... I don't know. Like, if um, it's straight up and down, that would look bizarre. Yeah. Well, so me, I would angle it. Let me get it, rid of this one here. And again, I can end this back in, like, five Zach seconds. Zach Efron is yeah. Ted. Oh, he's the guy. Oh, he's playing Ted, but really? 
He was the uh, little yeah, kid in the, the, that the high school musical. High school thing, that yeah. Yeah. And let's see. There is it with just one in there. Yes. I can add any of these back. I could put one in the foot, in the 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 groin or the head or in the middle. I don't know. I wouldn't. I actually, I'm gonna stay away from the groin area. That might look rude. <laughs> but I don't know. Or just even one there. Well, on um. Oops. There she goes again. Someone said uh, head. head. One in the heart. I think longer pins would look better. Longer pins? Uh, that's the true. They might Just look kidding. less like nails. The left foot. Okay. Yeah. Well, right now there's only one on its right hand side. So I'm going to, I can, again, I can draw 40 of them and erase them later. When you use acrylics or opaque, so I can keep covering up with the same background color and it's like they never happened. Or I can put them right back. I'm going both to... think Zac Efron looks like Ted Bundy, but I'm not seeing that at all. Ted Bundy looks like some guy who'd run for Congress. Yeah, he looks more politician. He's well, he was. He face. was, like, into politics and stuff when he was in college. Um, I'm trying to think. He's kind of got a little cross But they could the make him up. Him. Makeup does amazing. That's, oh, yeah. I've seen that. Uh, as far as actors go, you can make anybody look like anything. You, know, you use computers or makeup or special right. effects or whatever, which is pretty cool. If, if you look at the painting of Jennifer okay, so Blue, that Nintendo guy she just has, put a pin in her hand. Oh, like she's gonna stick one in. Oh, you or know maybe what? Maybe just in her hand. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like she's holding or sticking in her hand, or like she's gonna stab him with it, and she's holding it in her hand. That'd be cool too. Either one of those. In the painting itself, there are two pins which look a lot more like nails. I think I, like I said, I painted the, these ones around the time I did the Heart of Nails one. Which is the um, the February pin of the month, so they kind of look like nails, and that will show up better as opposed to like a needle sort of pin. It would look like right. a weird line, and you don't want it to look like it's some sort of error with the metal die cast machine or something. But on the painting, she's got two that kind of go right into his tummy. But I don't want to. I might move her hand if I did that, but I, I don't... can try. I don't want to put it right okay. there. That might be. Kind a bit of, pin so they're not so split. straight. Okay. Finger looking. Yeah, that might... You know, if I kind of went off... Maybe I should try one in the leg. I can just put... Let's see how that looks. Again, I can cover it up if I don't like it. Red girl still do? says a heart. Some heart. people are still saying head. Well, to be fair, this one here... That say, would be his left hand in the middle. Side. In the middle. Like the print. Yeah, like in the print. You know, maybe I will. I'm going to rub that off real quick. I don't know. I'm gonna, well, this is part of the fun. Is doing, I have never done a pen design with other people looking at me while I'm doing it, so this is kind of fun. Now, if, if you see, I just erased that really quickly. If I use my hair dryer, hopefully it's not be too loud. I'm going to look at the painting. It's a masking tape here. Stick her there. If you the look, dancer, they're kind the of in the middle. One in the hand. Or a good stabbing would be good. Well, yeah, like, like if she's, if she's gonna hold it and then stab him. I mm -hmm. could always do maybe one more on the doll and then she's holding a pen. Again, if, when you look at the outside of it, that's what the, um, I'll show you the back side of a pen so you know what I'm talking. And it's like, um, if you look at, here's the beauty in blue, I'm talking about her. You, A lot of what you see in a pen, if you're not looking at it up close, is this shape. That is what I call the, the shadow, the silhouette. That's the outside lines of something. That's how somebody like her is very different than this one. Is This is a whole character. You can see her little foot and her little knees. She's kind of sitting cross-legged and something. But this is kind of like a portrait of a similar looking character, like in the Voodoo and Violet painting. But if I have something like, and I put her hand down, I kind of drew her hand like that, but it's kind of backwards. So if I gave her a little pin there, that would be part of something that would show up on the die cut. So when I make the mold, it might be a little bit more complicated to have more additional sort of outline-y silhouette shapes, but that could be kind of cool. I'm going to try sticking one kind of in the middle, and then maybe having her have a pin in her hand, and if I don't like it, or y'all don't like it, I can change it. So that's what I'm going to do now. But that, that is kind of the interesting thing about being in the discovery phase here, as opposed to already having a finished sketch, and I'm just kind of slapping colors on something. So, let me think. It's going to be backwards. If it was his heart, it would be on his 
right hand side when we're looking at it kind of like how the top pin is here because if you it's like looking in the not looking in the mirror but if you're to be standing that way if it was on that side it'd be on that side so I might make that look a little bit shorter so it looks like closer to the viewer. Shadow Dancer said that would be awesome. Ooh, okay. I completely agree with you. I don't know. I, I will color that in so it doesn't look like a bad sketch. It actually looks like a pen. That actually looks pretty good. I'm going to leave that there and then draw a pen in her hand. She's kind of holding the doll with that hand there. So maybe I'll do a, like a really sharp pen there. And kind of make it. If I don't put a top on it like a nail or a screw, it, it kind of just looks like a weird finger. So I want to put some That's sort cool. of like circular that. thing on there. Let me finish drawing her hand too. Here's my little picture I was looking at. Or pen, rather. Okay. She's so, kind of faced the opposite way, but I'll. One her. thing that I always find funny about yeah. the Ted Bundy documentaries is. Those how, are hilarious, aren't they? How many times. They talk about how he's charming, how charming and sexy <laughs> so and attractive. He's so charismatic. Oh my god, like, he's no, wonderful. He's like great. Some guy you wouldn't it's want to buy of, a car from. I mean, just no. I, I mean, I, I think guess they're it's comparing all the other to other people are who really, are just don't feel looking. like real people at all. Yeah. I don't know. But no, I could we could have a whole special episode about <laughs> serial killers. I, I I know I have an encyclopedic knowledge about them, but. Let me see. So that I'm gonna put. Okay. So maybe you'll meet one someday. I if I do, maybe you then, have. Well, a lot of them are dead now, ah, which is knows? probably good. But, <laughs> they, um, they, they tend to hide. Uh, well, yeah. Otherwise, it wouldn't be serial. It'll just be a one-off. But okay. So I put hey, one. Shadow Dancer said Ted Bunny was super smarmy, disgusting. Thank you. Shadow yeah, Dancer. exactly. I agree. I, I agree do not too. trust people. Like I that. would have not gotten into his Volkswagen. But I think that I have good radar. For I have good radar for people. trouble. Oh. But I think that's because a so lot of my adult radar. life I've had to watch out for people. So. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. But um, if you look, I put this one going into the dolls. Kind of that would be where his heart was if we're looking at him from our angle. And then I'm gonna. I kind of drew this one in her hand as if we don't know where the neck's going. And maybe it's gonna go in his head. Maybe it's going to go in his like hand again or maybe in his foot but i think that looks pretty good because we're only... very much enjoying the hand okay yeah that's a, that's thing. a good one then so and then if she holds one there you could theoretically think hey maybe she's gonna shove it in that hand there that one there or maybe right between the eyes or anywhere else that i don't want to paint right now so that looks i think that looks pretty solid also again if you think about what the i always turn it backwards when i'm thinking about like what the um the silhouette of the design is going to be because you're like, oh, that looks very symmetrical, but you can tell there's a shape to it, and you see a pokey thing there that automatically will make your interest. It's like somebody holding a sword or a dagger or something like that. So that kind of looks interesting. Hey, so so far so good. That I think I'm liking this. The yeah. originals that debuted at Epcot. Yeah. Um, how many are left? I don't know. I only checked um, about a week ago. There were three. Oh wait, no. Uh, Luna Moths was there too. Lu there, there, were, Luna there were. Luna Moths was there, I and sold. she sold. Cruella sold. Um, so if somebody was interested in the okay. other two, what? How would they? Okay, the other two that again, I apologize in advance if somebody bought them. It is a busy show, so they might be gone. But there would have been Cinderella, and these are both big. They're sixteen by twenties, framed beautifully on wood by Disney. And Tiana with the froggy, there's Prince Naveen. But they are currently hanging at Epcot at the Art of Disney Gallery. Is there a is, way to contact there them? There is. Did I not put that on that little list of links there? Let's see. I did on my Facebook post. So okay. if you don't see it written down by the computer love, you can, or if you search Art of Disney and Epcot, uh, it comes up on Google and it has their phone number. And okay. that is the best way to contact them. I'm going, just call them on I'll the just phone. find it that yeah. way. Yeah, Art of Disney, or look on my Instagram or Facebook or whatever, and this it will be there. This is probably quicker to Google. Probably so. But make sure you type Epcot, because there's Art of Disney in California. Yes, I mean, there's a lot of Art of Disney. They're their official Disney gallery, so. All right, I'm going to put the number here. I've got okay. it. They're interesting. And they are, um, time zone-wise, are an Eastern time zone, so they open at about 10 in the morning Eastern time, and they stay open until, what is it, 9 or 10? So you got a while if you really want one. But I know for sure Krill is sold. I know for sure Luna Motz is sold. 
So I think the only ones that could possibly be there as far as the original goes are um, Cinderella at the ball. Or leaving the ball, rather. And she's the one with the magnificent three-week sparkles I painted on her. They turned out so cool. But in her slipper. And the whole background of this one is pretty cool. If you look at her, like, um, the glass slipper she left, it's very reflexive. It's like the, um, the marble from the stairs and everything kind of reflects itself. I, I remember using my ruler. I don't do a lot of... Um, Oh, kind of really hard lines when I'm painting. So I like had to get my um, ruler out and make all of those little stairs, and I kind of made them less regular as they went in the past so, uh, in the back there. So it looks kind of like they go into the distance, and it turned. Out, I'm very proud of how she turned out, and she's just great. I love Cinderella. And then Tiana, of course. Um, she's in a very Floridian-looking background. Looks very much like the. Um, the wonderful water lilies and lily pads that we have around here in our swamps and our conservation area around our house in Florida. And there's Mama Odie's house. And the original painting itself is many, many times the size. It's 16 by 20. They're already framed. You don't have to do anything to them. And they have the postcards and stuff too. And there's Prince Naveen grinning. He always looks so cheesy. It, it's funny because it's like, oh my god, I was drawing the frog and I was like, he looks so cheesy. And then I looked at him like in the movie, I'm like, oh, I, I, I'm kind of downplaying off him a bit. He, he's really kind of a smarmy kind of guy. Hey. Anyway. Hey, well, I like but, Prince Naveen fine, but he's a bit smarmy. But we just said smarmy. I, and not in a Ted Bundy <laughs> kind of way. I mean, he, no, he's just, he's ingratiating. He's a prince. He's fancy. He's doing whatever. Jasmine. Yeah. So Ren Girl saw yeah. Tiana and Cinderella yesterday. Oh, excellent. Was that Epcot? And Yes, and okay. said the originals are smooth. You can't even see the brush strokes. Yeah, these are that. That's part of the reason I use um, fluid acrylic paints. The, the no, like I'm painting this one now, which is why it works really good for doing merchandising and making molds from and such. I use these fluid acrylics. They're almost like using water. They are so thin. They're very liquidy. I add water to them, so I do. And that's why I have my hair dryer a lot, and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, it's noisy hair dryer. You hardly see it. If you turn it to an angle, you can see a little bit of it. But there's probably between 30 and 180 different layers of paint depending on what part of it is like something like the cinderella painting with the um with the the this is the postcard from disney obviously but um in the original painting if you look at like the sparkles that literally took me a couple weeks of putting a little bit more red a little bit more yellow a little bit more white let it dry a little bit more yellow a little bit red white let it dry white yellow let it dry and if you do that very thinly and mix it with water, it makes it like a glaze. I think that's the term you'd probably use if you were proper working with oils or something. And it, it, it's very thin layers on top of thin layers. You couldn't touch it with your finger and even feel it. Yeah. Ren Girl is the one who their pin cards were flying around. Oh! Like right oh golly gee, I'm so sorry bad. about that. It was so well. We're kind of in a wind corridor there, aren't we? It's like so the it, wind kind of comes through there. It was pretty windy there. yesterday, but I still it, think it, it was, was a tad bit warmer than the previous week. It was warmer than last than, than warm last Monday. Day, Martin Luther King. Oh my gosh, that was cool. Yes, and that was Monday. I think that was. It hasn't even been a week since. Or Jasmine then, but, was. Oh my gosh, we they, they thinking, didn't give me my hand warmer. Yeah, we were thinking that, gosh, I said, hey Jasmine, this was before the show, I was like, yeah. you want to walk around a little bit after the show? And we are thinking, yeah, that might it's be like, fun, but it was so cold, and we like, just no, do it. It's so cold, we'll just go home and hide under blankets with the cats. Yeah, yeah I, I kept having to catch friends and oh my po gosh yeah everything like blue. the postcards that, i mean they just suddenly mary poppins off and it was very Ma mary poppins -y. oh god yeah. that'd be hilarious if you had a mary poppins one and just i would love to paint mary poppins i thought that'd be great i've had a lot of people since the new movie came out and they're like hey you're gonna paint mary poppins i'm like maybe oh I yeah this adorable little boy yesterday is like you should paint mary poppins. oh and yeah. i could tell that he really liked he it. was a big and fan. we had a good time when we saw that movie yeah, that was when we took our uh, niece Lexi and our nephew um, Luke with us, yeah. who are our, our niece and nephew in Kansas City. Because I had seen every other We always movie take them it. out to see. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, though, because whenever we take them to see anything, I know it's just the last couple times, but we took them to say um, La La Land. It's always musicals, it seems like. It's like, hey, guys, want to go to well, a weird restaurant Luke, and go to Luke a I musical like, with us? <laughs> Luke and I, um, I like musicals. Yeah. Um, to an, a certain extent, Luke loves Disney musicals. does good musicals. Um, yeah. Disney does great music. I'm but not, I'd like to uh, take not a huge fan Luke of sometime up general, to uh, but the London or Broadway. London or New York would be great. I bet they dig that. Yeah, because th those are the places to go, man. We're going to see them live. Book of Mormon. That's a good. 
That's a good one. I've seen. I would have seen that five times in London. Book of Mor- I've yeah. seen Book of Mormon five times. Yeah, it's uh, live. That's and, pretty uh, good. And apologize. All in London. A, anyone yeah. thinks that's offensive? I apologize. It's. I hey, half my family was Mormon at some point or another. So. My mom was. When yeah, she your mom was used younger. to be Mormon. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I've got a lot of family members who are Mormon. In fact, the Mormon church took out an advert in the little um, thing. It's like, hey, did you like the movie? Get the book and then send you a free book of Mormon. So I don't I think it's any, a, I, I don't think it's hard feelings. I think, it, I think it's in good humor. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's great. I, don't bring your children to it. I think no. it's the equivalent of an R rating for language. Again, it's made by the people who made South Park. Yeah, so I, go I, in there with that. and that I understand a Mormons a bit because I, I grew up in kind of not a... Not a quite a mainstream religion. I was uh, raised Seventh Day Adventist. Oh yeah. So that's yeah. uh, though so they're not quite um. They're not one of the, the big norm. three, you know. No, <laughs> they're, they're not. Yeah. I mean, they're uh, Protestant, obviously, but so is Mormon. Yeah. Um, but a little bit different. Yeah. A little bit different. Yeah, there's a lot of. So I, I feel them. Takes all sorts, you know. Uh, Tigger says, hi, Tigger, again. Oh, hey, I really enjoyed Tigger. seeing you at Epcot yeah, last Monday. Yes, you as well. It seemed to be a bit more relaxed than your pop and Wonderground appearances. Yes, Thanks for usually. taking <laughs> time and uh, talking with us and signing our treasures. Oh, of course. Pop. Thank That's you sweet. for coming out again. Yeah, usually the pop gallery ones are a bit more crazy than the... I think it's because the pop gallery has the pins and they have, like books and postcards. And they have all my non-Disney art there, too. So it depends what you're there for, but... The Wonderground usually, like this time at Epcot, they just have the three new ones that we were just showing to you guys. So that that makes it a little bit less mad. It's still pretty crowded, but not not crazy like you might not get to get your place in line. You don't need a fast pass, you know. Yeah, I think that um, your your pin placement yeah on the pin. On the doll. It's confusing on the okay. doll. Okay, we were talking about pins a second ago, but not good. these sort of pins. Even though this is a pin design, that's we're using the word pin way too much here. Uh, but yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. It's got one going in his chest. Again, I need to outline that a bit more and put a little bit more light in there because I want to make sure the lines on this are really good. So when I do scan it in and send it to the factory, when they all want to literally make the physical metal mold of it they will see that color of black brown gray blue and select it and use it to stamp out the metal mold it won't blend into where like her hair if it's black because i'll put black in her hair so it will kind of match the painting but i'll make it a slightly less black than the outlines are in fact when i'm done with this i might even do it while you're watching um when i've picked the colors already I'll take an even blacker black, probably do, oh, like Daxacene purple, maybe um, carbon black and phthalo turquoise, mix them together so it'll be super, super black. So when it's scanned in, people wouldn't confuse the black that's the outline for the metal, the iron oxide metal for the pins, to be confused with like the black of her hair or the black of her eyes. I think I want to, I'm trying to see what I just would put in blue, let me see. Yeah, actually that part is raised there. So I think I'm going to take the same sort of heavy black that I've been doing the outline areas with and do her eyelashes. Because I want her to kind of match her again. I might want to eventually do Voodoo in pink and maybe Voodoo in the bayou and maybe Voodoo in green, etc. And then that would be, if somebody just wanted the booty pins, I mean their pins, you could have all them. So I'm going to fill in her eyelashes where I've been, I've been trying to draw them to look like those, but different because I wanted her head to go that way instead of that way because so she looks more like the painting. So I'm going to fill in her eyelashes and probably, hmm, yeah, I think the pupils of her eye, other than where the white kind of, I don't know if you can tell in here, but I left kind of white around the white of her eye going up as if it was a reflexive sort of quality on the underside of the bulb of her eye. So I want to leave that part white, but I want to make part of it Almost like an upside down or a 90 degree angle B or W shape that it were in her pupils. And I'll make that the same actual metal. So that will look darker when it's a physical pin than it will do when it's just like the painting design. That's, That's probably too much information. Are yeah. We be, uh, are we going to be around in October here in Florida? And here in Florida in October, um, we probably will at some point. I know we're going to be in uh, Glastonbury for the Autumn Fairy Fair. The Avalon Fairy Fair in Glastonbury, aren't we? Uh, yeah. Oh, wait, and we're going to be in Bath for the um, yeah, yeah. coloring festival. 
So that will be t at least two or three weeks we're going oh, to be in England. I don't know England. if we'll have an appearance here. That's what I'm saying. I know for sure we will be doing two appearances in other countries right. Just because we're in town doesn't mean month. we necessarily so, have an appearance. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if we will I, have a show mm, then. Yeah, I don't um, know. October is weird because I usually do one or two shows in other countries during that time. And you, sometimes Disney in California, Disneyland has a media show there. In October, I've done um, takeovers there last year. And it seems like usually I'm there for something. So that is a slightly less likely month than some of the other months that I would be here in person yeah, in been... Florida. But I'll keep you posted if you look at my website, my event page on Facebook, etc. I will let you know and we'll let you know up here too. Yeah. Um. Shadow Dancers, one of her, her girls screwed up her paintbrush. Oh, she's no. She's sad about that. Also, Black Widow uh, said, you mix your own black. Yeah, I you do. You don't use any of the pre-made blacks, like I, own black, I, carbon black, etc. I have one. They're, the only type of black paint I buy, I'll show you what I use it for. <laughs> carbon black. I buy carbon black, but the only thing I use it for is when I'm painting the outside of a, the side parts of a painting. Like, do I have any cradled uh, masonite pieces around here, though? Uh, cradled masonite pieces? Uh-huh. Like, um, is there one in there? Is there, like, Faces of Fairy I was There's working on? There's an unfinished. There's a custom Faces of Fairy I'm in the middle of working on. I can show, I won't show them the front, but I'll show them the side. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Um, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Because I, I don't actually use these because if I make my own blacks, they look blacker than this. But if I need to paint something black, let's say it's picture frame or if it's an unframed piece and I like the sides of the painting to be black, like if we, like the ones I just did at the, um, yeah, like I just did at the Corey Halford show, the um, Empire of Dirt, that's when I was working on. I do the side when it's a thick painting like this. I use the carbon black and I just paint the sides of it there. So that way if people hang it up, this one's still in the works and it's custom. So I'm not going to show you that. It, it kind of matches our, how our canvas, how our canvas is. Yeah, is. If, our you, if you have like our, our yeah, our canvas cuties or the ones you get at Pop Gallery, etc. How they're black on the sides, this matches that black. There are really a few good. times that we've made the um, artistic decision, yeah. or you have rather. Oh, to make them like blue or yeah, pink there on are the side. Usually There's are like literally pieces. four or five. Yeah, yeah, there aren't many. But, but they but, look good. But they I look don't. Better if they, were, they would not look as good if they were black. Yeah. Yeah, that's a very light painting, and it, if I'm wrapping it around the side. But as far as the black you would see on the front of the painting, like I'm going to make a print, or even something like this where it's a production piece or a merchandising product I'm working on, I don't use store-bought blacks. I make my own blacks because they look more black. They have more pigment. I'm, again, I usually use um, Doxazine Purple. It's very close to black. If you use that and you don't mix any sort of opacity in it, it's very transparent, so you got to mix it with something else, like a turquoise fill or... Um, uh, you always hear me talk about Van Dyke Brown. You mix those three together. That is like super, super black. So yeah. if I mix those three, that's what I'll do at the end after I put the different colors I want for the enamel on her. And that will, the, the computer, when they scan it in, they'll be like, oh, that's black. That's what we're going we're to use. And that will be the black metal that they use to make the, the pins. It's, a, again, an iron oxide. And they stamp it out like that. Yeah. What are you going to say? Are your pins hard enamel or soft enamel? And what's the difference? Oh, huh. But, but you know, people difference? always ask that. It's like uh, there, there isn't a big difference. It, it depends on what you want the pin to look like in the end. Sometimes people like the cloisonne. It depends on the artwork. With mine, since I do have things like black eyelashes and outlines and facial features, I think it works. This is soft enamel. You can't tell the difference on the pin. It's the process that you're making the pin that is different, not the finished product. If it was hard enamel, people would usually choose a, instead of dyeing the metal, like the actual metal bit, instead of dyeing it black, they would leave it metal colored, like gold or silver or like a cloisonne sort of thing. So it's like a smooth sort of thing. But I like mine to look like, like what it is, where it's like, hey, it's outlines with colors poured. And these are poured by hand. Every tiny little thing, it's like, oh, you see that tiny little bit of white in her eye? That was poured by hand with an eyedropper in there. So that kind of gives it like a coloring book quality to it. Yeah, like there's the outline, there's the colors. But yeah, hard enamel is when you put it all in and then you kind of buff it down and use, um, you don't color the metal, you just keep it silver or gold. And that kind of makes it look like a I like the little Chinese fish charms and stuff like that. So both can be lovely. But I think with my artwork with acrylics, it works better with soft enamel. But it does, it's not soft. That has nothing to do with how it feels or how it looks. That's the process they use to make the enamel. Yeah. What is the combo of paint 
um, you're using on the makeup for like for right now? Uh, right now when I'm working on this, since I haven't decided where I'm not using super black black on this, I'm using um, raw umber, which is not as brown as, or not as dark as the Van Dyke brown. It's raw umber, which is kind of a grayish, bluish, cool brown. And I'm mixing that one with a uh, Payne's Gray. And that's what I'm using to sketch. When I first did the outline and I was drawing it earlier, I only I don't do this on finished paintings, I just do it on production things. I've got a little horrible mechanical pencil. And that's when I was like, oh, earlier today when her arm was over there and her the pins were over here, I, I was changing it. So I've mixed the um, raw umber with Payne's Gray. And that's what I'm doing to, and I'm still not 100% sure if I want to change this. I don't want to make it super black. So if I do want to erase it with the same color I mixed with the gesso, I can cover that off or just rub it off in my finger and put some water on it and that'll get rid of it. And that's kind of a good color mixture to use if you are sketching. And if you use a little paintbrush, again, this is a script liner paintbrush. They come in many different types, many different lengths, etc. This is a script liner size zero. It is smaller than a, the tip of a pencil. And since it is so very tiny, I think it is better for sketching. For me personally, a lot of people like sketching with pencils. I like doing it with paint because you can kind of, it feels more organic. It kind of makes a curve to it. And if I don't like it, I guess, eh, go like that, get rid of it instead of having to get erasers and stuff. And it doesn't make that gray grubby stuff that pencils sometimes do. But when I, when I know for sure that, hey, I exactly want her eye to look like that, I will make my own black paint. And we'll probably do that while you guys are watching. And I'll show you how to do that again. And then I will be outlining that with the dark, dark black. Jasmine. Yeah. Uh, last week you worked on ACEOs. And people had a lot of yes, questions about yes, them. Yes, yes, yes. Um, now uh, we've actually yeah. put them up on eBay. I have done. Actually, I should show you guys how they hit, turn out. I can out. fetch them. Yeah, if you don't mind getting them. Actually, I want to run to the bathroom real quick and wash my hands. Real, and if you want to grab the ACEOs... If you want to get them now and then talk to the microphone for a bit. Yeah. yeah. Taters. <laughs> taters, precious thing. We were just talking about that. But, um, yeah, so I'm just kind of using, the, there's a lot of water in here too. I'll show you close up. It might look very dark, but really it's kind of transparent. There's a lot of water in there. It's almost like a watercolor at this point. But that's because if I want to change my mind and still the discovery phase, I can go through and put darker colors on it when I'm finished and I want to scan it in and say, hey, factory, scan this in, Mr. Metal die cut machine, and make only this color part of the metal. And that's why we can see the outside of it as black. That's going to be black. That's going to be the blackest black that's on the whole pin. So I want her eyes to have the pretty eyes kind of like she has here, but still kind of matches her. So I'm going to run up to the bathroom real quick. I, Matt has not been to a movie for a few days, so I, I don't know what he's going to talk about. <laughs> Hopefully it's not more Ted Bundy talk. I don't right know. Now. What's that? We're talking about Lord of the Rings. Oh, that's good. I just typed in the comment, raw and wriggling. Wicked, Trixie, and False? You do. It is. Jasmine loves Gollum. Oh, let's see. Um, has anyone read the book by uh, Carolyn Kepnes called You? And have you seen the, uh, if you have, have you seen the Netflix show? Y-O-U. Type it in. I did not see glass. What the heck? Gosh, no one read it. He ah. was very good. It's a good read. I recommend it. Then there is a there's a follow up to it called Hidden Bodies, but I have not watched the Netflix show at all. So Black Widow, your friends did not enjoy the ending. Don't spoil it. Well, your phone keeps crap. Gosh, sounds dangerous. Hey, good job, Kay Harmon. So, would you say that the uh, book and the Netflix are true to each other? 
And which is better? I've... I haven't watched the Bird Box yet. I've heard things about it, but... I heard it was like the movie, um... Yes, Nigel, uh, your wife told me. I'll, if I get a chance, I'll check out Polar. It, is it something that would be on American Netflix, though? Keep in mind, they're different. Um, Bird Box, I've heard things about. I've heard it was like a, the, that movie where you had to keep quiet the whole time. There, people are drawing parallels between the two. I don't know. But I'd like to watch it sometime. The thing is, I kind of want to watch it with Jasmine, but I don't know if it's good. And if it's not good, we're just kind of wasting our time. So I think that I could watch it alone, but then if I like it, then I have to watch it twice. So it's kind of weird. The book is better than Netflix, but stayed pretty true. That's good. That's what Jasmine said, too. What you You. Oh, yeah, it's very similar. Yeah. I like the first book a lot better than the second. <laughs> but the, the second one is pretty good. It just starts, it's starting to get a little bit more silly. Um, that's okay. Uh, so Mary says, Bird Box, two hours you will never get back, hated it. Well, that's kind of how I felt about, um, the, what's that quiet movie? Is it a quiet? It's a quiet place. Gosh, okay, yeah, that's how I felt about Again, a quiet place. The, the views of Matthew Beckett do not represent the, view, uh, the views of his team. No, they don't. <laughs> Sometimes Matt likes things I don't, and vice versa. Did you like it? Um, I saw it. <laughs> oh, I haven't tried this one yet. This is the Ruby Boast Vanilla Chai. It's very good. Let me see. So, do you not have any current questions there? Me? Um, people are saying that the ending of Glass is uh, oh, a lot of people are disappointed yet. with the ending. It sounds like one of those I haven't movies. Seen it. No, I haven't seen it either. I've seen the other ones in the the series. And, yeah. If you didn't like a quiet place, you won't like Bird Box. Okay. Sometimes I like I to know, watch things that I that Bird Box too, was though. kind of like watching a Black Mirror or like a Twilight Zone, and I like those. So. It, dep it depends on how it's presented, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. That's true. And what actress do you well, I love, I love one of the actresses in A Quiet Place. Um, Emma Blanche. Oh, Emma Blanche's fantastic. I love her. Hey, she was, um, 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 we're just talking about the movie. Um, Jasmine, uh, what's yeah. up with your mug? Oh, <laughs> what, my Princess Jasmine mug? Oh, okay. It's Princess, it's... It, uh, it is Princess Jasmine. It's a JBG it's a, Princess I don't, I don't have my big... I, it's kind of cold here in Florida, so I'm doing hot tea instead of my iced tea. I usually put in my giant mug, but this is a, from Disney World. It's a Princess Jasmine and Russia. It looks well, like me and my kitty. Thanks for the feedback on Bird, Bird Box, guys. Um, it's A lot of people are saying Ooh. they're not into Bird Box. Mm. Is it a show or is it like a film? Like a one-off? Is it like a, a series or is it a... It, I don't know. Oh, okay. Lady Dracula said, I wondered about Good Omens. I read the book, but don't I love, love the, the book. Yeah, Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett, I love the book. I'll read anything by them. They're great. But I oh, have God. Not, Neil Gaiman's comments on Terry Pratchett are priceless. Oh. <laughs> He's a funny guy. Yeah. Well, Terry Pratchett is a big grump. But he, oh, I know. Did you read grump. the thing? Um, I he said that's the only way he existed. Yeah. It, did you read the one when there's... But I, I think it was uh, something... I don't know. When, they have, blog, to across when the they have to go do a radio interview. That reminds us of us. That reminds me of so much okay. of us. <laughs> so if, uh, me, me and... Gaiman, yeah. Me and Matt are basically uh, like Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. Well, in the way, in <laughs> Sorry, some, Amanda. <laughs> in some ways. Yeah. No, it's... Uh, I, it's like I think that. that's just people who work in the creative industry no, and because, you're expected to do okay. things in different countries. I, will, just, I, I can wrap it up in a few... Yeah. Sum, sum it up and you'll probably see what we mean. You think this about is Neil Gaiman, like Neil Terry Gaiman Pratchett. And Terry I forget. Pratchett, right? This might have been like 10 years ago. And I you forget. Think that they yeah. would be spoiled. They'd like have car to car service and everything like that. Have personal assistants and limo drivers or something. No, it's, like, it's not no, like they no, walk. No. They had to walk across a park forever to get from. It took them like two hours. Yeah. And it, oh, they were so grumpy, and it was in cold awful. British. It just seems like something yeah. that we'd have to go through for like five minutes of airtime or something. Yeah, it's like come, come. Get a picture taken for this newspaper, but spend eight hours walking there. I'm like, okay, and I will do that. I mean, that's why I but am where I am. Really, it's got to show up. People but... are of note. There's sometimes this 
from maybe their fans or or people who just have heard the name. Well, I, but there's this air of glamour that just does not exist. I, and I think, think that it about, exists less and less and less. Like actor friends or musician friends of mine, and I always think of them as like being big, famous stars. And then I say, oh, it's like, oh, you still got to worry about your mortgage too. Yep. And, you know, and that just, 100%. Uh, nobody is as fancy as you think they are. They're not. Not that it's fancy. It just, that's how things are. And more and more, I think if you work in the creative industry, it's harder uh, to just try to... says, it's so kind that you share your amazing life with us. Oh. <laughs> it's kind of, See, that's kind of our thing. Thank you so very <laughs> much you. for sharing your wondrous Aww. and beautiful world with all of us. Thank you. I'm not scared of me that. Plus, I hated Bird Box. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's see, I'm going to have a tally here. How many people liked it and how many didn't? I'll see if it's worth my two hours. And after <laughs> that, I will use the restroom. No, okay. okay. There Bird Box, good. Bird Box, bad. Go Luke, ahead. Our nephew we'll said it was watch good. It didn't Luke say it was good? Yeah, but Luke's Luke's got, got different ideas about, about things. That's okay. Uh, I'm happy. To I don't trust his opinion. If everybody had the because same ideas, why would you even talk to anybody? If Luke is yeah. listening, he knows I say that because sometimes yeah. he likes really, really bad horror movies. Well, he is like one third your age, so that that's different too. He's grown up with different things. He's than... about half my age. Really? Yeah, he's twenty three, twenty four. Twenty. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's about half my age, almost. Mm. I'm not 60. He is very good. Okay. I don't know. I'm not okay, very so good far, at remembering we got one bird box is bad. And how many people have said it was good? Or has anybody? Oh. Um, it, you know, if you if you like bird box, let me know. I want to know. And no one will judge you. Yeah. In room. It's okay. No, that's fine. We just, I, I, I welcome people who have different opinions. I'm the sort of person who likes debates about stuff. People so, like Ernest yeah. goes to camp. Okay. That's fine. You know? That is fine. Hey, I like the script editor for Ernest Scared Stupid. So. Ah, me too. Yeah. Okay, so Chrissy says, I actually kind of like it. It's worth a watch for only curiosity's okay. sake. Yeah, I, that's, I about, that's where I am at currently. Okay. The curiosity's sake. Okay, Dick Lisa says Matt it was good. It and... Matt would probably watch it, and then he would I didn't say, mind Bird Box. I'm not going to watch it ever again. It. I've heard okay. that a lot. Well, that's... It's like, it's like, hey, you watch it once, don't. Well, it. that's probably the sort of thing where it it's how much time out of totally your promoted, week do you watch television? Oh, that's why I'm asking about it yeah. it's on netflix every time i sign they in it's like really, hey really bird box it. bird box Crazy. They're like, okay there okay. whoever is in charge okay, of the pr got, is doing Nini a good job he says one time watch tina says one time watch okay that's fine these are people i, I just don't I, watch I, a whole lot know, of television so i spend the more like the i know first... you the, the probably the more <laughs> you probably know me and would know that's what I like true more. yeah if you hear other things that we've talked about that we like and also matt okay, sometimes so likes things i don't like because of sandra bullock they're a fan okay well, it's that's a good reason to like If it scared you, that's actually a good sign. Is it a horror oh, show? I don't know. I didn't hate it. Okay. That's, um... <laughs> that Nintendo guy says, do the earnest. <laughs> Thank you for uh, doing these live feeds so that we can have input in the paintings and being able to learn Oh, of course. Paint. Well, it's because of you guys I'm here, so thank you for being here. Otherwise, it wouldn't bother. And, and that, uh, um, chat, that was Shadow Dancer who said that. Oh, and also, they say one time uh -huh. watch. Yeah, yeah. You hey, just there are a lot of stuff, movies and TV programs I really like, but I probably wouldn't watch twice. And then there's some I'll watch like 80 times in a row. So there are different ways to like things. You know, um, one, if you guys are in the true crime and you really want to see how the court system... Oh, are you going to talk about Paradise Lost? I, the yes, Mem I West Memphis 3, oh my I gosh. I definitely recommend a... Uh, a three-part series. It was made that by HBO and MTV. Yes. Made by HBO. Years, I think. Made by HBO. These kids were my age Paradise at Lost. the time it was happening. So I remember watching Kurt Loder like on MTV when it, in 1996 when this was happening, and it's um and I've I've since gotten friends and I did a show with Damien Eccles, one of the guys who was in it and wrong, wrongfully convicted, and he's gone on and he's got a Patreon too. Look him up, Damien Eccles. E and for you, -O -L -L. and for you British people, you can yes. see what it was like uh, growing up in the Midwest. Oh my yeah, gosh, the, the it, it was so much like by. how I was a kid, and I think that's part of uh, the reason I got interested in true crime to begin with yes. was the um, Paradise Lost series. Those and are, you and they're on Netflix. So and you will say, "I'm very them. sorry. How did you turn out the way you are?" And I'll say, "I have no idea." I don't know. We, we just did what we did, man. But I'm glad I didn't have to go but on death row for a few years. I definitely recommend Paradise Lost. Yeah. And those are free to watch on Netflix. And they are, um, don't watch them with children. They are very graphic. Yeah, you don't want to watch it with Yeah, people. I don't watch it with people. So Mary who says wanna, uh, yeah. so many holes in the in the story in Bird Box. Oh, okay. Well. I that's Now that's something that starts to bother me right away. Well, I apologize if somebody said before, was it a movie, like one-off, or was it a It's a, a one-off. Oh, a one -off. okay. Well, so it's not like they're going to fill it in later. Again, or... I watched for curiosity. I didn't hate it, but wouldn't watch it again. Okay. 
Yeah. Paradise Lost was good, says Tina. Paradise Lost is wonderful, and I, I, I've read every book that Damien and his partner have written, and I, I've really kind of followed that. I think it's because I'm like the exact same age from the same part of the country, and it was just happening around the time uh, I was born. Ann says, no. Paradise Lost was amazing, and I still follow Damien Eccles on Facebook. Yes, you know what? You he's can even on, do it on Patreon. Patreon. I follow him on Patreon. He is super nice and posts stuff every day. He continues on. With, he does a lot of interesting, very spiritual st stuff now, and it's um, you would never think that that it's like hey this turned in this actually we were in the he does art now too he was um you part a couple of art shows with uh, yeah i did a show I mean, um, I mean, um I in, in a uh, las vegas crime right. on canvas in las vegas he, he's done so that one Ricky a couple times asleep yeah. during bird box oh okay yeah. and fake conjurer says oh my god paradise lost insanely sad no kidding these people basically lost their life the, that, that's like their the lives. best years of the younger part of your life for 20 years for no okay, reason I'll, we have a lot it of makes, people in the room that know the story riled up and get mad about stuff yeah, i'm glad you guys know the story yeah that's a you can see how how uh, crazy how people can be also how easy it is to fall into a mind thought that other people around you are yeah, thinking um, something and you feel like you should feel it which is why i always like animated mob, debate and discussion rule sort of, so uh, that sort of thing mob mentality happen. yeah but it's good to have dissenting views sometimes yeah and it's yeah yeah I, mm -hmm. Exactly. I but can start going off on a tangent. I know, it's right? 4 50, or it's 4.52, which oh, is our time, to the, um, so eight yeah. minutes to raffle. I need to use the restroom, okay, honey. and I will um, use this opportunity. I'll come back. Please do. Uh, we currently do not have any questions in the room. Okay. Well, I'll just And you can talk about nothing. Paradise Lost. Or I might do. Whatever. Um, That's a good time to talk about Patreon. <laughs> No, um, Damien, again, interesting also, so I, I have, awesome. yeah, he's written a book, he, um, he and his wife together wrote a book that was about the, Lori and the, the letters that she wrote to him when he was in prison, and a lot of it is because, um, she kind of identified with him and started writing to him that she helped start, and it was a, a good time for the internet, it was the end of the 90s, started a, kind of a group of people, and that's when, like, Johnny Depp and Eddie Vedder and people like that got involved with it because suddenly, hey, there's this platform online you can say, hey, this isn't fair. Why aren't more people worried about this? And that brought a lot of light to it. And that if it weren't for that, I don't, I don't know where those. I keep saying kids, but they're like my age. But that I was a kid then too. So, but he, um, Damien is up on Patreon. So if you are not on Patreon, even if it's not for me, go up to Patreon because a lot of really neat people are there. We're talking about um, Neil Gaiman earlier. He doesn't have a Patreon that I know of, but his wife, Amanda Palmer from Dresden Dolls and all of her solo work she's done, and she's done a bunch of TED Talks, The Art of Asking. She was actually the person who convinced me to set up a Patreon. So I owe her a lot, Amanda Palmer. I also did some artwork for her tarot card deck, but... That uh, Patreon is a good place if you just want to show support to somebody and like throw a dollar at them and feel like you're helping somebody. That is a great place to be. There are a lot of very talented singers and painters and people who are writers or other people who are creative or things like Damien Eccles where he is. Um, he he kind of it has um, alternative spiritual views up there. He's got like high magic sort of interesting stories about very very um highbrow sort of magic on there and it, it's very interesting to read and he puts videos up there and I, it just makes me happy that he has something like that and that's a way i can contribute to say hey you had a raw deal of it and you are continuing to carry on and doing very interesting things that could help other people and he's got such a good attitude for somebody who's been through that much crap you know it's amazing and he also makes artwork so that's pretty cool I don't know if he'll be at um, Crime on Canvas this year in Las Vegas, but I will be. So I will be doing something. It's run by MM Gallery um, out of, um, I think their main gallery is in um, Palm Springs. And they do, they're the people who are in charge of the gallery there at down in the old part of downtown Los Angeles or Las Vegas where. Um, Life is Beautiful is the big festival that happens there. It's kind of like a big Woodstock thing. It's a lot of EDM and a lot of pop music and a lot of other stuff, too. But they have an art show there, and that is that called Crime on Canvas. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. 
But um, yeah, it's it's a pretty neat show to go to, and I, me and Matt will be there this year, and it, it's a good excuse to go to Las Vegas. Are we out of cash? Yes. Oh my god. I got resorts of peanuts. I'm sorry, Matt. I, um, nobody should ever have to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna draw a. Her wing was kind of turn it into like where her shoulder should be, so I'm going to kind of draw her hair so it turns into her. The part between the upper part of her arm and her wing. Oh, she's gonna be so cute. Now I'm going to get my hair dryer out real quick, unless the um the drawing isn't happening, right? The raffle. Somebody said Publix delivery. Oh. Okay, sorry if this is my thing. to get out my eraser, which would not normally see me use if it was a painting I was doing for painting's sake. Again, since this is a concept art, I start off with a horrible, horrible pencil I've had for many years, and I'm going to take my gummy eraser, which is barely used, and I think the paint is more or less dry. That's a good thing about acrylics versus oils. So this is oil paints. So you would just mirror the whole thing away, but this is acrylic, so I'm going to erase all the lines that I had on there earlier. Originally, I thought about not giving her wings at all because you can barely see the wings in the painting. Jasmine. But then I decided to make her kind of match boot and blue a bit. Yeah. Does Amber usually put up uh, the cuff bracelets on Etsy? Yes. I, I think that's the only place she makes them. She, I guess she doesn't have any up there. So uh, she she made a bunch the other day and made a post on the collectibles they're group. They're gone. On and they were sold like in four minutes. I okay, mean, um, hey, if we had Campbell, ten just, uh, Ambers, we could do it forever. Shoot her a message. Just one shoot the Etsy store. Yes, message. actually, on the Etsy store, it has like an uh, um, I think it has an option. It's something like um, ask for a special request. I don't know what it actually says, but something like that. I don't know, but if you do that or talk to Amber at strangeling.com and tell her because um, those are not made from a factory like the pins are. Those are made by Amber in her living room with a big metal press thing like that physically makes the metal bracelet. So she does those by hand. So in, those are done one at a time. You can ask her for specific ones, but can't make the Disney ones because only Disney makes my Disney stuff. So if you say, hey, put Princess Leia and Tiana on the same bracelet, we can't do that. We, Disney is the only one who can do that. But my other 10,000 paintings, you can do any of those pretty much. So now, I don't know if you can tell the difference. I don't know how good. There's always so many lights here. I worry that things are being kind of lighted out. But you can see that only the lines I've done in paint now, you don't even see the pencil relay that I did earlier. But I think I like where the pins are. There's a pin in the middle there. There's a pin on his arm, on his, I guess it'd be his right or left arm. And then she's holding a pin down there. And then I'm going to... I picked, again, I'm trying to use the same sort of palette that I did with this one where that's the warm gray, it's a skin tone, and I don't, these are not really violet colors, but I'm going to use that same sort of color that I used on the pin that was in the Voodoo doll, and this is one of the first pins I did, it was the Voodoo and Blue, that kind of yellowy, orangey kind of scarecrow color, like that straw color, kind of a mid muddy orangey, yellow, brown, gray color. I'm going to use that color to make the little doll there. Oh, there's the mag magic um, drawing noise. And then I'll probably... I might use the... I'm not going to really use any purple. I, I'm going to use purple, but there wasn't any purple in the Voodoo and Blue. So instead of the areas that have blue, like that blue and that blue, I'm going to use two different types of purple. You're talking sweet, you've got a raffle oh, to do. Oh, okay. Go for it. And this, who's this one for? Tiana and Cinderella? It is Cinderella, Cinderella leaving the ball. This is for from Epcot, from Disney World. Cinderella leaving the ball, and I will autograph this for you. Official Disney merchandise. Woo. You can use it as a postcard as you want, but I would recommend either w w Seth eBaying it or um, framing it and keeping it for yourself. So, congratulations. But this is the time where I look at the painting. And I'm going to think about probably, hmm, I might pick two 
different colors of purple, like a violet, like a lighter color and a darker color. When it's something like this, it's going to be solid colors. Again, you pour the enamel in there, that's what makes it a soft enamel. Is they actually pour it as opposed to having a hard piece of enamel that's fitted like a cloisonne that they they rub off with like a buffer thing. But I am probably gonna pick two violets in this area here. These are my choices of enamel. I don't know how good the colors show up on the internet, but um, they kind of look more pink up here and kind of look more blue and gray, et cetera, down here. I, I mean, yeah. I looked at that before and yeah. it, it, I can see it pretty well. And, yeah, I don't know. yeah, but I mean, if you're like mixing colors, I don't know how helpful it is if I'm like, oh, the difference between that one and that one, or does it all look purple? I don't know. But I'll probably pick a lighter- I can lighter... see differences in each one. Okay, well, I'll probably pick a lighter purple like a more pink, like magenta sort of purple. And I'll probably mix it myself and I'll show you how I do that. And then like a more blue dark purple that I'm using on the lower parts of the the shadow areas. For example, with her wings, if you look at her wings here, you think, oh, that's kind of a brown blue purple. I'll probably take a darker purple and put that here in her wings here. And then make kind of the pink magenta sort of purple and have that like on the the bone parts of her wing. So that way it will match the painting more. But it'll also kind of tie it into the Buddha and Blue, who, and this one I just had gave her brown and black wings, which if I were to do it now, I probably would have put more blue in there. But that was one of the first pins I ever designed. So I'm going to make this one a little bit more elaborate. And whichever I use for the lighter color, magenta or purple, I'm going to use that in the light parts of her eyes. In the painting, she kind of has blue-gray kind of cyanotic lipstick on. So I'll probably go with whatever sort of blue-gray I use on the pins, like the nails that are in his in her hand and are stuck in his heart and his left arm there. Or I might go with the darker colored purple. We'll see. That's part of the fun at this sort of stage. I don't know what I'm going to do with it exactly, but I can keep doing it. I might change my mind. I can do it over again. And that therein lies the fun. Oh, I was going to show the ACEOs. I forgot. I went up to the bathroom. I forgot. Okay, um, sweetie. They're there at your disposal. Yes, yes. They're there. Um, these are the ACEOs that I was working on last broadcast. If you want to see how I make these, you can look at the last broadcast. These are the tiny trading card sized art. They're all two and a half by three and a half inches that are printed canvas that are like mini canvas prints that are jaclés that we use, the same ones we use for like our limb editions. And I go in and if you want to watch me paint the details, I painted like little spider webs and each one is numbered one out of one because art cards, editions, and originals as ACOs, I make one of each one. That makes it special. Oh, I've got her. She's one I did for the, um, the original painting I did for a uh, Whitby. It was one I did at the Tiny Treasure. But yeah, there was the only way you could get a print of her. And these are all up on eBay now if anybody wants one. Yeah. Uh, Black Orchid Fairy says, I love the darker pur purple for her lips. The dark purple. That would probably be good. I'm like the, the dark purple. Link again for the ACO Please so do. Yeah, these it. are the ACO. And you know what? This one here, this is one that I did as a, um, one of the um, custom ones. Remember I did like a custom painting? And I was like, hey, I, I started painting her and somebody here on Twitch, we did an auction. Was it in Kansas City? I forget. But, and they got to choose how she turned out, and this is how she turned out. She started off just as like a face and like an arm, and she turned out to be a mermaid. And they got the original painting on wood, and this is the only print of her. And I have since, you know, fancied her up of different pearls in her hair. And Sometimes that's how it's done. Yeah. And this one was too. This is uh, Kasumi. When I was doing the, um, oh, the practice studies for the Ninja Dragonlings, Two, the second one, the one I did for Dragon Huns past year. That's Kasumi with her little dragon and got little tattoos. And this is the only way you can get a print of her because the original painting, of course, was a custom one we did here at Twitch. But there, she turned out pretty and she is signed and numbered one out of one. And here's a Poisson Vert, the, um, the Poisson Volant series, Poisson Vert, which is big green fishes. A lot of green fishes in there and she was a big painting but here's the little mini one and we do one of these and she's hand embellished in my beauty this is one of my favorite ones i kind of want to do like a bigger painting of this one because i really like how she turned out and when i started her i just kind of had her eyes and i don't think i even had her arms or the butterflies or anything but the person who bit on her they might even be in the room here at twitch um 
they were like, put some monarch butterflies and this is my daughter's skin tone, eye color, hair color, and give her a katana and make it sparkly and this is how she turned out. And I've had so many people ask me, can I get a print of that one? I'm like, no, well, you can get the ACEO card. That's the only print I do. And I always start them at a penny. I put them on eBay because I don't know even what to charge for that. Sometimes they go for $30. Sometimes they go for like $5,000. So I, I don't even know how to, I don't like, I hate the money aspect of it. I don't, I just say, hey, put it a penny. Y'all fight it out. I don't care. But I don't mind. they turned out really pretty. Yeah. No, I, I like that money. I don't like deciding that sort of thing. I, it makes me feel weird. Yeah. But she makes a lovely ACO, especially the mini paintings like that, since I don't offer prints of them on my website. And since they are the same size as an ACO on this, they're like two by three, two and a half by three and a half. Same size as like a baseball card or a Pokemon card. And a lot of people who collect them or trade them, they put them in those plastic things. We, we get them at Target, don't we? Those little plastic, or you do. I don't know where you get them. Those plastic uh -huh. things that, that you put, are, are they from Target? Those plastic things that you put the ACEOs in? I buy them from Target. They're from Target? Sometimes, or Amazon. Oh, okay, or Amazon has them. Okay, I, I've the never actually, I don't go to stores very often. Things that ACOs are the same size as, yeah. Yeah. That's a good way to display them or collect them. If you don't, collect, you know, if you don't have a lot of wall space, uh, uh, yeah, Pokemon, Pokemon uh, baseball cards, is that, that, is that still a thing? Yeah. People but still you, make if you win the, yeah, if you yeah. win the ACO, you get one. Yeah. So you can immediately put it in You can in put it right in there. Yeah. And it's a good way to collect art if you don't have a lot of money and you want something special, or if you don't have a lot of room on the I'm sure your there walls. are some people in the room that have like a bunch of yeah. those that are empty because they probably combine their ACOs together. That, that's so they have a bunch chance. of empty sheets. Hey, there's room for more. And lots of, other than me, lots of other artists make them too. If you search A C E O, all one word, all caps, on eBay, you'll see other artists who make them. It's uh, Some people kind of milk the description of it and they're not really official, but they should be two and a half by three and a half inches and they should be either an original painting or a small edition that has been hand embellished. Some people do cool stuff like, I've seen people do um, embroidery or like cross stitch or sculptures and or wood burning or all sorts of things as long as they're two and a half by three and a half inches and they are special, the artist made them. It's like an ATC that an artist made, like an artist trading card. They, when did they start making ACOs? Remember, remember like a long time ago, ago yeah. people were making um, back when they called them ATCs more often than not. Yeah. They were putting them in old cigarette machines. Remember oh, that? yes. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Oh, that, yeah, that actually, some of the people who started the ACEO movement were part of that. And yeah, it was like, that was really cool. Back, I don't even know if, like, people younger than us know what cigarette machines are, but it when used to be like a... Little a thing? It was like yeah. a vending machine you'd see at, like, a bowling alley or a gas station or something, and you would get cigarette cart, uh, cigarettes from them. And now, and then people switched it over and were making tiny pieces of artwork that were the same size as, like, a cigarette pack. So that's kind of how why they're that size, and, and that was kind of neat. It's like, hey, let's get rid of these and make artwork in them instead. So it's kind of cool. Now, I think pretty much all of the... I don't really have any more artistic as far as line art decisions make. This looks kind of... Um, it might look kind of sloppy now. So what I'm going to do is make... When I was saying this is like a light black, I'm going to make a dark black and go over part of this. And then I'm going to start deciding what colors I want to do as far as the violet. And I again, I this is the palette that I used for the factory for the... Um, voodoo in blue pin so i want to make sure she i want her to match the skin tone and i probably use that blue or gray or the gold the gold kind of brownie gold color on the little doll there i might do that actually before i do anything else and i'll show you how i mix the colors maybe i'll set this over here i don't mean to cover up her face but you can that way you can see that i'm gonna fold this in half actually it's hard for me to see what you guys can see on the computer so I don't want to like block out the interesting stuff there we go so right now I'm looking at, it's called PMS 457 it's called what PMS 457 is the Pantone color all the pan a lot of the colors start off with the words PMS and yes that's funny but they oh, were no, a weird, that's yeah weird yeah, yeah all I I think it's Pantone matching system or something I don't know what it means but I'm going to try to make that color 
And um, this was not printed off on a fancy printer. This is like the printer that we use for like printing out boarding passes and stuff. So I'm going to actually look at the pin that I used for Voodoo and Blue. And I'm going to try to match the color that looks like on the actual pin as opposed to the little palette I get from the Pantone company to pick the enamels. So I'm going to make that kind of, you know, I'm going to set her up here while I'm doing this. So if I look at her and I look at the little doll, this one obviously doesn't have legs. It's more of a portrait character, but the little doll is very similar. Except you can see his legs, but you can't see the lady's legs. But um, it's kind of a warm, scarecrow sort of hay, orangey, yellow, neutral, brown, gray, light, oxide, nickel, azo, gold color. So I'm going to take a I'm going to take some of the background color I used to mix with the, this gray here that I used to mix with the um, gesso when I varnished the um, gesso the whole canvas there. That's the right way. I see your dolly. Okay. I'm going to mix some of that with some of the brown that I had here. And I'm going to get some of the, it's called Indian Yellow. Now, if you look at this, it's turning green really quickly. And the reason that's a problem is a lot of colors of brown, if you get a pre-mixed brown, which is why I mix a lot of my own colors, have a lot of blue notes in them that I don't want. I don't want that to be greenish blue. I want that to be a warm kind of gold. So I'm going to use that for a base, but I have to think, oh, what's going to counteract that sort of green color? If you want to counteract a green color and you're mixing paint, <laughs> Well, you go across. Okay. I, I should get a color wheel, but I, it's like, no, you mix some red in there. So I'm going to get some that orange, which I know it's called orange. I've said this a million times. That is like super fire engine red. I love that color. So I'm going to mix that with there, and that will knock out any green undertones that I don't want. I'm also going to put a little bit of the Cronacodone Nickel Azo Gold in there. And then I'm going to have to put some sort of um, emulsifier that is an opaque light neutral, like um, Naples Yellow. Naples Yellow. If you know the secret of Naples Yellow, you can rule the world. That's a good one. I'm going to uh, put that, that in that, there, Is that too. a dolly thing? Yeah, it is. You read my secret dolly books, didn't you, Mandy? You read I, about I, the secret I of it. Naples I was, Yellow. I, was, I thought it was cute, but it wasn't. A, I wasn't that impressed with it. <laughs> yeah, have you read his... Um, I just his think it's. Have you read his confessions book, the one my dad gave me? No. You're, you're probably not old enough to read that one. Don't give it to your children when they're 14. I'm not old you enough. You don't want to turn out like me. No, it's it's for. I'd, I'd say it's for grown ups, but I don't know who it's for. My dad gave it to me along with the other one and a bunch. Of, I think. I, I, I don't know where he got it from. I think he gave me a bunch of art books and he didn't read that one, but I, I don't know. Ew. You're welcome to read it, my love. I've got it by my bed. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. So now it looks kind of too orange. So if something's too orange, maybe Maddie knows. What's the opposite of orange if you want to knock that down? You have to think of the complementary color. Okay, so let's the see. Opposite of orange, orange is a mixture of Orange red... is a color. If you're talking about... Okay. What's a complementary Re... color for orange? It'll be a primary color because it's okay. a complementary so color. So red yeah. and... And yellow. Red would be part of it. No, complementary. The opposite of it, love. Oh, well, the opposite, I guess, would, it would be, be a primary. Blue? Yes. So, if I were to take, how about cobalt blue? That's a very sure. blue blue. That's a blue that everybody liked like five years ago. And put a little bit of blue in there. Which sounds like I'm kind of backtracking because April before nice. I said it was too green. And Shadow yeah. Dancer said purple. That would, that would also be a good choice because that has red and blue in it. And then they say, well, it depends on what color orange. Exactly. See, that's, that's, I don't like That's when it gets very subtle. Like, no, that's, no, eh, that's good. I, I love He'll talking. I can talk about this all day, man. But no, that's going to knock it back so it is not stupidly green. But it's also not like bright, hot pink fuchsia orange. This is actually getting pretty close. One thing you can do... If I print this out on pa photo paper, it'd probably be better because the sort of plain boarding pass paper is not going to be the sort of color. But if you do that and you actually paint on top of it, I don't know if you can see I'm doing that. I can see that. I'll hold up to the camera and you're like, oh no, that's too red. That's too brown. I'm trying to match that exact color. So when I do the layout for this, it will actually match the same palette that I sent to the factory when we we're doing that for Jasmine. Pin. Yeah. You know what a movie that I've seen kind of on color matching is? Tim's Vermeer? Yes. Oh, yeah. Would you it, recommend that to people? I would recommend 
that. Everybody watched that. I don't yeah. know. I, I, there were a lot of things you could take away from that movie. That was, um, I, I watched it several times. There are some things in it that I flat out don't agree with, which always makes me like something even more. But it also brings up a lot of discussion about how theoretically anybody could kind of paint anything. It, basically, there's a guy in it, and he, he's pretty famous. He's invented a lot of interesting things, and he, he's self, um, he's self-reliant. He's got his own income. He's kind of killing time, making documentaries, etc., and he loves Vermeer. And he was showing how somebody who has no artistic talent at all could paint a Vermeer. But if you look at it, it takes him from start to finish, what is it, between five to eight years? From the time he, he builds the furniture and I takes forget, a photo and grinds the lenses. I mean, if you're going to start to finish, it is the better part of a decade, which in itself kind of shows it's hard to do that sort of thing, but he effectively does. And then he's got this like magnifying glass and he'll, he'll match a color and kind of like I'm doing here, you mix the color and you put it right there and you're like, oh, that's too red. Take the opposite color, put a bit of blue in there, try it again. Oh. That's too blue. Put a bit of white in there. Put some yellow in there. And he kind of does that over the course of something like five years. And then he does dot dot. It's almost like having a printer and you're like, print a slightly pinker yellow dot, slightly greener yellow dot. And it does and it looks very nice when he's done. And so that it kind of shows, in a way, I think that kind of proves the opposite of the point he was trying to make because he's like, look, anybody can do this. And they're like, yeah. And he, and he was saying it's impossible to make for a human eye to make that differential sort of gradation of tone of something you're looking at in real life, which I don't think is true. I think some people just naturally, like how some people can't see color very well. Like if you're uh, half my family are colorblind, but uh, I'm kind of the opposite. I can see color is really good. I think if you see something, you can match it, then you would be very good at doing that sort of thing. And I, and I don't think, I don't know what his point was to begin with in the movie if it was trying to say, oh, anybody could have done this and Vermeer did it and he did, he only has like 17 paintings over the course of, you know, 20 odd years, but it's a very good film to watch and it's very interesting and it shows, also talks about the art market at that time and, and um, Amsterdam and the idea of the camera obscure and how that might have helped people. Some people will say that uh, Da Vinci might have used that too, but that's also, and they act as if it's something that would be cheating. But it, it, it's like saying you take a photo of somebody to their portrait instead of making them sit all day next to you. That, that's not really cheating. They're just taking advantage of, hey, you don't have to sit there all day. I, I, I kind of don't really get what his point was, but it's worth watching. Wasn't that, um, I could be wrong, and I apologize in advance. It's probably because we're talking about um, Las Vegas. But didn't um, Teller from Penn and Teller didn't he finance that, or his production company made that? Most likely, Penn and Teller were in the film. They, yeah, I know. They, they remember they went and talked to David Hockney. Well, that's a thing too. It's like they went and talked to David Hockney as he. I, I I'm not even sure if David Hockney's still alive. And no offense, my friend, you're a fellow artist, but um, I didn't think that was a good example of somebody who would be a Vermeer contemporary. But, you know, he's well known. I wouldn't got a have lot of chosen pain. him either. Matt is not a David Hockney fan. I'm not you? a hockey fan either. Well, there you go. Judge me. Judge, Judge me, folks. Him. Judge him. No, you're, you remember they were doing the David Hockney exhibit, I think, yes. at the type and you're like, no, can we pay money not to see it? And I was like, oh. Because I say I, smart ass things. Yeah, he does. I'm good at saying smart ass things. That's uh, like a skill I have. Yeah. So. No, but the thing is, it's I've always been like that. And yeah, that's even fine. my family and people around me, and I've always been like that ever since I was a tiny child. Yeah. And sometimes people don't get it, and they think I'm being serious, and I love it. Well, that's true, too. Good. So you really love David Hockney? No, 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 no. no, no. I'm sorry. No, what I'm saying is they won't understand when I'm joking and when I'm not. Well, so that's okay, straight. too. Might as well be ambiguous. I agree. <laughs> No, uh, uh, there are People things that David Hockney does that are very impressive, and there are, um, he's certainly got a following. That Adam just makes Dancer me sound they catty also now. see colors very vividly. What's that? They also see, see co colors very vividly. Who do? 
shadow dancer. Oh, that, there you go. Yeah, I think um, that is actually part of it. I think it's, I, I don't want to say I'm um, genderist or something, but it's um, something that I think a lot of females can That's do. That's science, lady. There are certain colors of blue-green that um, females can see that men cannot. There was a fake meme that went around on Facebook that is totally not real that was one of those things like, can you see the numbers? And a lot of people got confused by that a year or two, but it has nothing to do with it. It's actually a genetic anomaly. I'm not saying I have that. I just think it's something that uh, the subtleties in color, I think I can see a little bit better than other people I know. But again, my dad is like completely colorblind. So kind of what I grew up with. Or my nephew Fox, who is very talented at painting. And I hope he continues with that. He's he's very young still. But he has two Grandpa Dan's and they're both colorblind. <laughs> so, and I think uh, he's the one who had peanut butter and we asked him what color it was and he thought it was green. Yep, and your father um, also. Yeah, that, that's why I said yeah. he has two Grandpa Dan's and they're both colorblind. Chris's father's colorblind and he's a Grandpa Dan too, so I don't know. But for things like tone and consistency and shading, that should not matter whether or not you can tell colors, or even at all. A lot of things like underpainting, when you're doing a a uh, Verdaccio or like a, a, a sort of a Grisel underpainting when you're focusing on what's bright, what's dark, what's in shadow, what's in light, etc. That has nothing to do with what colors are in there. You can kind of do it all monochromatically. And then if you want to, you can put colors on it. But a lot of um, a lot of the people you see in art museums may not have been able to see colors very well, especially before... Oh, electric lights. It would have been hard, especially in Europe and Northern Europe, when you have the sun out until four o'clock in the afternoon in the winter and the sun goes down and you have a candle. It'd be really hard to make a lot of very subtle color variation designs on there. So, Jasmine, yeah. Uh, that Nintendo guy it took me a second yeah. to see what he's talking about. Oh. Any news on new fans for this year? And I was like, fans, fans. Yeah. He's talking about that. Wavy oh fans. yes, the the bamboo fans. Yes, um, there might be. Um, let me think. What is the? I'm trying to think of what we did last year. We did um, the first place we had them at were Nakakon in King City, right? Is that the yes. first place we did? Yes. I was not there in person, so we'll probably um. Holly, have we talked about doing that with the and Chris for um Spectrum slash um? Not at all. Okay. But that would be the kind of what we would be doing around that time of year. That in is, Spain, I don't know if that's right? large enough. I, don't, I mean, I don't know. A planet, yeah. that we're talking about the Planet Comic Con that yeah. is in Kansas City on um, March 29th, 30th, and 31st. I don't know how big a show it is because I've never been to Planet Comic Con, but my sister Amber and her husband Kretz have been there. And I don't know. Um, how crowded a show it is, or if it if it's hot in there, and like yeah, part of the reason we started doing bamboo fans is because it was hot. Like there's a million people inside in a small, not very ventilated room, or things like the Kansas City Renaissance Festival, where it might be 115 degrees out, and you're like in the shade, but you still want a fan. So we these are actual fans, like bamboo fans, you fan yourself with instead of doing it like with the map or whatever. But that we we definitely will plan on doing that, and um, I don't know when the next event we do will be for that. It could be for um, Planet Comic Con, which if anybody missed our announcement earlier, that is the same thing as Spectrum Fantastic Art in Wilmington City, March twenty ninth, thirtieth, thirty first. Yes, I have not been there. I've been to Spectrum before. It's in Bartle Hall, so it's in the same place. But I'm not sure how busy it is. So we're going to try to judge that and see if we have something like fans. We'll definitely do a pin. So that'll probably be the pin I do after the sun, because this is the March pin. Yeah. Uh, this is probably a question directly for People's Choice. Um, oh, okay. Tigger asks, we see yeah. that People Choice Apparel on Amazon. Are the t-shirts unisex or men's cut? Really interested in getting some shirts. Oh, I don't know. Definitely ask them, because I, yeah. I, 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 the only thing I see is the Asking same thing you see. Asking us often when yeah. somebody else is selling something. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> personally, we, we're no, not I, I'm a good person to ask know. about, like, hey, when you did that painting, what happened after painting. that? I, it Limited could be a editions, painting I did. canvas prints, stuff we make. Stuff I actually make, yeah. yeah. Other than that, it's like, hey, guess no when you painted this painting 22 years ago, and it's on a, a t-shirt now, what, is this a v-neck or what? I'm, I'm not going to know that. It's going to be the people yeah, who somebody make somebody besides us is selling it. Yeah, it's, or, like Disney stuff, Disney would yeah, know, but um, ask product. them though. Um, people, again, ask. People's Choice has just started up again. I'm very happy to see that. They were closed for about two years. They had a 
horrible thing that happened to them and they had to redo their website and stuff. So they are um, up and running at least on Amazon. So if you go to Amazon and go to their um, Amazon store and I think it says contact the seller, it might say something else. It says something like that. If you click on it and say, hey, I've got a question, they can probably help you out. I met the guy um, when I was in California. Alex is the guy who's in charge of it now. It's part of the same family that ran it before, and he is now running people's choice, and hopefully they're going to have even more stuff of mine up there. And I think I just sent them, I uploaded a bunch of files to them with new artwork. But as far as like what, what size the arms are and the shirts and things, I, there isn't really a way for me to know that. But if you ask them, they probably know. You know, I'm trying to look at her. It looks like on the little doll that she's holding, the yellow. If I was doing this as a painting, for example, I would make this yellow brighter, like on the front of them, because it's on the front, as opposed to the ones that are in shadow. But when it's a pin, it's actually a dimensional sort of shape. So it's got a metal, like an iron black line around it. And then it's got that color enamel. Again, I eventually got to the point that it blended in there. So I'm going to make him kind of all the same color, so it's going to look very, uh, I hate to keep using the word animation style when this is not a cartoon, but it's going to kind of look like that. It's going to look very flat, and I wouldn't do that with a painting if it was meant to be a painting or a print or a, a design on a coffee cup. Um, like that, but I want something like a design, and I have to make sure I use the same color there, same color there, same color there, same color there, because with enamel pins, I can usually use... The most I've done, I think, is like 11 colors on one pin, but usually I try to keep it to around six or seven, so. As was our first show this year Tintagel or Both? Um, Tintagel's before Both. I guess our first one's I've caught, but um, yeah, May will be Tintagel. I think is at the beginning of May. It's whenever Megacon is not. It's either the, because Megacon is like, Remember we thought we were going to go to from Tintagel to Berlin to do the Gaia show for yeah. Beautiful Bazaar? Yeah. I, but then we couldn't because Megacon changed their dates yeah. again. But um, I sound very happy about that. Yeah, I sound really excited about that. It's like, sorry, Mandy, we're not going to Germany again. We're, we're going to um, um, Mega Megacon, uh, where you live anyways. But yeah, that's okay. Megacon's a good show. It's a very big show, too. So... It will be Tintagel, and it's probably... Do you have my calendar there, love? May 4th is. Oh. So May 4th is Tintagel, and then Megacon would be the... Is it the weekend of the 19th, I think, for me? I believe. I could be wrong. I don't 16th. know anymore, right? 16th, okay. And it's for four days, or...? So oh, is it through the 19th? Yeah. Oh, okay. Actually, it's funny, this yellow, even though it's the same yellow, even it's kind of before where the um, line is, so it looks a bit lighter. Let's see, I'll try to scoop him over there. Him meaning the doll, not the lady. Yeah, keep popping this in here. I wish that this is like a solid piece of wood here, so the pin does not want to stay up there. About a half hour till the next wrap. Oh, yeah. Who's the next one? Is that um uh, Tiana then? It is. Hey, Tiana. Pretty sure. Well, we did the I'll other double two, check. Right? Yeah. Just got to double check. Make Tiana. sure I didn't mess anything up here. It is Princess Tiana. Tiana. With Princess, Princess Tiana. The, the smarmy little frog. Yeah. Smarmy frog. He's a smarmy frog. Princess. He is smarmy. I kind of wanted to have the alligator in there, but I couldn't really fit him in. What's his name? Louie? I forget. Shaylee is looking forward to seeing us at some point in England. Oh, we, I, we will well, definitely be in England. Shaylee, I'm looking forward to seeing you in Antarctica. Oh, let's, let's try to ooh, do that. that's uh, Antarctica 2022. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Who's going to come? There's going to be a pin. <laughs> There'll be a special pin that uh, two of you will get. Yes. Yeah. If you come hey, to Antarctica, I want you get to go to Antarctica. Pin. I want to do that. Exactly. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I want to do the Hollow Earth thing that they were doing, and they never wrote back to me. Bah. So I am using that same yellow and just filling in him like I would do a coloring book, but I don't want to do any shading. And that's why this might look very flat and not very realistic, because 
the black lines again you got to remember are metal it's a type of um iron alloy that is black matches the back there they pour it into a mold and then they take the different colors of enamel and i can pick again between six to nine to ten to twelve and they actually pour them it's like little dishes little divots like you'd have on a stained glass window and they pour them in there so when i'm painting this doll i i if i was just painting painting i would say oh i'm gonna make that one darker that bit whiter a bit his arm that's further away is going to be more red because the background's red but i'm not i'm doing that all the same color because I want the factory to see that and say, oh yes, that's the same sort of enamel. And any sort of illusion of depth that I do in this, it's going to be things like the um, black lines, like receding in the distance, or up, upward curved, inward clove, um, inward clove, etc. Yeah. So uh, the, the room wants us to do a cruise. That sounds, like for everybody? A or Jasmine yeah. Beckett Griffith cruise. That would be pretty sweet. That, okay, I'm up for that. Let's do that. Let's do that tomorrow. That Love. sounds great. Exciting and Well, you know, oh, I know. Um, We're I'm expecting sure. pins. Are you the from pin a show? Boat. Oh, no. Is this Love Soon Boat? you'll be making a lot of okay. pins. The pin boat. Or love boat, not love ship. I'm sorry. I, I don't know that show. <laughs> Set a course for pin venture. You're not. You're mine on a new new pin. Okay. Um. And yeah. Pins if, if Matt hadn't signed that, I was gonna think about anymore. it. No, no, no. Um. So. Um. Yeah. That would be kind of fun. Um. I have. Um. I have been talking with the people who run the Disney galleries that do the galleries that are on the Disney cruise ships, and they might. Probably not anytime really soon, but they so might be a Disney. It would probably it would be, be a Disney, Disney one, yes. And my friend, some of you guys know Miss uh, Miss Mindy, who does the very very adorable little sculptures and paintings for Disney. Also, yeah, she's so. done them. She's done a couple of the Miss Disney Mindy is um, a lovely cruise ships. Human. Yeah, she is a sweetie pie. We we so when if, she's in town, we try to go out to dinner. Miss Mindy, she's you wonderful. guys are lucky because she's Miss sweet. Mindy. She's one Mindy O'Brien. Sometimes she goes by, but she's usually Miss Mindy. She's great, but. The, the same division of Disney that does some of her cruises has been asking if maybe I would do some of the Disney cruises. So if I do, you can bet I will tell you about it. So here's hoping. They talked about maybe doing some of the, I think they're trying it out now, doing some of the Disney cruises that are up in Norway. And they said maybe, hey, Jasmine, could you maybe do some Frozen paintings and we could do a special Norway Disney cruise? And I'm like... Yes, yes, I will. <laughs> so I, it is not a question of me wanting to do it, I'm just like wanting somebody to facilitate it. And I, I'm sure that would be a very popular thing. And then me and Matt would get a vacation. So that's always nice. I don't like vacations. Yeah, Maddie. You don't? Yes, I do. Yeah, I thought so. You you just lie on camera all the time. I lie. You? You just, I lie. You lie and you lie and you lie. That's what you do. you figured this out Thank yet? you, Jen. Yeah. No. Um, yeah, but I would like to, there was also, um, oh, it's kind of thing too that I've thought about even trying to arrange myself, but I think it would require a lot of people. It's hard to get a lot of people together to have enough people to have the same schedules and the same, um, money to throw at it and the same days that they could be gone from work, etc. Um, for well, example, the funny, people Jasmine. who, like, the you know, Gothic Beauty, like how they, they do the goth cruise and stuff like that. I always thought that would be kind of fun. But they they have that same sort of system that they do on cruise ships where you get maybe, like, 50 people together and you're part of the cruise, you know. But it's not the whole boat. Um, Jasmine. Yeah. We were once uh, briefly in, in talks with the, the possibility of Disney. That's what I was and, talking about, the Norway and, thing? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, um, Shaley said, hey. Yeah. I did a cruise in Norway. She did. I saw her pictures from it. It was beautiful. It looked it like does one look of the most inspirational cold. things ever. Cold. The coldest cruise I've done to date is up uh, by uh, um, Canada. That's true. We did. Um, we took uh, my niece and nephew and my sister and her husband up to, up to um, we left out of Los Angeles and went up to Victoria and Vancouver, like up in San Francisco, like up the Pacific Northwest. And that was a really fun cruise. 
and it was kind of cool because we saw lots of whales and elephant seals and little rock sausages or little harbor seals that look just like our kitty tigerio and uh, it, it's very different than going on the ones in the caribbean or around florida where you see you know manatees and dolphins and such so i and i i, I like being on a boat I, i'm a very boaty person i like to just relax and chill out and not have to go anywhere for a while it, that very rarely happens for me so i, I would love to do something like that they could do a patreon cruise maybe that'd be fun it's like we have a new tour it's twenty thousand dollars but you can yeah, go on a cruise on a boat. yeah no i wouldn't do that but that that sounds fun and, and then now. like based on your tier <laughs> it's how good of a room you get oh, it's like you boat. get one with yeah. a veranda Ooh, and you get concierge level oh <laughs> you're one of the that this tier you get to have this. oh see that starts sounding rude i don't want to be exclusionary about it i just uh but you think we've been on like 25 cruises? Maybe? We've been on a bunch of cruises, and that might sound like a lot, but when you live in Florida, you can go on cruises for like $99 because they're just trying to fill up the boat, and you just have to drive there. We're like 45 minutes from a cruise port, and sometimes I can just do work on them. I'm like, well, I might as well do it here as opposed to at home, so... A lot of... It depends on the ship. A lot of cruise ships haven't really quite caught up as far as... It's because they're doing the... um. Oh, satellite Wi-Fi. So it's hard to get very good internet connection. So there's nothing I could ever really do Twitch from or even answer you know an email sometimes Gosh, hard, that, depending on great. the boat. And it's, it's really good. Yeah, I know. It's the like internet. the first few minutes, you're like, oh, this is horrible. And I start freaking out. I'm like, oh, I've got important emails. How am I going to talk to people? And then after a while, it's like, ah, computer's not working. You want to go to the pool? You know? <laughs> and then it becomes a vacation. So, uh but yeah, if you like cruises, Florida's a place to live. You can go on cruises for less than $100 for three days. And that is like cheaper than living at home because it includes all your food. And a lot of them are very veggie friendly. And you can bring your, they, it's not an airplane. So you can bring paints and, you know, shampoo and stuff that I apparently have to bring everywhere. I bring exactly me. five bottles of shampoo just because I'm allowed. No, you can bring as I much shampoo as you. You could probably bring 500 bottles of shampoo and they wouldn't care. Well, you know, I'm, I got to work up to that. It's not an airplane. They also give you shampoo there. It's not like, but I'm always just worried. I'm like, what have I done? I'm not shampoo. I've got a lot of stupid uh, hair. The, the whole Titanic scaring people would. No, you're not, no, not going to sink on a ship. Um, no, no. You're more likely to die That's off so of good. a boat than you are on a boat. So be worried if you're at home. That's the most likely place you're going to die. Yeah. Everybody, all the time. What, what did Norm MacDonald say? I think people he's are, worried about afraid, yeah, of the wrong of getting, thing. Uh, a killed on an airplane or a boat. Yeah, or by car, even a car. Cars are pretty likely, but no, shark. it's your heart. What your heart's about your own get you. heart? Your own heart will try to kill you. It will attack and kill you. It will. That's like 100%. That's going to be like everybody. Yeah. Yep. Don't worry your about, heart don't worry about sharks. You. It's your heart that's going to get you. Yeah, I like Norm Macdonald. He came to yes. my he came to my Corey Halford show. What I, the, very funny. The, the um yeah. little bit we just mentioned, your heart will attack and kill you. If you uh go on YouTube <laughs> and type that in, um yes. heart will attack and kill you and Norm Macdonald. It is one of the funniest uh, stand up. It's actually I've seen. very accurate too. You are way so more funny. likely to die from that than yes. being killed by lightning or terrorists of, or something. Or I usually apply that to my life in general as uh, math. Um, like that why, turns into like a freakonomic thing and like am I going to die from um, somebody murdering me in my right. basement or from driving to the grocery store driving it's like to the probably grocery store driving much, to the grocery much... store That's, you, I, you just don't leave the house and, except your house is the most likely place you're going to die so. I don't know but a lot of people put their worry in the wrong place I think oh that just like stuff like on the news and the internet trying to get you excited about things but it's always good to be safe wherever you're at. But... Yeah. Oh, poor little guy. He looks like a little horrible stuffed animal I've had. No, we're there. not going to set up a date for the cruise. You, you guys, guys can go on a cruise. cruise. Hey, if you um, go on a cruise, let me know. And, and you can tell us about it. No, I, I would, I would very, I think that would be a very fun sort of art event would be cruise. So we, we will see. Again, it would probably realistically maybe be a Disney one since they have started having some of the Disney artists go on cruises. And usually it involves the artists like setting up in the like 
kind of the hallway in front of where the movie theater is and doing signings a few times. Usually they have a dinner or like cocktail party, which is always fun. And the artist is there and you get to hang out if you're part of the group. And, and then it's the other people. Oh, in the course, cruise too, uh, Kitten so. says, and this is, yeah. I would say this is nearly definite. What's that? Un- if you did a cruise, would you offer paint with Jasmine lessons? Oh, of course. I, I would so. love that. Yeah. Especially if it's like a day at sea and we're just here's, kind of at the ocean. Thing, yes. That sounds I, fun. I have to say yeah. this. Usually when many of you meet Jasmine, we are surrounded by a lot of other humans. We don't really have the time that we've ever wanted to interact, as particularly with like Twitch people. Oh, very people. true. Yeah, usually there's like a line with like cast members there and stuff, and it's like we can't really talk for right. very long. So if it was on a yeah. cruiser, there'd be a finite amount of people. Yeah, we, you probably like you would probably get sick of us by the end of the cruise. Well, it'd be more like doing the the event that we sometimes do with uh, one fantastic weekend. Oh yeah, it's like yeah, you guys are sleeping in the hotel room across from us, and we're kind of tired of you now. But yeah, that's yeah. I don't mean to make it sound boring, but yeah, you would you would get your fill if we did a cruise. That's See, the River Song eighty six said, said at forty eight, my heart kicked off, and after EMTs brought me back with paddles on my bathroom floor, I now have an implanted de- defibrillator. See, that's, so don't try to think. Don't, don't, don't try to think about my heart getting me. Yeah, don't. I apologize. No, River no, Song, no. That's I, I, is something we should. Be I hardly aware know anybody in my like family who hasn't had problems being with that scared. After a certain age, yeah. I don't know a bear is going to kill. Us. Yeah, be uh, uh, sharks is the thing. I think yeah. since we're in Florida, but or alligators. Oh my gosh, it's like you know, every year one out of. 89 million people get attacked by an alligator. That's say not that, um, really a lot. You're more likely to die driving to the parking lot than you are getting eaten I, by an alligator. I don't know if... Um, they are scary, but... I don't, <laughs> I don't know, know if... So. Uh, I think car accidents were, were number one, but opi- opioid addiction has... It depends what age group you're in. Yeah. Um, and I've so certainly that's, known a lot of people, a lot. I've had a lot of family members aff- affected by the opioid thing. So yeah. that's, you know, that's, that's things people should really worry about. Not, yeah. we not have, sharks and alligators, you know. We, we have it'll real, sneak up on you. problems. We don't have to fantasize yeah, about Yeah, you don't have ones. to worry about Thanks alligators. Bits, Bambi. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Bambi gave us one, two, three, eight. Eight oh, bits. Thank you. Bambi, you're the first bit giver of the night. Yay! Heat stroke. Heat, well, heat, heat stroke yeah. is uh, that's, that's pretty okay. much uh, again. We we you've, you if you've been to it. Florida, it's you've possible. probably heard people say you are eight times more likely to die from a coconut falling on your head than you are being hurt by an alligator or a shark. So all the time you spend at the beach worried about um, sharks or in the river worried about alligators, you're eight times more likely to be killed by a coconut falling on your head from a palm tree. It's true. So, and and that reason, is a true thing. This isn't an urban the legend. The reason we're afraid of these it, things but, yeah. is because it's a, it's old caveman fears that, that don't exist anymore. It we're is. It's in your right genes now. and you're worried about saber-toothed yeah. tigers getting you. It's your lizard brain sort of um, reptile jeans like kicking in there so which is why people shouldn't worry that much about it. alligators don't want to eat you they want to eat fish that they don't have to move a whole lot to eat they don't want to come eat people that are 10 times as tall as them so i'm using a slightly darker i don't know i'll show this a bit closer darn you can no, i can show you a bit closer i'm doing heavier outlines around the <coughs> pens that i drew in there and his little crossed out eyes and the little Kind of strings that are wrapped around in there. He's turning out lovely. Oh, I got some. I got some paint on my pen. I'm gonna put him in the or her in the sink really quick. Oh, what happened? Um, my my pen fell in my paint. Oh. I, it just has. I, it will come off. It, it if I waited ten years, it would come off too. It just Although it can be Yeah. We're out. I mean, there's some crumbs there. So, Grinchy says they want you to do a poll for for uh, a cruise. A poll for a cruise? Okay. Yeah, I think you should do a poll. I think you might be surprised how many people would be interested in a cruise with Jasmine. And, of course, you, Matt. 
They even have soft serve ice cream 24 7. I've been on cruises. I, I got gotcha. you. I, I know how cruises work. But I think that people might say, hey, the cruise is a great idea, but it's hard to, it's, it's hard to time people to si actually sign up to. Yeah, it's like, hey, can you also put your deposit down? Because yep. otherwise they won't. <laughs> exactly. And it's, I again, I don't care if I get any money out of it. I just want to make sure enough people are there so I'm not just like left in the arch. But with cruises and things like that, a lot of it is timing because if. If you're in Florida and it's summertime, it's very different than if you're in Australia. Summertime is the other part of the year. And, and a lot of, I have a lot of fans and collectors who are teachers, so they can't leave during the school year. So it, it, it would all be a thing of like, would you like to be, be here in the second week of August or the last week of July? And then I've got to combine it with like, oh, right. that convention's there. But I would very much like to. And if I did do, it would probably be... We could do a poll, but you have to you have to shoot out five grand or something. No, that's what I mean. You have to put a deposit yep. down or something because otherwise so they would sign up. Yeah, it won't. It that's won't why I think it would be better if it at least for the first time. You know, if we did one and Disney did set it up again, they would do that, not me. Um, that would be cool. And if it was very, if a lot of people turned up, then that maybe it would be something. It's like, hey, the Disney cruise was super popular. Why don't we do our own? So I'd, I'd need to have something right, that would show people. to me I wouldn't go in debt for $800,000. Right. You know. He says, JD and I would do a cruise, but I do have to request my vacation days off the previous year. That's the thing, so yeah. So we're already have... we're looking at 2020 yeah, exactly. or 2021 it's... then, and then it couldn't be right. during Dragon Con, Mighty Con, Epcot, um, Festival of the Arts, um, Food and Wine Festival. It would have to be things that were at different Well, then you'd have a lot of people who get Dragon seasick food. and would prefer to come to a hotel. And we do a lot of conventions anyway. So and those are usually at hotels, yeah. yeah. So, But yeah, it would definitely be something I would like to do. So, but it is something Disney has been talking to me about. So if that was going to happen, it would probably start off as a Disney thing and see how many people actually showed up for it. And then if it was popular, then maybe we'd try to do our own. That would be fun. Or do more Disney ones. That, that would be even better. So, I got an idea, Jasmine. What's that? Love? Let's... By a cruise ship? No. Okay. Let's you and me I'm on, on the wrong cruise. page here. Yeah, you and, and me. And then oh. while we're on the cruise ship, yeah, we can invite people to uh, have the, an event. The ports of call. If they happen to be on the cruise ship, yeah, then they can show up. Oh. Otherwise, we just have a little vacation. That's true. You know, how does that sound? That, yeah, that's kind of where I was talking about how like Gothic Beauty magazine how they do a cruise. They don't buy the whole cruise ship. They just say, hey, the people who are there, you come, they have different bands come and like play at the different nightclubs at night on the ship and it's just part of the magazine thing. But Tammy's saying make our own festival. That yeah, Tammy, sounds complicated. Maybe, maybe you can make it for us and, and then I'll show, show up. up. <laughs> That's a lot of an undertaking. We are, it is. We are, also, too, it's, a, it's easy now. to forget that I, I'm not, I, even though I seem like a company, I'm not a company. So uh -huh. when, when people say, even things like with pins people are like can you make a pin for this i'm like i can but i've got to like hi it's not disney doesn't make these for me i make them so okay so tammy it's, says she yeah did. yeah who All does right. tammy well okay yay thank you tammy so everybody email tammy everybody email tammy. tammy yeah there you go no but that that is very much on my list she knows more like about it than do. we do that's I'd probably sure. yeah but the thing is we yeah, yeah there, and there's money involved and everything. That's what I mean. You have yeah. to book it ahead of time. And then people are like, no, 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 I couldn't make it. Exactly. I'm like, oh, I just had to be out of pocket up. for yeah. you. I'm sorry. You know, it's, mm -hmm. I, uh, again, my company me is just feel. me. So if you don't show up, I have to pay for you. I mean, you your feel, single uh, supplement. Uh, uh, I, no outside. What's that? Amy's saying we need a field. I'm saying no outside. A field. Um, I we don't want to hold a fire exactly. festival. Exactly, Kay Harmon. What was that? The fire, fire festival. festival. Oh um, yes, I have not seen yes, that, but I know that I know the story exactly. behind that. I have, I know that's hey, a Netflix thing too, but I have not. Um, yeah, that is the problem with stuff like that. It's like, hey, you want to book a convention, and it costs like two hundred thousand dollars, and it's like that wouldn't be like a company thing. That that'd be me trying to go to my bank and convince them to loan me two hundred thousand dollars and book a field and get a cruise and all that. That just <laughs> and I I know that that is like something that a strangely really festival would be cool. Oh, it might be cool, but I'm you know what it might be like in guys, ten or twenty years. Think it would be great. <laughs> Let's I, if I, everybody I, here was there, that'd be awesome. Exactly. If every, all the like-minded people. people. If you're gonna put in perspective, yeah. something like Dragon Con gets around a hundred thousand people, and we kind of cover our costs. On that so if we had like the hundred people here at twitch it wouldn't i'd, yeah, I'd probably just... i'd probably end up in debtor's prison <laughs> right. we can, we... yeah but 
if everybody spreads the good word and we keep talking about it and time goes by and, and we talk person, about it, talk about somehow it, and we then, don't, we don't uh, give, give up any cash for it. <laughs> Because that's why it would be that's... great if Disney did exactly. it. Exactly. That's what I, that's what I mean. That's why you will see when I do things that are more like in a somebody different country. Else's... It's usually somebody else's like, hey Jasmine, we're gonna pay right, for your hotel not, room. I'm like, yay! Yeah, I know. I just I, I have the same pair of pants on I had in fourth grade. I, I do not have a lot of extra money to throw at things. I I'm happy when I do, and I I try to put it in good places. But when it's things like business wise, I like it if I can kind okay. of ally myself with something else. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes, you know, a, qu a quick mindset of how people sometimes feel a, a bit put out by yeah. doing, by coming to an event. Oh, yeah. Let's say we have something, and we're in, we're in um, Orlando. Yeah. And people say, well, why don't you come to Winter Park? Now, for those of you are, who aren't in the area. <laughs> I've had so many people ask me why I'm not in Winter Park. Winter Park is okay, about a half Winter hour Park from here. Is yeah. a half hour from Orlando. From here, yeah. From here, about 45 minutes. Yeah. It, uh, it depends so what if time people aren't willing to travel a half hour to Orlando <laughs> yeah, to see Jasmine and expect them to come to their personal hometown, they're not going to go on a cruise. They probably aren't, yeah. And that's okay. I wouldn't expect people to. I mean, I'm that way. I'm, the, I'm kind of that way when I'm like. Um, like, I have a lot of friends who are musicians, and it's, if there's a concert, it's like, oh, they're in Florida, but oh, they're way the heck up in um, right. Seaside or um, Pensacola, and I'm down, like, by Key West or something. That That's, like, the reason 14 we know hours these drive. That's hard the to get there. The reason we know these yeah. things is because when we do a show that we don't normally attend that's not a con, or it's not something that we've attended for many years, yeah. like, out in a... In a strange city, a, st a city that's strange to us, not the, the, the city. No, no, the turnout is not the same. No, we see brand new people. Yeah, and, and, people and that's part of why I like I like doing that because I meet new people. Yeah, and then there are people we might see up here at Twitch or up at Patreon or something, and that's great. Yeah, but but you can't rely on that for Amy paying says, for your airline have tickets. Thousand that start out in a small ballroom, not usually not for one individual. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm just one lady who just. Paints in her dining room, so I'm not gonna. Again, I think you know I, I, I think more that is than a I big am. compliment. That is people, a very good compliment. No, I love that when people in... act like I'm. It's like, well, is it a Disney one or a Strangeland one? Like we're on the same level. I'm like, oh no, I'm just a lady who kind of lives over there, and I'm not Disney, you know. But that's that's a very good compliment. Thank you. But again, I'm not an old person, so as time goes by, we might get more of us and tell your friends and keep it going, man. That's some of the, I mean, everything I've done has been very grassroots. It's like, hey, my sister told me about her friend who works somewhere and they like your artwork. Right. And that's In just, the meantime, that's just how come it goes. see us at yeah. one of the many shows that yeah, we do anyhow. Yeah, we do our best. Yeah. Okay, and some of that, now I've made some of that black that's out of the Daxazine purple. Um, the paint's gray and the Van Dyke brown, and this is the black black that I talk about. And you will see when I go over this that this is super black. This will be the area that is actually stamped out in metal, like the black um, iron oxide metal that they use on the pins. Again, if you look at the back side of any of my pins, you see it looks black. That's why. That's the difference again between a soft enamel and a, um, a hard enamel. I use a hard enamel outside, a hard metal outside. To make it kind of like the outline so the lines you see that look black that is actual metal there that's not like paint that is actual metal so it's like die cut it's stuck in there and then they pour the different colors of enamel in there so when i'm doing the design for this i actually paint everything in black 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 so when they scan it in at the factory and they make the metal stamper thing it makes that mold and they do a front mold and a back mold and all of my paintings usually require a lot of back molding, which costs a lot more. Some of these pins cost me like $10,000 to make, and that is totally out of pocket, and I don't ever see that back. But you guys like pins, and I like making them, and usually I break about even. But it gets people liking my artwork, so that makes me happy. But uh, we have to do back molding, which means the back side of the mold, I don't know if you can see that, it's got my name. That's not written on there like a stamper. That's actually like carved into that and that's a mold and it's all made out of metal and they make a special machine that makes just this pen with two posts on it and that way i see the shape of it on the outside and that is what the back side of it is so that's the back molding bit and the front molding bit is it's almost like having a oh like a stamper or a cookie cutter or something like that that shaped the little divots little holes like a stained glass window 
And anything that you see that is not that dark black color is going to be something like this yellow orange that I picked here that is going to be poured in. And that's why they call it soft enamel because then when they put it in there, it's not a hard piece of plastic or glass or metal that they've cut to that size. They've actually poured that in there because it's soft when they pour it. I know it makes you think like you get and it's going to be bendy. I'm like, no, 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 no. That's the process they do when they're making it. That's what they mean by soft enamel. It's not like one is hard and one soft. At the end, you can't tell the difference. It's just the process that you make in it. And you can actually be kind of more detailed when it's soft enamel because you have the metal bit, depending on what sort of art you do. Again, mine is very heavy outlined. That's why I've got the black paint and the almost looks like a coloring book sort of thing. That is the hard metal and then the enamel is poured in there which is kind of amazing that they can get that much detail in the eyes, which of course is like the main part of any of my paintings. So I'm, I'm very impressed with the amount of detail they can do that. It is done on the microscopic level. So even like on the top part of her hair, I kind of like putting the, making it look a bit feathered there. And they will simplify this a bit because um, since it is made by a metal machine sort of stamper thing, it can't be as tiny. Since this is 10 inches high and I'm making something that's like one and a half inches high, it's um, not going to have every single brush strip, but the computer that they use for making the metal die cut thing is going to kind of replicate that, kind of approximate the shape of the hand done bristles that are there at the top. And that's part of what makes something like a soft enamel pin look more organic and less like a, um, Jasmine, you know, less uh, like a, a cloisonne sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, Kaza is uh, coloring up Poisson Le U Global U. Oh, with the little black Sorry, my pronunciation. No, yeah, that, that, of all the ones I've done, that one's hard. I had to ask one of my friends who spoke French to come up with How the title for that. This? Um, that's cool. Oh, yeah. They're um they're the telescopic black goldfish that have the eyes. They're almost like a little hammerhead shark where their eyes kind of go off the side of their heads. I love that one. I would uh, recommend um looking at the uh, slipper lobster. Oh my goodness! At Epcot. at Epcot, we saw him yesterday, and I had not seen him there before. We, we have the, we have the shell of one. I do have a, you know, do you, would you mind grabbing it? Oh, or uh, would that could be, it's not, but he, he looks again, so much better again, I mind. basically live in a natural history museum. So if you mention the sea critter, I probably have one here. Um, they're probably dead, but they're, bones on top of it. Dinosaurs. Um, you can hand me those too. You want your, okay. All right. I'll show people what's happening here. Anyways, okay. so this is the color that I was trying to match earlier, that kind of yellow color. The first ones were too brownish red, and that's what he's looking like so far. Well, I don't... Don't put that okay. much on the palette. I, I will. Okay. These, these were on top of the slipper lobster. These are um, tiny... Oh, I've got Miss Mindy piece right here. Oh, there you go. I've got an original of hers over there. These, are, these dinosaurs have nothing to do... These are all actually human bones. Okay, from here's, various places, here's but lovely I don't know why Matt handed me. I think that was well, you said to me. No, I was talking about slipper lobster. Oh, but, okay. okay. Well, but here are my toy dinosaurs and bones that are on top of my slipper lobster. Again, my if you were to see this room I'm in, you, it looks like a terrible, uncurated museum. I love this. Okay. Uh, I love this specimen. Okay. Oh, I yeah. Got you shot. got them all. That's a lot of human remains there. Okay. That, that's framed nice. It right. is framed nice. Did a good job. This is our friends at Darwin and Wallace. Okay. This is a slipper lobster. Now, you might think he looks like a regular lobster, even though he doesn't really. But if you see him in real life, he almost looks like cuttlefish. He's got a lot of extra arms at the front, and the, the front parts that kind of look kind of, oh, the brownish bits at the front, like in front of where his eye pods are. Um, I don't mean like iPods, but they're iPods. Ah, but um, they those, that was um, those are the best iPods. But they they're like iPods from a million years ago. But they change colors and they have kind of a rainbow filter that goes on them. And they have him at Epcot at the Living Seas Pavilion, not very far from where my booth is. But this is a um a prepared slipper lobster, and he he was I fell in love with them. Yes, and he is um he was harvested ethically, so he lived his life. But he is very lovely now, and I keep him in my studio. It's so funny that we happen to have one. That probably says more about me than it does about slipper lobsters. <laughs> but 
Yeah, but you can go see them if you come down that. Never mind all the human remains that were scattered on top of them in the toy dinosaurs. But I never showed people my prehistoric times, did I? Oh, uh, uh, feel free. I'm still trying to. This is this. that magazine Matt was making fun of me about Earth Air. Prehistoric Times magazine. I wasn't making fun of you. I got that for you. Cause... Oh, I thought you were making. Well, you're teasing me. Oh, okay. crap. I'm prehistoric. To... Maddie, don't cuss on this. This is for all ages. <laughs> prehistoric Times. Best magazine oh, ever. Oh, hang on a second. Wow. It has helpful things about how to draw dinosaurs. Look at that. I don't know if that really helps you draw or anything, but nice. it's a good magazine. Okay. <sighs> the Safari Limited. What a great magazine. Oh, it's got Steve Alton. You talked about the Meg, Maddie. Didn't you do that for yes. one of your um, uh, I actually patrons? enjoyed the Meg quite a bit. There's an interview with Steve Alton who wrote the Meg. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Wait, let's see. Anyways. I need to pick a winner. Um, I and, think Moobot hey, everyone does. In the, but... Everyone in the room who's recently joined our pin um, <laughs> Patreon group, thank you. Oh, thank you. Did we get some people joining? Oh, yes, yeah, several awesome. people have joined since the oh, broadcast. Oh, that makes me so I think, happy. Uh, thank you. Yes, yeah, so thank you all. Well, this day more than any other is good to join because it's still technically January. So yeah, you're going to get the advantage. January pin and then you will get the Patreon pin. And then we'll get the new Patreon pin, which is Luna Moss. And then you'll get this one. So you get a whole bunch of pins if you join right now. And it's before it turns into Fe February is a good time to join too. It's always a good time, but right now it's just especially good. Okay, Kitten won. Yeah. Kitten won! Have they won before? I do not remember. I know kitten. Oh. So I might be confusing about confused Just about uh. No, I am. Or... <laughs> yeah. Well, that's one of the things about um Twitch here. It is genuinely a software that's like um this is um random. So theoretically, the same person could win every time, and they just yeah. yeah you, won. Um, there there's one Ted option of us, to yeah. kick out a person after they've won, but I've left that. Oh, don't do that. Off. Keep it random. No, nope, I keep it 100 okay. random. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't use any of the filters. And you've never won, even though you're in there, right? You've we've never actually had this. A time. This time I did not join because oh, you didn't um, join okay. because now Moobot tells people. Oh yeah, it changed ex in it. Exclamation raffle. Okay, but it's still exclamation raffle, right? Yeah. Okay. But Moobot says that. Okay. Well, get on Moobot. All right. Yay, kitten saw it, and she'll email oh, us, and everyone will be happy. Yay. All right. So I'm going to... Okay. You know what, love? Yeah, this up. My slipper lobster? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now I've kind of outlined the little doll there. I'm kind of going over the areas of her hair that I want to be in metal the black metal as opposed to the black enamel if you look at the um pin again i keep uh, it's probably because she's a beauty girl but if you look at her i mean i don't know how well it shows up but you can see parts of it are kind of raised like it, it's three-dimensional if you had your eyes closed you could feel oh that part of her hair is darker than the other part because part of yeah, it's metal and parts enamel so i'm kind of outlining the areas of her hair i want to be black metal and which parts i want to be black hair and which parts i want to have purple hair yeah Sassy Wench said, I ended up buying a Miss Mindy Tinkerbell oh, from Disney Wonderground due to a nice. post uh, from Facebook. Oh, good. Thanks to Jasmine uh, recommending her art. Yay. You're welcome, Miss Mindy. Oh, wait. I didn't show you the one that she made. Oh, oh the little son? Yes. It's a cutie. I actually have quite a few of Miss Mindy's pieces. Like yeah, and all of her. I know. It, it, I think a lot of artists paint them. It's like how... Singers write songs about themselves, or she's artists. A, she's a, uh, this is an original sculpture. This is an and original she paints, paints sculpture. She paints these and sculpts them, and she does a lot of things too for Disney. So if you've seen, this is in a little original sculpture that she got. And you know where I got this? I won one of her raffles on her Patreon. So if you search Miss Mindy on Patreon, she made this out of clay and etc. and painted it. Oh, Wendy Tinkerbell has Yay. one of those. For for Miss Mindy. Yeah, she's done quite a few of these. This is one of the handmade ones that she did for her Patreon. So, she's a busy person. much like me, when you have a Patreon thing, you or or Twitch or both, um, you give things away, and those are the people that are really going to appreciate them when you paint them. So, I've got one of hers hanging on my wall here. But she is super sweet. We've been out to dinner with her a couple times too. She's very fun to hang out with. Yeah, she lives out in Pasadena in California, so she's on the other coast, but she is over here in Florida sometimes. 
And her husband is very talented also. Yes. He does very neat, like, three-dimensional stuff. They're cool people. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, when I'm looking at her hair, I am thinking I need to have very, very black, black lines where I want the metal to be. Then I want to have at least two different colors. One for the black hair, not the lines that are making her hair, but the actual filling in of her hair. And then, like, like the black bits here, maybe almost like a dark blue, maybe a Payne's gray mixed with raw umber or Van Dyke brown. And then the other thing is going to be the purple violet streaks in there. The thing about designing a pin, since it is a physical, like, shape, you're going to smash out, like, you're, you're um, rolling it out and it's got a shape to it, like a stained glass window, you want to have the black lines, you have to make sure that any areas where that color stops being that color has a line around it. Otherwise, if you were to pour the enamel in there, since it's soft enamel, let's say that part of her hair was purple, that was black, and that was orangey-yellow, you would want to make sure there was a black line there because that's the part of the metal that stops it from blurring together. You wouldn't want that yellow to blend in with the purple or turn kind of murky brown and look all smudgy and you wouldn't want the brown to turn into purple or you wouldn't tell it was purple. It just kind of looked gray. So when I'm doing this, I'm thinking about not this as a painting necessarily, but these as ambiguous but very defined shapes. Like this little part here, this little oval, is a black metal line that's going to have an orangey yellow enamel poured into it. So with hair, hair is usually very organic looking and oh, very kind of off the cuff. You think, oh, hair is going all over, it's curly, it's blending in with the background. But with something like a pin design, you want to make sure it's like, no, it's a C shape that has another little S down here with a bit of a curl down here. And you have to make sure there was a black line around it. Otherwise, when you pour the enamel, it's not going to bleed into everything. It's like tie dyeing kind of, but it has lines around it. And that's where I think it starts getting confusing and where it's, you can't expect everybody to be able to, depending on what sort of artwork you do, you can't always expect people to be able to do something like a stained glass window or a an enamel pin. One of the hardest um, enamel pins I've done was, um, oh, Alice in a Starry Night, the Van Gogh yeah, one I did, because Van Gogh had a very slapdash sort of impressionist obvious with different shapes of blue and yellow, white, etc. next to each other, but you had to have a black line around it, which makes it really hard. What's that look? Uh, have you ever thought about doing a Zodiac series for fairies? I have, and I have. Yeah. Um, I, let me think, what did I do? when did I do my Zodiac series? Yeah, very early in your career. Golly, I, it I was don't probably... Think we, it's something that's, I think, we're like all sold out of those. They have paper prints of them. Oh, wait, do we not do anymore? This would have so. been about 20 years ago, so yeah. probably, depending who you are, it might have been before you were born. But if you search Jasmine Beckett Griffith and Zodiac, you'll see them I'm all. I'm sure that something would pop and up. And then I also did a series when I was in school still, too, so that would have been like... 25 or 30 years ago. Oh my god, I'm old. But um, yeah, I've, I've, I've done it a couple times and I probably will again. I We've talked about doing that with the pins, but the problem with the pins is um, people who buy pins usually will just want the one for their zodiac or maybe for their, their symbol or maybe their kids or their partner or something like that. It is not... One, it's kind of like you limit yourself as far as pins go to whomever was born. So it's like you're cutting out 11 out of 12 people automatically because they are not a Aries, you know. They they just want the Aries Jasmine, of their Aries. Yeah. Raza says war as a pin would be good for Veterans Day, but I'm thinking that might be kind of... That, that would be is that hard, ironic um, or is that well no 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 i i know that would be a great anything for veterans day in fact i think i posted on veterans day a year before okay. last time i was in england because i mean but I, if you're talking i don't think she'd work it as a pin because if you think about the draw anytime you see a color change even a little bit if you have to put a metal line around it it would kind of look like a fishnet stockings with no color in it it, it would look like a big mess it would be it wouldn't look very obvious what would be better is to maybe take that character and maybe have the poppies on her or make you know my poppy fairy or i already did one in poppy magic but poppy fairy 
Because uh, like the poppy appeal that we do in England when you're there and you give people a pound and you get a little poppy and you put it on the front of your shirt or whatever. They, their um, Remembrance Day thing is around the same time as Memorial Day. That would be really good for that. But um, I think that painting would be a hard one to make a pin of because there's a billion different color shifts and different things happening and that would just be a mess yeah, as far as the pin goes. But, but something with a poppy it would be a really good one for Memorial Day, I think. I might do that in November. Yeah. Have you ever thought of doing male fairies? Like painting them? I or just asking about what I think <laughs> about at night. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. It's late. Um, it's not that late. Um I, I um, have painted a lot of characters here on males. Usually I, I tend to paint female figurative work because probably because I'm a girl and a lot of artists tend to paint themselves. But um I do a lot of portraits when people say, hey, I want you to paint my nephew and my grandson, and I, I will totally do that. But when I'm just coming up with things myself, I tend to try to make a narrative in the painting about somebody I can identify with. And since I identify with being female, I kind of project that on my paintings. My, but I my, definitely do point, I definitely have done lots of paintings and portraits of My opinion about that, yeah. I think, oh, is uh -huh. uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Oh, people try to. Did you come up for that? No, no, not at all. I'm but joking. What I think yeah. sometimes, in for example, I think we talked about last time when somebody was asking if I would paint their great grandfather as a strangeling fairy. I'm like, well, what, right, what, exactly. what, 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 are you sure you just don't want a nice right. painting of them that what, they don't have big eyes and fit wings on them? What it you is know. in a way is a compliment. I, They're yeah. saying they love. Oh no, art. like it's a whole world, well, and those are the characters that are there. No, I think Jasmine yeah. would not be a good match for that. No, don't try to turn uh, your. Yeah. This artist into the other artists. There's, there's there are a lot of artists. Would actually, do a if, job if somebody was interested in something like that, I could probably think of a handful of artist friends I have that do something kind of similar, but are probably better at making things that look more masculine or that um, are better at looking like specific people instead of me doing my whole sort of generalized. But I can do realistic paintings, but if I do portraits that look like you can send me a photo and I can totally paint your photo, but you could get a lot of people to do that. Oh, so them. Shaylee says if it's not Baroque, don't fix it. Oh, that's it. Okay, I like that one, Shaylee. That's good. I'm going to put that on my FAQ. But I said ain't. Ah. Uh, well, you're American. And she's they say ain't all the they time. They say ain't all the Come time. On. I've heard them. I don't, yeah. mean, I don't know. Some yeah. of the worst grammar I've ever heard has been in England. Pardon? Some of the worst grammar I've ever heard is. I couldn't even hear what you said the first time, so I don't know how to respond <laughs> to that. That's just me so, slurring. Yeah, okay, there you go. In it. In it. In it. Is it not? Is it not? No, in it. Every your mom was making me say, is it not? Because I kept saying in it too much when we were going to the Harry Potter thing. But, yeah. Mom loves in it, actually. She's I know. How much I, she know loves I know. When people say in it. We're a bunch of Anglophiles, aren't we? Them glasses is crap, isn't it? <laughs> Stop your cursing, man. This is supposed to be family friendly. This crap? That's not bad. I would have gotten in trouble at school if I said that. Oh, that be that's because your school was full of... My school was shite. No, <laughs> hey, that's way worse. Uh, but yes, we like in it. Anyways, and then... Jasmine fine. will come back from the UK and she'll be saying in it. Uh, yeah, you know services. what's confusing is when I come back from England and I come back to like... Georgia or somewhere in the southern part of the U.S. So I've got to slip into my southern American lady thing and then it turns into a horrible transatlantic accent that sounds unpleasant on everybody and I, I feel like I should apologize ahead of time. I don't talk to enough humans to fixate on an assertive accent, I don't think. Well, her arm is in a good place. I've kind of, like I said, I moved her arm, her, her left arm. Um, looking at her, it'd be our right arm. Um, and I've kind of put her fingers like sort of under the arm of the booty doll there. So her arm is going to, her shoulder is going to be there. And her other arm is going to be down there and she's going to have the pin. I think that looks pretty good. If I change my mind, I do. But I think that's going to be the outside, out, outside shape of the fairy there. Yeah. Can you say goodnight to the lovely Layla? Oh, goodnight, Layla. Sleep well. Hope it's not so rainy there, but I bet it is. It's very rainy <laughs> here in Florida. In it. In it. It's, it's so rainy in it. Now, this is a good time when I'm looking at her hair that I have to think about 
you'd think, oh, it's all kind of black with purple highlights. But I have to think about individual metal raised rooms almost that are like black metal walls that are going to have different enamels poured into them. So I have to think, oh, what part's going to be purple? What part's going to be black? And do I want two types of purple or do I want one part of black on there? And when I get artsy and I'm like, oh, no, I want like three types of purple in there. All of a sudden, when I order the pins, if I get like a thousand pins and each one's like eight bucks, I'm like, oh, that was eight thousand dollars because I wanted three extra colors. So that, this is when it gets weird from an artist's point of view to just make those decisions. So I tried to do my best to make it look um, realistic and kind of give a sense of color and theme to it without going broke in the meantime <laughs> especially when it's ones that i give out for free <laughs> uh, I, yeah I, that's kind of weird because it's like oh, okay i'm gonna do this pin and i'm gonna give it away for free so i'm just gonna spend ten thousand dollars and hand these out which is awesome and that means a lot of people will come buy stuff so it might theoretically pay for it but if it doesn't then i feel silly for picking like 10 times too many colors than I should have done. So I try to find a delicate balance. It's always a question of balance. Everything is very moody blues, isn't it? And I'm going to keep that little area there that has the little ivory. Because I want that. Somebody mentioned earlier when I, was, I had to only just kind of sketch in her wings. How she's got like a little, not a tooth. It's like a little horn that's on the top of her wing there. That little kind of ivory pokey thing. So I want to make sure I have that, because I don't want her to look too much like the Voodoo and Blue pen, which is the one that I was showing earlier. Jasmine. Yeah. Do you make the postcard size prints out of all your work? Um, I, it depends on the painting. Um, the po actual postcards, like you send in the mail, like the Disney ones, like these sorts of ones, these Literal ones postcards. are, yeah, these are actual postcards, like you put a stamp on. Those one, these ones here are made by Disney. I, I have, I just do the painting. Disney prints postcards. I sell the postcards. I, I don't do anything except do the original painting. They scan it and then send it to everybody and do the merchandising. But we do do um, prints that are almost a size. What are they? Four by six. The ones that we do for like MegaCon at live events. Um, we bring them to England. Um, what are those? Four by six. Three by five, or no, what are they? Four by six? They're four by six. Four by five six. by seven. So they are slightly, slightly smaller in this. And we do that with a lot of them, but we only do them for live events because we have to rent a special printer to make those. They, we can't make the four by six ones on our own printers. And the Disney ones, only Disney can make those. I can't touch those. But with my own artwork, I can do that with most of them. Things I can do with them are ones that are square because you can't take a square painting and just turn it into a rectangle unless somebody's like missing an eye. <laughs> you gotta crop it down or you could, I can't, I, I'm not a digital artist so I can't suddenly imagine a bunch of mountains and you know butterflies behind them. I can't really throw things like that in there. So if it was a square painting you've either got to cut it in half almost or just kind of slur it up to the top. But a lot of them we can do. If you're talking about, if you're coming to a live event, we can do that. But we can't just do that on the website. Otherwise, that would be all of my day and I wouldn't get any time painting. And that's mostly what I do is paint. But a lot of them you can find that way. Also, too, if you guys don't know about um, Zazzle, they do postcards. Uh, my brother-in-law, Chris, um, he does the... Um, the cropping and the graphic design for a lot, of, <clears throat> a lot of my paintings and puts them up on Zazzle and they do postcards up there and they are super cheap. How much are they love? They're like, oh gosh, I don't know. <clears throat> uh, Sometimes they have like sales where they're like 70% off. I mean, they're less than $5, maybe $3, maybe a dollar. They're really cheap. Zazzle.com backslash um, strangely and backslash postcards or just Search Strangeling postcards. You will find, you won't, might not find all of them, but you'll probably find around a thousand different designs at any given time. That's usually what I try to keep live as far as um, my characters. Jasmine. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever thought about putting your most popular prints onto fabric? I just started oh. quilting and thought that would be cool. I'm you gonna know, use the restroom while you answer okay. that. Okay. Yeah, there was a company. It was a, golly, maybe 10, 15 years ago that did my fabric as quilting squares. They might still be up there, like on Etsy or somewhere. 
But um, I have definitely licensed them for that. And we tried to, we thought about doing some with Spoonflyer, but we couldn't find a way that people would be able to afford it because they, they just charge too much money for, I, I, I would lose a dollar every time somebody bought one and that just kind of depressing. <laughs> But um, we, we've thought about maybe picking some more and maybe trying to mass market those. But I haven't had a licensing company interested in it yet. But if you know anybody, tell my name. But um, yeah, if you search Jasmine Beckett Griffith quilting squares, you might find some of them at least. Because there have been places in the past that have made them over the past 25 years or so. But those, that that is a fun thing to do. I used to um, quilt quite a bit. <laughs> I used to when I was a um, when I was not a teenager yet, but when I was like in sixth grade, seventh grade, I used to do a lot of sewing. My first eBay store I ever did actually it was called Strangeling the Vault, different than Strangeling my art stuff, and it was me like um, doing quilting and um, refurbishing old clothing back before. I used to like. I bought like every dress made by Denny Sachs and I like would dye them and goth them up and sell them and this was me like in the middle part of high school and I was like hey why don't I put my artwork up there and my artwork started really taking off and I was like oh I'm gonna do this instead it's less messy than dyeing clothing and trying to sew stuff so. so you might still see things online that say hey check out Strangeline's Vault but that, that is not me anymore I, I just pretty much that. paint yeah you remember I used to make you go to every flea market in town and buy all those old 60s, um, oh, Jessica McClintock dresses and getting sex dresses and stuff. Cool. Yeah, it was it was kind of fun. It was, a path. it was a different path. And then I tried to do both for a while, and then it was like, you know what, I'm making, it's a lot more fun for me, and I'm making more money doing my artwork, and then I kind of went away from clothing and fabric design to just doing artwork, so. Which is probably better in the end. What's that look? Just little. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was a kid. I mean, I was literally a kid. I was, a, I mean, I, I was a teenager. Yeah, right. yeah. I, I started that one, actually, before I started my regular Strangeling ID on eBay. So, I, yeah. Oh, I, I, before I met you, then. It was. It was when Amber, <laughs> Amber first signed up on eBay, because she was buying stuff up there, and she sent me a, hey, if you like eBay, tell one of your friends, and she got, like, a referral. <laughs> But it was for Strangely Involved. It wasn't for Strangely. Otherwise, that would probably add up to money. They still did that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because she'd be getting her, not Ponzi scheme, uh, pyramid scheme after getting a referral on something. And that could have probably added up to a lot. Because I still use Strangely as my um, eBay ID. I'm using some of that black to go over her eyelashes now. So I are like how they look. Pinstriping brushes? What are they? Pinstriping brushes. Like for cars and things? Well, I think I think that's what they're referring oh. to. Oh, you know I have not, but I have had people who have done that with their cars, like kind of lowrider, kind of really elaborate, fancy art cars, and have sent me pictures of that with my characters and artwork on them, and that looks pretty awesome. But I, I myself have not really done that. There's um, what's the name of that magazine that I'm in sometimes, Maddie? The lowbrow pinstripe whatever magazine. They had a strangling issue of it. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. It was like three years ago. But, but yeah, know. people definitely have done that with my artwork, but I haven't. I, I pretty much just paint on paintings <laughs> and do stuff like this. It's Again, it's like, hey, I, we need a pen design. I, I start off the same way. I'm very old-fashioned. I'm like, oh, well, let me get a piece of wood. I'll paint your pen for you. As opposed to, like, there's probably an easier way to do this, like, on an iPad or something. I probably sound very old-fashioned now. But I'm going to keep this part black here. So when this is a pen, I'll try up here. If you look at the under part of where her hair is here, that's going to be dyed black iron alloy metal, like through there. And that will be there too, and so will be her eyelashes. So when I do have different colored enamel that I put in the stripes of her hair, like kind of like my hair, I'll make, have some dark blue and then I'll put some colors in it and have some stripes in there. That will be different because if you, were to, if you were to close your eyes and feel her, you would feel that part was a raised metal bit. You could feel the, the like the part in her hair, if I were to touch that, that would feel like that was kind of raised metal. And I would be able to feel her wings and maybe tell her hands are there and the little doll. But yeah, so far so good. 
Yeah. What's the background gonna look like? Um, can you uh, can you bring over the um other ones I did a couple yeah, years too. ago that we have up on eBay now? Speaking of eBay and strange lane, the 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 strange thing I did on eBay now has only been around since 1999. Only only 1999. But let me see. I kind of usually choose. It depends on the colors of the painting that or the pen design. I kind of choose kind of a neutral blue grayish green. It actually kind of looks a lot like the walls of my studio, but a bit of a cooler tone. So these are the ones up on eBay now that we're giving away with the pins. Do we have the pins around here? I could show people yeah. how they, in case anybody's just joining us, it's been like an hour or two. The dinosaur magazine here. Thank you for moving my dinosaur magazines and all my human remains and everything. Okay. So this is an example. This is the painting I did for Allison Clockwork. And this is what the painting looked like, like I'm working on now. So I'll probably pick, pick that plain solid gray. I think I've done some solid black ones. It depends on how the color is looking. But this one, and here's the pen. So you can see how the pen is very three-dimensional. If I were to close my eyes, I could tell you what pen that is because I can feel the outside of it. I see the little pokey. That's like from the, the minute hand from the clock that's up there. And I could feel, oh, that's her holding her skirt up there and there's her face and there's all the cogs and gears. But you can see how I take a painting like this, and I scan it in and take the black outlines as opposed to the dark brown. And that's where it gets weird, is if I, I scan it in, I send it to the factory, and they do it in Photoshop or whatever, and they pick out the very darkest bits. And those are the parts that are the raised area of the print. Or the pen, rather. And you can see, oh, that's actually three-dimensional a little bit. And then they pour the however many colors of the enamel in there. And it's kind of cool because I always keep these. I've got a stack of these. I've, I've got one of these for every painting I've, or every pen I've done. I've got probably, I don't know how many pens I've done. Jasmine? 50, 100. Yeah, they're mostly in England because they usually do them there. Yeah. Can you send your love to Luke? Love to Luke. It's it's Luke Luke. My nephew Luke? Yeah. Oh, we were just talking about you, Luke, honey. <laughs> we were talking about um different movies we've seen. <laughs> And how we take you and Lexi out to see movies and see um, go to confusing restaurants. Um, and this one here, I've kind of got the same oh, one. Okay. Oh, there we go. She's the one I did for Dragon Con. She was a free pin that we gave away at Dragon Con. No, I, I don't. This might look like a horrible blur, but, but yeah. So if you look at her up close, you see there's kind of a, a hard outline, very much like a. It's probably my Disney background, but it's a, very much like an animation style where you see. It looks like a cartoon. You see black lines on stuff. And then you're like, oh, and that little ball there is bright yellow. And if you look at the pin, you're like, oh, that's bright yellow there. And there's her little dragon. And her eyes are purple, but they're white there. So you think of the painting I'm doing now and think of it being shrunk down. It's not even a... You think it's one-tenth, but it's not because it's both directions. It's like 1% the size of this. So if you think of her being that little... So these tiny little black lines that you would see like on her wings, hers are meant to look more like a bee wing or like a dragonfly wing kind of. Those will be the tiny little lines that you see like in her hair. Those will be the little black bits that are actually metal and then we'll pour enamel into those. So Jasmine. that's what I'm working on now. Yeah. A lot of chat in the room. They really, really want to see you get to the purple tones. Okay. I'll, I'll do that next. It doesn't matter what order yeah, I go in. Oh, sure, yeah. Um, yeah, it's 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 very different working on this sort of production art as opposed to working on a new, like, fine art painting when it's production like this. I just know it's going to be solid color, solid color, solid color. And if we look at, again, this is not a good printout. <laughs> it's on our horrible, crappy paper in our printer. But if you look at the violet in there, you can see that the purple that is in her hair, the purple that's in her wings, the purple that's on the... The yarn that's kind of making up the little um, voodoo doll here. That's going to be more or less the same purple. So I'm, since you guys are asking, going to look at that purple. And I'm going to look at my Pantone colors here. And these are my choices for enamel. And they're pretty much going to be the middle two ones here. When I do decide, when I, when I do scan it in, I can kind of look at it. And I can hold it right next to the different... I might hold this over. If I can kind of put it next to it, that kind of makes it helpful without a white border Luke on it. Luke was just listening to Book of Mormon. Huh. Uh, 
I told him that we were listening. I was listening to it with Grandma Kathy. Yeah. Day. Kathy's my mom. Yeah. We we took her. Uh, she some of you guys in um London or in um Glastonbury she have met may Kathy. Have met yeah, her. you might have met um, her before. That's Matt's mom. Yeah. So I'm kind of looking at the choices of enamel I have, comparing it to the purple that's in her hair, and I'm kind of looking at this level here. It's not super dark. It's not. It's pretty highly saturated as far as chroma goes, but it's not very muted. So I'm going to pick something that, if anything, I'd rather overestimate it than underestimate as far as the saturation because it is going to be shrunk down very small. When you have something really big and you shrink it down really small, you would rather have it higher contrast, uh, more saturation, because it will show up better when it's little. If you had something that was all different shades of gray and you shrunk it down, you would look like a little gray blob. So if you are kind of over-exaggerated at it when it's a bigger level of the painting, then it will look more dynamic and higher contrast when you have it as a small thing like a little pin. So if I'm going to go with purple. I'm using my Quinacridone Magenta, which is a very red, side of purple. I'm going to put it kind of in the middle of where the um, the gesso I was using. So if I do mix it with anything, it will be the same color I used on the flesh tones, which is basically the color that I mixed in the gesso when I was working that earlier. I've got the um, diocesine purple. That's always a good one. This is a very, very high pigment as far as the um, golden fluid acrylics go. That's so a the, very high pigment. the people pigment in the room are there. listening up about uh, mixing purple right now. Oh, yeah. They're okay. excited. <laughs> Awesome, yeah. Again, I'm going to probably over-exaggerate it more than I would do in the actual painting itself. For example, in that painting, this is a pronoun, and this is about one-to-one, -one, because it wasn't a, or that's not even eight by ten, it was smaller, wasn't it? Wasn't it like a five by seven? This is enlarged here. Is it a five by seven or a four by six? Four by six, yeah. Uh, what's that then? Voodoo and uh, Violet? Oh, that was, that was little. It was a four by six. This is two or three times as big as the original I was. I yeah. got a tiny molding for that one. Yeah, no, uh, no, it was in a, um, no, it was one of those Craig frames that were like black. Oh. Like the one that's uh, Uncle Charlie's painting over there, or that sort of frame, and it was okay. a four by six. So, that, this sort of um, purple, when it's the painting, again, this is very enlarged. Um, if you look at it, it's kind of pink, violet, etc., and then it turns more purple and then turns to black. I can't do that in something like this. I have to keep it the same color because it's actually all one color. It's going to be poured with the soft enamel machine, or actually that part's done by hand with a little eyedropper. Jasmine. So I'm going to start mixing up a purple that looks like that, but even more exaggerated. So when it's very small, it stands out. Yeah. Do you remember when we were in the desert with Uncle Charlie? I do. And he started dancing. He started dancing. And he found that bird. Found that oh, bird. My oh my God. God. That was like the best we time We should ever. make a movie of that. Oh, and, Sorry, and, and then he shaved his head. I, he always that does. That was so weird. Yeah. Mm. That was so weird. So I'm going to take that, that quinacridone magenta and mix it with doxazine purple. And I'm doing it on top again. This is the color that I mixed in with the background when I was um, doing the gesso. So you see this boring gray color. That's what is the closest to the warm gray number one, which is a, a, a one of the Pantone um, colors that you can do. It, it kind of looks like a flesh tone if you're very kind of like me. You're, you don't see the sun a lot and you're kind of mostly European mutt and you're just kind of white looking and kind of gray at the same time. So I'm taking Are you some... describing us? Pardon? Are you describing us? I I was saying that it kind of looks like my awful oh. skin tone, but yeah. I like your skin. Eh, eh. I don't see the sun very often, despite living in the sunshine state, but which makes Speaking me of think sunshine. of sunshine. No. Okay. But anyways, I've got it. I'm making the purple. I'm taking some of the quinacridone magenta and some of the doxazine purple, and I'm mixing a little bit of the gesso mix I had earlier. This does not have gesso in it. This only has the color I mixed in with the gesso when I was priming this piece of wood. But I'm taking a bit of the same gold color, and that might sound weird because it's yellow. I'm mixing that with the color that um, is from the voodoo doll. So we will have a little bit of that as a base. Are you really bringing sunshine over here? I have a kitty. Hey. Uh, Do you need a kiss? Um, uh, not, oh, from sunshine's fine. It's not gamer. It's not gamer. Okay. It's sunshine. Oh, I don't see very good. From far away, they look very similar. Oh, okay. Here's my dying. Oh, my little dying. My tiny kitty. Oh, I say she's a kitten, but she's kind of getting up there in years. But you only weigh like four pounds, don't you? You're a 
she's the jasmine of Kitty. No, she's the willow of Kitty. My baby. Oh, she's gonna fall asleep. And she's gonna fall asleep. Aww, oh, baby. Was sleeping, oh, sleeping. was she sleeping when you picked her up? Yeah. She feels a little bit out of it. <laughs> she's looking at you. It's like, what? Who am I? Where are you? <laughs> Who are these? What are cutie. these lights? Here, go. Okay, you go up there, honey. Yeah. She does like, actually when we're, we don't have all these lights out for um, Twitch, um, she does like to she sit has, up there quite a lot. She has certain spots that she loves. She loves yeah, to sit in the chair them. that I'm sitting in. She loves her little bed. She loves sitting she in the chair sitting, I'm sitting in. She loves, yeah. She's the one who yeah. destroyed that chair. The yeah, if you Jasmine see this chair when I'm gone and you're like, how mocked. come there isn't any fake leather on this handle? And it's like, oh, that's because Sun Chang ate that. Yep. And you this know what? She's nice brought things. it from this chair upstairs to my bed and like leaves it on my pillow. And I'm like, ew, that, why did you do that? She that is a weird gross. kitty. Ugh. Anyways, I'm, I'm going to try this out here. Starting with the middle bit. If you look at her here, she's got kind of like a tiny bit of a, a stray hair that's kind of... Again, I was painting themselves like kind of going through the middle of her forehead there. So I'm going to put some of the purple right there. And I'm going to do that too on some of the alternating strands. And I'll see how this looks. If I think it's too red, I can go over it later. If I think it's too purple or too blue, I can change that later too. But I want to keep it more or less the same color. And I want to use that for the, the fingery bits of her wings, like we're talking about dark the dark purple maybe, and we might use that dark purple on her lipstick. But the, the more bony part, like if, if it was a bat and those were his disjointed fingers turning into bat wings, those would be the lighter purple. So I'll probably use those there. And also on the little, um, the threading, like the embroidery on the little, the little doll fella that she's holding, I'm going to kind of use that same purple. I'm coming back, sunshine? Really? Let's see if I can scoot this closer so you guys can see what I'm doing. I thought this might be fun too because then people will um, see this. If they get the pen, they'll, they'll kind of know how these, uh, how the color decisions are made and how the um, pen designs come apart and why, why they are the way they are, etc. Sunshine, are you sharpening your claws? Don't do that on my art desk. Thank you, ma'am. And this, more than anything else, is kind of like a coloring book in a way. I already have my outlines. I know for sure that's what he's going to look like. I don't know. That might look a little bit more... It's hard to tell. If you were to look at this one, I think the painting is a bit more blue than red as far as the magenta goes, but... I can always change that by putting a wash that has a more blue, like more of the daxazine purple instead of the acronacridone magenta on it. So I might do that afterwards, but I have to make sure I keep it all pretty solid. And then after it gets scanned in and the factory creates mold in the outline, that's when I usually say, Hey, Patreon, hey, pin group, this is what the new pin design is going to look like. So it looks, once I get it finished, it will look way less messy, and I'll refine the outsides, and I'll put some sort it. of background. And and that, that's why it's kind of cool to, um, for people who collect these. the purple? Yeah, mm -hmm. the purple's looking good. I'm like, gonna, um, that's why it's kind of fun to see um, the actual painting that goes in it, because I think a lot of people just kind of do it on the computer or just sell a company how to make it but i i'm again i'm very old-fashioned i like to show how it actually works and that actual painting turns into physical products and We're that makes them very viewers. special oh wow well, we've been around there the whole time oh that's great like, thank you everybody yeah, I, I didn't update yet yeah i, I usually I, do that's yeah okay. um i'm here i even if nobody was there i would still be working on this so but thank you guys yeah that sounds sarcastic i don't mean it to i did Either way, I'd be working here. Yeah, I kind of overdid... There's a... I don't know if you can tell. I kind of went over one of her fingers a bit. But that is why I've kept that same sort of warm gray number one color. That in, I've got it on a sponge. It's on a piece of paper on a sponge. I don't know if you can tell that. I'm, I'm not just using plastic plate. There's a sponge. There's a piece of paper. So I can water on top of it. And that way, if I make a mistake, I can just cover up on top of it. So I am not worried about going over the boundaries here. 
Wow, it's still raining outside, isn't it, Manny? It's been ra raining all day. Yeah. I'm glad it didn't rain at Epcot yesterday. It was chilly, but it wasn't rainy. We'll be back at Epcot on How um, long is the turnaround? Saturday. Oh, go ahead, sweet. Oh, I was just saying we'll be back at Epcot on Saturday, but at the other tent. We'll be at the Pop Gallery tent this Pop. coming Saturday. How long is the turnaround time for the pin when finished? Well, it that, that's a, that, it depends. It depends how many changes I need to make in it and how much time I spend in the design. For example, I, I, I will work on a lot of this tonight, but sometimes I will look at it and I'll look at the original and I'm like, oh, that's too purple. Or sometimes I'll send it to the factory and they're like, well... We did, and they'll send me about. They'll send me a sample of how it looked. I'm like, oh, that looks good, but that 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 yellow looks way too orange. Because I I will always try to use the Pantone colors, but I'm limited to what my monitor on my computer or my phone or my um, printout looks like. So if I'm like, oh my god, that is way too green. I I don't want to give that to people. We will change it, and then we'll redo it. But usually, it let's say a about a month which is why i'm planning now for um march because I'm, I'm hoping to make her the march pin of the month and i tried to be a month or so ahead so i'm never like oh my god something happened the pin because one time like the pins like disappeared and they never made it here and we had to order them again so i always like to give about a month in advance to make sure But it, it does take a while. And then if you were to think about it, um, if, if it's a character I'm making up that's only a pin, because there are some People are loving, signs. loving the purple and red. Yay! But there, there are some pin signs I've done that weren't paintings to begin with. Like this one, again, she's based off of a character I've already painted. So that makes it a bit easier when I'm painting her. But when it's one I'm only doing as a pin, it's... Like, I had to come up with the character, the painting, the sketch, the um, color palette, all the, all the stuff ahead of time. So that starts turning into, like, a month into, like, three months, and it gets a bit crazy. And But I, that's part of the fun thing when I was um, doing the Patreon poll where y'all got to vote on these. It's, um, I picked paintings I had already done, so it's like, oh, okay, I already know what she kind of looks like. So this won't take me a whole lot of time, and I'll know which one you like the most. And you guys have very good taste as far as pins go. I'm not just saying that because you're you. You really do. Otherwise, I wouldn't ask you. So I'm going to put some purple over here on this part of her hair. I thought this would be kind of a fun um, twitch to show what, what I'm working on when I'm not working on, like, paintings for galleries. Yeah, this I'm, is good. Yeah, it's, um, it shows you a little bit of how the merchandise works and the work that goes into that. It's like suddenly it doesn't, you just, don't just like push a button and say, hey, turn this painting into a pen. It's like, no, Jasmine has to sit here for three days and make this thing <laughs> on a piece of wood from Home Depot. <laughs> But yeah, the color, I'm really digging the color palette on her. I think uh, part of it could be, we were talking earlier about complementary colors, about having yellow-orange versus a blue slash purple. That's very much um, complementary. So that's, awesome. even when it's shrunk down, again, she'll be, if that was like 8 by 10, she's going to be a 1.5 by 1 or 1.75 by 1.25. She will still look pretty sharp when she's very small. Were you saying something else? Uh, Karen says art. They a new set of acrylic paints. Um, these are the same paints I always use. I am um, these are golden flood acrylics. But when I when I do um, a plate like this, these are just plastic plates from the grocery store. But I have the same um, little. It looks messy, but that's a sponge, like a yellow sponge. I've cut out in a circle and I soak it in water. And then I have something called palette paper. I get the Masterson's ones that you can get on Amazon. And it's basically like white paper. You cut it in a circle and you soak it in water for 20 minutes. And then you put your paints on top of it. And you can do it with tempera, acrylics, watercolors, anything that uses water instead of paint thinner. It doesn't help you blend because once you take it off the palette, it dries as fast as it always does. But it keeps your palette pretty wet. So I don't have to pour... If I put purple paint on it now, I can use that purple paint tomorrow. It's not going to help me layer it or blend it on once it gets out off of the palette, but it makes me not waste so much. Because some of these paints I've had here for 
Yeah, it kind of um, has the dates on this, but I've probably had this paint for four or five years, the same tube of paint. I don't use a whole lot of paint. That's so why my paintings look very smooth. I use a little bit, just mixed with water. It's enough to kind of, oh, kind of make a, a, a very thin glaze, like a, a sheer layer on top of something. I'm using it more opaquely than I usually would because I'm trying to emulate the idea of what it would look Jasmine. like when it's enamel. Yeah. How do you feel about living in Orlando? Like, other than Celebration, what other areas are good? I don't really travel a lot. I, I A lot of the reason I like it here in um, Florida in general is I, I like the nature that lives here a lot. I'm really into bird watching and other. we have a lot of interesting birds. Um, I like the weather here because it, I mean, we'll complain and complain, but it, you know, it was cold yesterday, but it was still 62 degrees and it was January. So I, I don't know enough about, I don't leave my studio a lot, but there are a lot of very nice areas around here. And I do so much stuff with Disney. It's kind of hard not to have a, at least some sort of pied de terre here <laughs> because I, if I do, Golly, I think I'm doing like eight shows in four weeks here that are at Disney World. So it, it makes sense for me to have a house here. And it's, um, a lot of people are here on vacation. So people are usually in a good mood and that's always nice. So it's kind of a good place if you're uh, an artist or somebody who is doing things like festivals and art shows and stuff. Because you can see different people every day. Jasmine. Yeah. Can you show off the uh, hard nails pin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Raffle? Is that the last raffle? Okay. It is. When is that happening? About 15 minutes. Okay. Let me see. Here she is. Heart of Nails. You know, and this is kind of funny because I didn't really think about it. But she, she's got the little heart that's got um the same sort of pins that my voodoo girls have. But it's in the heart. It, it does look more like a nail than a pin. But it might. I don't know how well you can see it on the camera. But she her wings are very three-dimensional. That's what I'm talking about, having super black, black lines as opposed to kind of a more muted black. Because if you look at her wings, there's a whole bunch of detail in it. Whereas if you were to see it flat, you think, oh, she has black wings. But if you look at it, if you close your eyes, you can feel every single feather in there. And that's because the mold that I designed, and when I have the dark, dark black lines on things, that is the raised part. And that's when the soft enamel comes in. And you pour that in between every single little piece of feather in there, that's the enamel is poured in there. Or again, if you look at the heart, she's got little red ones in there, her little tights. If you look at it from the front, it looks very flat, but it, from the side, you can see it's actually almost like a tiny piece of sculpture. Cool. Yeah, I love her. And she'll, she will be the, Jan uh, the February pit of the month. Theoretically, it's kind of around Valentine's Day. It's not supposed to be there for Valentine's Day, but you know, she's got a heart, so... Yes, it's Take that very that romantic. Yeah, very romantic. Now, every year it seems like I do some sort of Valentine's Day thing, and usually I, I usually do like a happy one and a grumpy one, but this year I'm doing the Epcot thing, so I'm like, eh, you guys get a grumpy heart pin. Why not? So I'm going to take that same sort of purple I've been putting on the, um, in the streaks in her hair and also using on the thread or the yarn that's on her booty doll, and I'm going to use that on the, the bony part of her wings. And depending on how much time we have here, I'll make a darker purple. And that's probably what I'll put on her lip. Somebody suggested that, and I think that would look really good. And I will use that same dark purple to kind of be on the leathery part in between the bony parts of her wing hands there. She's going to be a good pen. And I'll, we'll definitely let you guys know. And this will be one that you can buy just off the website too, but... As always, I always recommend Patreon because that way you won't miss out on one. I have so many people who email me and they're like, you said you're going to have this pin, but you only had it for like one day and now it's gone. I'm like, yeah, now it is. If you'd been Patreon, you could have had that one. But not everybody's a completist and you don't have to be. But it's a good way to make sure if, there, if you really do want to try to get all the pins of the month, that, that way you can't miss them. It's impossible to miss them. And price-wise, since we do have the Patreon um, pin collector tier, that includes shipping worldwide. Even, I won't say Australia again, I'll say even South Africa. It doesn't matter. Different hemisphere. You will still get them, and that includes your shipping if you are a pin collector. So, in a way, you end up saving money that way. And I guess I lose a little bit of money, but that's okay, because I plan on that when I figure out all my things, so sort of. But that way you won't miss any. 
Uh, which do you think sell more? Your more cute pieces or your darker pieces? Ooh. I said both. You know, it's kind of... I would say... Sometimes, sometimes though, hmm. I think when... Some pieces, if it's you know a how? personal love of yours that might be a darker thing, they well, may... It has more niche. If you'd let me answer, I would say that um, as far as the actual paintings, like the originals go, my darker artwork tends to do better. But for licensing, things like stickers and phone cases and t-shirts and pins, the cuter ones do. So I think those are kind of different markets a little bit because um, if I were to take something like, um, uh, again, Unseelie Court wouldn't work for a pin because there's a billion lines in that and that would cost $98 per pin to even make and $800 per pin to sell. But um, the paintings and the prints do very well in those. But licensing, people probably aren't going to buy that on like shoes. It's too complicated. It's too... Complex, they're not going to want to sell it like a farmer's market or something like that. So they're not going to put it at the Bradford Exchange as a statue. But something cute, it's like, here's a dragon and he's got a cute little heart with him. That that would probably do really well. So those are different parts of my brand and different parts of my company and different parts of things. I like to paint both of those things. So I'm happy that there is an audience for both, but they are very different in what people like to buy as original paintings. As opposed to prints, as opposed to t-shirts or sneakers or pins or mugs or Disney stuff. So there's definitely room for both. Read. Mm -hmm. I'm doing about three layers of this purple on here. If you look on this side of her head, you can see I've done a couple layers here. But on this side of her head, it still looks kind of streaky. Like you can kind of see the, the wood through it still. Like you can see the wood grain a bit. So I'm going to do at least one or two layers over that. So when I do scan her and if I'm using that as an enamel guide for the factory, when they make the mold and they're going to use the eyedroppers for the different enamels, I'm going to make sure they know that's all one color. Because when this is shrunk down to 1% of this to make a tiny little pin about that big, inch and a half across, whatever, they will know that it's a solid color. They're not going to try to have like eight types of purple because... If they did, they'd have to have put a black line every time that light purple turned into light, light purple turned into dark purple turned into dark. You'd have to put a black line because you have to build a wall around it so the eyedropper can go in there. Which is why a lot of more realistic paintings or detailed paintings don't work very well as pins or would cost me That's true. more than I could ever charge. Nobody wants to pay $900 for one pin when it just came but out. But they will. So. They, they might when it's been out and it's a rare one, but you wouldn't yeah. want that. And also, you know what it would look like? It would look like a pile of like scribbles of black metal and you would see tiny bits of purple. Call it your Pollock series. No. When it, when you see it and it's they're blending into each other, it can look quite lovely because it's like a fade. It goes dark, goes light, you can, and looks closer to the viewer. It's more in the light, like when I'm doing a painting. But if you're doing something that has a black line around every color change, it would look like a garbled mess of black scribbles, and you can't tell of it. It would look like this, but instead of white lines, it would be black. And then it doesn't even look like a painting anymore, and it's like, what's that confusing tangle of black yarn you have on your shirt as a pin? And nobody would like that. What? Who's the artist I forget that has solid block? Mondrian? Yeah, that's the Pit one. Pit yeah. He, um, yeah, he did very solid black. He reminds me of Pantone. Outlines. Uh, yeah, you know what? I bet he would, have, if he wasn't part of it, he would probably be a big appreciator of those. It's like the, um, of oh, the TV show you told me about that. It was like the Brady Bunch, but they went around in a van. Partridge family. They had a Mondrian on the outside of the van, or the bus, right? Or am I thinking somebody else? I'm I don't sorry, know. Maybe they did. I think they did. And I, I, I remember telling you, I was like, no, it's Pete Mundrun. And I thought it was Pete, like P E T E. It's like, no, it's like P I E T Mundrun. And you know what? <laughs> he actually painted realistic stuff when he was younger. And then he kind of went into the, um, I wouldn't even say abstract. It's that sort of geometric. Jasmine. Yeah. Are you going to do a mermaid painting this year? Yeah. That's what I figured. Don't know yet, but uh, I, Mimi, I definitely Mimi's going to save her pennies. I love mermaids, and I will paint mermaids forever. So I will do one this year, I'll do one next year, and, and the year after. And so. apparently, after she dies. Yeah, they'll, they'll probably keep coming out, so well, I don't know. 
forever. I, I love mermaids, so yes, uh, that's prob that's one of my favorite things to paint. So I I will keep painting mermaids. If it, if it wasn't for the fact I've already done a couple of shows that were mermaid specific in the past few years, I'd probably say my next solo show is mermaids, but I won't. But there will be some mermaids in it. <laughs> well, even my Corey Hilford show I did this past year. I mean, it wasn't mermaid specific, but there there was a lot of mermaids in the show. We're not saying it was mermaids. <laughs> not saying it was mermaids, but it was but mermaids. It was mermaids. It's it's probably already ended, but the LA Art Fair has gone through this weekend, and they've got uh, my lovely porcelain, my sculpture. I did the giant mermaid sculpture. I think I showed you guys when we were um, starting to work on her early in the year. She's been traveling around throughout California, and she's currently at the LA Convention Center on behalf of the Corey Hoffer Gallery. And um, a lot of people have been getting selfies and tagging themselves with me, and or uh, tagging me with themselves and. Uh, Porcelain and Mermaid. Jasmine. Yeah. Are there going to be any more Dragonland slash ninja paintings this year? Or do I have to wait until Dragon Con again? Well, Dragon Con is this Dragon year. Dragon Con is this year. So and yes, um, this year, this coming up. At, let's see, it's 2019, correct? Right it now. Is. And uh, Dragon Con is this autumn. I will be debuting a Ninja Dragon Link 3, which will be the final one because there are six Ninja Dragon Link characters. I put two in each painting and I've done one and two, so that was two and four, and then five and six will be together in Ninja Dragon Link 3, and that will be a Dragon Con this year. So you have a theme for Corey Halford? I have not officially said that, and that will be for 2020 in autumn. Yeah, so that's like... It's almost two years from now, but in Los Angeles, I will be doing my Corey for each other. And I have like, oh my gosh, you don't even want to look at my horrible, confusing notebooks. But I have um, no a does. few different, nobody it's does, and I'm not going to show you, so don't I worry mean, about it. But it would, it's like I have, looking at somebody's notes. It's yeah, like looking notes. at somebody's dirty laundry. You don't want to look at it. But it is, um, well, I have several on. things, and um, any one of them will probably be very interesting. And I'm deciding right now what will be that. But it will be in the um, autumn of 2020 at the Corey Halford Gallery. If I had to guess, it would probably be later autumn. I haven't heard from Jan yet because she's technically at the L.A. Art Fair I was just talking about with my porcelain statue. But when she gets back from that, she'll probably tell me what month it will be. The, it sounds bad, but the longer from now, the better, because that gives me more time to plan, especially if I need to do things like plan installation sculptures and if I have um, pieces I want to do um, studies for. And I will probably, much like I did with my last Corey Halford show, I will probably be working on a lot of those original paintings here at Twitch. So keep an eye out. Uh, doing a strangeling girl with a full size dragon. Oh, I've I've done quite a few really. Um, Are you, gosh, well, I'm if they're talking about installation. Oh, like a sculpture. I've done um I've done like I I've I've done some that where the fairy's very small and the dragon's very big. I did the series of dragon riders. If you're talking about sculptures, like I've got uh, like six of them over there. Uh. Um, yeah. but you know, uh, that, Unless they're the talking about dragon painting. uh, painting is, is yeah. Great. If they're talking about paintings, I've done quite a few. Um, Abraxas, um, the blue dragon cool. one, um, and red dragon. A lot yeah, of my I earlier like dragon, dragon pieces. It has a beautiful like background, it's like France. Yeah, I actually I did that one after I came back from France. I went to Larry, Larry Elmore's um, boozing around Europe tour that was. Now, um, we, we did an art workshop that was in France. Me and Larry Elmer, who was a, he did a lot of the original paintings for Dungeons and Dragons, for the AD&D handbooks, and Jasmine. Dragonlands, etc. Yeah. How long does it take to come up with an idea and put it in a sketch for a painting? Well, sometimes it just takes a second. I, and I, again, I don't, when I sketch, I kind of sketch on my things, so I don't really have, like, actual sketches on paper, because I'd rather just do it on the wood and paint on top of it. But I, as far as ideas go, sometimes I'll, I'll come up with 15 or 20 ideas for a painting in a day. And I, I have this horrible list. I think that's what Matt was talking about, looking at um, somebody's notes. Um, and I know I will probably never get to paint all of them because I won't live long enough. But I, I when I have ideas, I get a bunch of them at once. I write them down. So when it's the time and I'm like, hey, time to do a painting, I can look at my list of 
It's over 10, th that, that, that document I have is over probably 10,000 ideas of paintings I want to do. So I'm, I'm probably never going to do those. And I add more all the time, but as far as sketches go, I usually kind of sketch around the same time I am doing the actual painting. So I can paint on top of it and I just make are, it the same day. Are you going to do ninja paintings after the three ninja painting? Oh, after Ninja Drawing Links 3? Oh, I probably will. I just like that theme in general. I might do some individual portraits of them. I might do some more characters, too, because some of you may or may not know the um, the Ninja Drawing Links series I did with the Bradford Exchange of the Hamilton Collection. Um, they were actually sculptures oh. before they were paintings, and I think they've gotten more popular even though the sculptures have been retired, they were limited editions, are all sold out. Now they're the characters are getting very popular because I did paintings and pens and stuff like that. So I might do some paintings of them individually, or we might do some more from the same family, and we'll see how that goes. So since I, th I think they probably get more attention as paintings, prints, and pens than even they did when they were sculptures. Now it's like people put the sculptures like from. 15 years ago up on eBay and people are like, oh my god, it matches that pin I just got today. I'm like, yeah, you could have gotten it like 20 years ago, but it didn't, so yeah. So um, yeah, those are both themes I like, especially with dragons, and I like painting dragons, so. Is that, um, this is for the pin, this yep, is for Heart of Nails? Yep, some is one, um, who did? Some is one. I thought you were saying like somebody won. Some is one. Some is one? Huh? Yeah, it, it's uh, a play on orbs anyway. Oh, okay. Um, go ahead, uh. Yay! Are they here in the room? Well, um, yes. Uh, his significant other is in the room for sure. Um, if you just want me to, if you just want to send me your info, that's fine. Hey. Oh, it's coming out pretty good. Actually, I've. You might not think by looking at her, but she's getting very close to being finished. The only thing I have to do, since that's gonna be her skin tone, I'll probably put some sort of generic black, blue, brown background around her. I'll need to come up with a darker purple to put there, there, put on her lips, and then, um, golly, I'll put some sort of thing that is not super dark black, but like a dark brownish blue black on the areas that are light colored through her hair. Take some of the probably light purple and add some white in her eyes, and I will show you guys. Well, and what's our next broadcast? Will it be, um, next Sunday? Probably. Okay. Because we're, um, we've got that meeting on Wednesday, and then, ah, yeah. yeah, we did it okay. right in the middle of the week. And then I'll be back at Pop Gallery at, um, Epcot, Saturday. at the Pop Gallery tent at Epcot, not the Pop Gallery, on next Saturday. Yeah. Okay. So, after the Epcot event at the Pop Gallery tent next Saturday, I will be back to working. And I'm sure in the meantime I would have finished her, and I'll show you how she turned out, and then you will know what the March pin of the month looks like. So that's kind of cool. Mm. Okay. Yay! Good night, guys. It's been oh, a pleasure. Thank um, you for watching me. Thanks for uh, joking around with I'm us and having fun. I'm going to keep working on her, so maybe someday we'll get that. I got to some emails, cruise. but uh, yes, yes, and maybe I'll see you in a cruise. We love that. I, 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 I wish every event I did was on a cruise. Meantime, that would be that fantastic. Business. Yeah. In the meantime, cool. cross your fingers. Ask okay. Thank you, guys. Night. night.